Welcome to Click Stuff, brought to you by Lucky Dice Cafe out of Huntsville, Alabama. Check them out at luckydicecafe.com. And now for your hosts, Daniel Powell, Jason Alvey, and Tyler Spees. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Clickstoff today. This is your host, Daniel Powell, speaking. Just want to let everybody know Clickstoff is brought to you by Trollandtoad.com, world's largest HeroClix retailer. Find HeroClix new and old on Trollandtoad.com and use coupon code Clickstoff for 5% off your HeroClix order. And if you like what you're hearing today on Clickstoff, check us out Patreon.com forward slash Clickstoff. Dollar and above gets entered into our monthly giveaways. Five dollars and above gets entered into our Patreon channel and Discord for HeroClix strategy and tactics discussion. And joining me today is Jason. What's up? Yeah, it's just Jason. Um, yeah, waiting on my lotto numbers to come. Yeah, out I know, right? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get. I'll, I've got something to say about that. So, um, soon to be a billionaire. Yeah, yeah, third, third, third on the up on the podcast today is Tyler Spees. That's me. Yes, you know what? Is, we, we, I... we are trying to get through this set review. So yeah, like, I'm just like I'm just like I don't have, I didn't have time to think of nicknames. That's um, fine. I and. Agree. Uh, and then we have uh, Alex Geoguesser Coos. Oh man, that would be fun to play. Let's play some Geoguesser. Yeah, Alex was just showing us all the Gen Con stuff and all the maps. So, um, uh, oddly enough, I can't think of it for Tyler and Jason, but I instantly have one for Alex. So it's the uh, opposite day. Um, but yes, this is Friday before the one point three two billion dollar. Um, Mega Millions drawing, uh, and what I was going to oh, say I is somebody hit. No, they did not. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, it's one of those things. It's like you know, you won't know that I won the lottery, but you'll know. Do you want to know how? You no, know? no, no, no. If, if, if I win, we're gonna we're going to uh, arrive at Memphis in a quick stop helicopter. Um, <laughs> so. Right, that's true. But it, it's one of those things you won't know, but you'll know. Because whiz kids will start being overly communicative. <laughs> gotcha. Either that, or it's just like you just disappear. Like you literally <laughs> just drop off, and we're like, "Well, I mean, dance." Whiz kids says, "Whiz kids says unerratic Thanos for some reason." <laughs> this is weird. We and it's like we also introducing our new cast member, uh, Ran. And it's just you, but it's like you under a new name, so people don't. <laughs> No, you won the millions because you know they talk about people who win the millions. You should like basically drop off the face of the earth and like <laughs> be <laughs> as like small as possible because things just go awry. Right. So, yeah. I think it'd be worth it. I think I could. Uh, I think I. <laughs> you <only> think so? <laughs> yeah. I want. I think I'm gonna roll with it. <laughs> yeah, I think I roll with it. I think I'd still be a uh, hero professional i think i would become a full-time professional hero clicks player mm -hmm. okay so that well we've got what two when we're recording this an hour and a half until they they draw so if you immediately just drop off the call and you're just like <laughs> you're, or yeah, something that is true we'll be like we'll be like all right well, well we know or you start screaming at a figure that's not great yeah. um that is true i do not have my ticket on my person so uh <laughs> But what we are here for today is the X of Swords set review. So what we talked about, we're going to do the equipment, commons, uncommons, rares, super rares, chases, tarot cards, and... Legacy cards. Uh, and then the, the legacy cards probably before the tarot cards. Yeah. Then. Yes. Um, do we want to do the mini game? First, do we need to do the mini game? Well, first? let's just step through the mini game and kind of get us. What are we doing this for? Huh? <laughs> what's what's good in the mini game? I don't. Know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't don't I don't remember from our. I don't remember from our um, unboxing whether the mini well, game was then, good or not. Because obviously nothing. 
Well, then let's just refer everybody to the to the unboxing yeah. video. That's fine. watch the unboxing video. Because yeah. if we need to, we're gonna do the tier maker anyway. Like, yeah, true, true, true. So, right, that's true. So um, I'll say this. Then. I'm pretty sure there's nothing as good as the Watcher was. Right, there is nothing as good as the Watcher. Um, and then what I would say is the only thing that really sticks out to me, and uh, we so maybe there's just two caveats we start out with. Um, anything with the keywords um, for the swap, swap keywords, sure. anything with the swap keywords, Avengers, Fantastic Four, X Men, Hellfire Club, Acolytes, Illuminati. Am I missing any? She are. She yeah, are. Right. So any of those things instantly become considerations to fill point slots, right? Um, mm -hmm. Now, whether or not they ever remain on the map, we don't ever know. So that's I think that's caveat number one, right? Also, um, because especially if they have um, the sword thing, which we'll get to. Later. Right, if they have the sword bear trait. Um, and then yeah. second of all, um, I I will say my caveat with Tyler's lesser caveat, um, that all Heroclix figures are playable um, for fun on the kitchen table. Um mm -hmm. So our set reviews are slanted towards the competitive side of hero clicks. But I mean, there's going to be some some seal to this. That I'm right. Assuming somewhere. Right, so. and we can talk about some standouts for sealed as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, Jason mm -hmm. and I played sealed this past week, and yeah, uh, I pulled I pulled shit. So. <laughs> Well, that balances out the whole you played a, you played a yeah, yeah, god pack in the last one. So right, yeah, I'm not complaining. I pulled a god pack last time. So uh, swords, right? Any swords. Without, without further yep. ado, swords. There are, I think, eleven of them. Now, let me let me start this by saying that you know Daniel kept poking fun at me that all these swords are going to be blades claws fangs <laughs> before we knew all this started, and I'll be goddamn if they're not. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm glad to do something else besides that. <laughs> all the all the swords are ten points. They're all indestructible, all equip any, all unequip drop, and they all give you blades. So that's all. They're all the same in that way. I think they're all light objects as well. They are, yeah. Okay, yeah. So then they all come with just some one unique effect. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Right. So Luke Baker asked, um, this we'll be talking about here. Which sword do you think will see the most play? Uh, and then, well, and then Paolo, as a follow-up to that, which sword do you think is hot garbage, and which one do you wish you would do a little bit more, which is what we will be talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and then, anything, other questions about swords? And you know what? We'll start out for us. Paul uh, says, no questions. I'm just looking forward to your review, and I hope that you enjoy making it. So, thank you. Forest, appreciate it. We'll that. let you know at the end of the show if we enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um... So, uh, Mercy. Mercy. So, uh, once per turn, Blaze Claw Slings, once per turn when this character is attacked, you may reroll the attack. Mm -hmm. um, nothing ga nothing game-breaking. Um, nope. I will, I will provide an instance of what I do like this uh, sword on. Mm-hmm. I bet I can guess. Um, I, I want to hear your guess first, Tyler. Yeah, I'm pretty it. sure it's Prize Apocalypse the, the, with 20 defense. Um, you know what? Yeah, so I wasn't specifically thinking him. Um, okay. But you are close. Okay. Um, I was thinking Starter Watcher. Oh, okay. But, but that's because he's got a 20. Yeah. Right? Similar. And then the biggest thing mm -hmm. is, right, like, is when somebody hits... Right, whenever you have the big defense and somebody rolls the number, right? If you mm -hmm. prob it, or prob has, you know, range and line of fire implications. Right. Um, this is not. And this does has no range or line of fire implications. So hitting a twenty once is possible. Hitting a twenty a second time, or if you have the prob a third time, is much less likely. Much less likely. Still possible, <laughs> but much less likely. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's yeah, that's, that's I, I think like I think I think that's the exact phrase that you could say. Are people going to play this? It's possible, but it's very <laughs> unlikely. Like that's how I feel about this sort of gameplay. Yeah, I so. 
I don't mind. I think this is might be the best sword for mm-hmm. Chase Apocalypse. Uh, I think what sword? What, sword, what, what yeah. apocalypse are you calling it? What the? Well, not Chase. I'm sorry. The, the prize the, uh, apocalypse. OP prize one. Yeah, prize my bad. One. Yeah, prize one. Yeah. Yeah. The one we will not be talking about today. So right, yes, yeah, I think one. this is one of the better. This is one of the better swords, in my opinion. I agree. I think it's yeah, it's 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 up there for sure. It is because it has um, an effect that's not triggered off of using blades, which is a big deal. I had the ten points. I just don't know if I'm paying that. Obviously, yeah, like you have to be very careful with. I mean, I guess on an X Men team, maybe, but where you know you automatically have the sword or you pay the five points, but like. Right now, if you think about teams we're building, you, we're really limiting ourselves on equipment because we need either the objects or it's just not a lot that you're willing to spend even 10 points for. So I'm thinking of this more of, do I really want to give up 10 points, which could be a, a, a Mary Jane, like 10 points and a location bonus or Mary Jane or Marbella, like, uh, you know, cloak, all this stuff. I, I just... 10 points has to really do, I feel like... More yeah, so I, I will say that with very few exceptions, I don't think you're paying for most of these swords most of the time. I I don't. I think yeah. it, they're great on oh, the maybe. characters that no, come no, with. No. Um, yeah, but I think you really want to be able to have... First, I think in order for it to be worth it, you have to be able to use the place called Fangs, personally. Um, so probably so, you know something like Flash, you can charge twice for someone who has flurry um maybe there's a sword that uh iron man likes because you know you can pick flurry we'll see what's the um do we know the blades tarot card yet i don't Uh, think we've seen it have we um i don't know we i mean we can get to that that'd be important yeah (laughs) yeah Uh, i'll look at it while we get to the next one okay all right (laughs) muramasa blade Mm mm-hmm this one's probably the best, I think. The best sword. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, so far. The, so. the best sword that we've seen in the main set, right? So, <sighs> I mean, obviously yeah. we're compartmentalizing our set review to just the main set X of swords. Because um, that's all we know. <laughs> because that's all we know right now. So, yeah. um, obviously the sword bearers love being able to have Muramasa come in. Um, Should we say what it does? Uh, yeah, uh, Blades Claws, most character uses it, it rolls a 1 through 3. The hit characters can't use defense powers until the beginning of your next turn. Um, who likes the Muramasa Blade? Uh, anybody with 4 plus printed damage? Yeah, because of the minimum is 3, so you're still dealing 3 right. through anything. Right, because um, so Blades, the power reads, you know, blah, 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 when you roll it. Uh, the minimum that you can do is printed minus one. Mm-hmm. So if you have four damage, you're doing either um, four damage, five damage, six damage, or you're doing three damage straight through. Yeah, uh, this is obviously mm-hmm. great. Um, notably, you know, shape roll off still works, shape change, and super senses. Um, does this get through Mastermind? No, right? Because they never become hit. That's it right. says when they would be hit. Yeah, so you can so still you can't get through Mastermind. Hit. Right, but you still have the yeah. Super Senses Mastermind timing stuff, right? That works in your right, op- true. Works in the uh, opponent's attacker's favor. favor. Attacker is an attacker's favor. Yeah, attacker's yeah. favor. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but this is great. People are calling it the Thanos Killer. I, it's it's. I don't think it's at, like specifically good against Thanos as opposed to anybody else. I think it's just really good. Yeah. Like, it's good against Scarlet Witch or it's good against... Um... Uh, that's not... That's not good against Scarlet Witch. I guess I it's mean, not as good. It gets through the stop click, yeah. Yeah, you still get the, you the stop click. Yeah. No, and you, same still, thing with... you, still, you don't get the stop click if they blaze past it. Right, but right. I mean, there's, a, there's another one that gets through stop clicks as well, so I mean, it's... Right. It's debatable I, I, I do want to add another caveat real quick because there may people that might be thinking about this we will obviously talk about all of these in regards to a certain prime later in the episode <laughs> yeah. so if you're thinking about well what about you know we're, we'll 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 leave all that within when we talk about this mr prime man mm-hmm. later right so just wanted to throw that out there in case we're like what about him? yeah mm-hmm. we'll, we'll get there 
Um, Vermilion, uh, when this character uses it after resolutions, deal one damage to each opposing character adjacent to the hit character. Um, I actually like this one. Uh, it's sneaky good because it says not when they hit, but when they use blades. No, wait, never mind. I, I thought about this before, and I'm coming to the same realization. <laughs> in, order to you, in order to use blades, you have to hit. So never That's mind. Right. right, so... Yeah, for, for ten points, you just go with the fire, I feel like, in that instance. Yeah, it, I that, agree. That's the same thing. Like, it does. Um, this one doesn't more consistently if you want that specific effect, right. um, because the fire is hard to get to it now, but yeah, probably in general. Really hard -er. What yeah. I say? Hard. Okay. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't call sure. it hard. Uh, Brian Gailey gave us the math, and it's still doable. It's still yeah. hard. Yeah. Eh. Anyway. It's like a 50% chance on turn two? That, that seems hard to me. Yeah, I don't know. It's a 50-50. <laughs> it is. Uh, um, black. The bone. Black bone. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say about the other one. Uh, besides besides mm -hmm. the fact that, like, none of the, uh, like, the Muramasa or Vermilion or you know, maybe some of the other ones we talk about here, they don't work with a range attack. True. I don't think any of these do. You have to use blades to do it, I think. Right, well, yeah. uh, except well, the defense ones like we talked about. Right, yeah, yeah. So, um, Black Bone of Am Amduat. Um, blades Claws Fangs when this character uses it. The hit character can't use stop for this attack. Mm, just, I mean, it just is what it is, right? Why would you not use Muramasa <laughs> Blade? <laughs> I mean, um, it depends. Use... I mean, because there are there are stop clicks in the defense, uh, the damage slot. There still are like one or two, maybe. Yeah. And this uh, doesn't require you to roll one through three either. That's I mean, true. Doesn't matter what you roll; it's still going to get you the stop. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't like it. I don't, I don't yeah, really like it. it either. But like, it's one of those things. It's like if you have if you're playing a sword bear, or obviously if you're playing Mad Jimmy J that we're going to be talking about. Um, mm -hmm. you can include it, right? Because like maybe you know that your local meta is gonna be playing um, Lex Luthor super rare. Oh, that's something to talk about too. Um, these are not these do not take up sideline, so you can have all ten of these and pick at the beginning of the game for all your sword bears. That yeah, for the sword bears, yeah. So you can have a whole right. bucket of them whenever we get how many ever twenty something swords yeah. that we're gonna get. <laughs> so if you see a team with five stop clicks, maybe you do play play death. Yeah, I would I would say actually you want to play this over Miramasa specifically against Scarlet Witch. Like uh, if you, if you, between the two, because Miramasa, if you want to actually get through her stock click, you got to roll a five or six, like the one turner, and at that point you don't get the can't use defensive powers. Well, that's true. Miramasa though lasts until your next turn, and this one's only for this attack, so it, right. it's kind of it's kind of a toss up. But I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it really is a toss up. Starlight. Um, but yeah, so I would say like only against like oh. Um, Isaac's Lex Luthor does like the bone bat. Yeah, that's it. true. I can't, I was going to call it bone bat. That the, the bone bat one works better. So sure. Um, Starlight Sword. When when this character uses blade called fangs as a resolution, you may place the hit target up to a number of squares away from their current square, equal to the D six result. Probably too inconsistent to be a real consideration. Yeah, it's yeah. a cool effect, but yeah. it's, I don't think you're overreaching for this one. No, I think this one is going to require a little bit more testing, like a little bit more number space. Because obviously, at the first glance, if you're looking at it, you're like, cool, I could hit him six away. Mm -hmm. Well, that means you hit him for six damage. A majority of the things won't be <laughs> living through six damage. I'll right? tell you one thing. This might be pretty good against uh, Fantastic Four. Because <laughs> if you hit them and they mastermind a lockjaw, you're placing that lockjaw somewhere else. That's kind of fun. Right, but that's only like, yeah, it require, uh, maybe that goes back to Alex's testing thing. Um, mm -hmm. But with with uh, Borky Bork being a, a, a one by two, right? Moving him one mm -hmm. square is, you know, is not that great because you got to deal with his ass being somewhere. It's a play. So you don't move them. So you no, you I get could, it. No, you no, can no. whale tail them if you want to. I get it. I get it. You can whale tail. Yeah, yeah. I get all that, right? That makes sense. But like, okay. 
there's a, it's a big formation, yeah. right? And you know the dog's got a you know a big ass, so yeah. Right, but that's one out of six chance that you're rolling a one. So I mean, right. I still th- it's a fifty it's fifty a... chance that you roll a six. <laughs> <laughs> I think if a, if even if you get a one, I think it's um. You probably can get the Massoin off of who you want to attack with the next attack, so I think it's pretty good in that instance. Yeah, yeah, I think it, it, this is situational. I would yeah. say there's probably uses for it. It needs more testing, and it's only on certain teams, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, I think it has a to, compared to some of these. I think it well, has a really I don't cool think effect. that any of them are bad. Like none of them are actively bad. Like none of them <sighs> deal the attacker damage or feedback you know, or whatever, or say, you know, this char- this character gains immobile or some That silly, is silly... almost never the case. <laughs> right, so I would say, Alex, none of these yeah. are bad. We're just... No, not... that's not true. Yeah, there so... are bad objects. So let's, okay, let's, let's finish them. Let's finish them. None of, I would say that none of... There's very niche. None of these swords are bad. Yeah, we haven't gotten to them yet, so... All right, well, I, I disagree. Tight. I disagree, but... Uh, seducer, right. when this character uses Blade Cause Fangs, after resolutions, this character may use Mind Control as a free, but only to target a hit character. Yeah, I mean, why do you want to Mind Control the guy you just obliterated? Yeah, I so want my hard. blades to kill people. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's an Worst option. Worst sword, right there. <laughs> it is an option. I agree it, that it is. It's, a, it's just That's a thing, it. right? Like, if you have... It's a uh, thing that's not a good thing. If you have, like, a flurry, right? Yeah, you get mind control twice. No. Uh, but it, mm. it's, it's, as a, it's as a free, and you can only use the free one time. Oh, it does say it's free, right? right. Yeah, it's not like the old rules. Um, but, like, if you use free, and you soften someone up, and obliterate somebody else, and you can soften them up, um, you know, I, I, it's fine. I mean, it's not bad. Again, I would say I'm maybe thinking, like, Alex, here, this, that's not bad. Right? It's just it's not, not bad. It's just not, not great. great. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just curious if if that's the exact wording. Like Yeah. Why they word it but only to target a hit character? Because you can only target one person because you're using Blade's Claws. Right? Um Because that how else would you structure that sentence? The hit character. The hit character. Maybe they're just. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because maybe it, because that's a fail safe. Use, because you can use it with flurry. Uh, that's true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can pick. Or okay, free so. attacks. Or free attacks. I think they should just always say hit character, just to because it's a better language and it would be consistent. Right. I agree. Um, because yeah. and you might be able to do like flurry, free attack, and then decide who you're going to mind control. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think it's just a good streamline of the words. Um, colony, uh, Blaze Calls Flames, Exploit Weakness. Okay. When this that's character. Yeah, going, we that's, I dig that. Uh, yeah, that, mm-hmm. that, that's already g- good, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I feel like they had to add that because this power is bad. When it's this character great. uses. Why is, why is that? When this character uses. Hold right on. When this character uses Blaze Calls Fangs. If this character shares a keyword, if the target shares a keyword with this character, increase the damage delty by one. There's a there's you can a... deal seven damage. Yeah, but I feel so. So my thought is this: like in these instances, you're only ever using blades, claws, fangs to activate the effect, right? Like generally, it's too risky to do blades, claws, fangs. Like it. No. How often, how often what the are, are you playing, playing on? No, no, no. Listen, uh, my line of thinking is this. How often, in general, before all these swords, are you playing someone with bl- Blades Cause Fangs and actively using it? Uh, Pretty rarely, I would say. Yeah, so in my, my instance is, okay, I'm playing this to give Blades Claws and then to rely on the Blades Claws and hope that I just do one extra damage because I share a keyword. Like, there are other swords, like, comparing to the other swords. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's... The but, seems but, but I think the flex of the problem. The thing is, is like none of these are bad again because oh my god because of the flexibility, right? You know, you bring a five gallon bucket of swords <sighs> to the event with one sword bearer, and you ju- you're just like, well, wait a minute, what keywords do you have? 
All right, well, I'm going to use Colony on my 034 Wolverine this game. I think Alex is right in that the effect is kind of... It's nice. It's a nice ad, but it's kind of negligible. And if you're using this, you're using it for the blades and the exploit. Yeah, well, not even the blades. You use it for the exploit. I feel like, in practicality, this no. sword is like... I just Because there's no, nothing else that gives exploit. Right now, Some right? people like blades. So like there are fake characters that are better. Okay, 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 okay. What if I, what if you put this on like I don't know Flash? Yeah, Flash was who I was thinking. Of. He can have exploit. He he only has three damage, so mm -hmm. you increase in the ability to do higher damage, and he's got a shit ton of keywords. That's <laughs> has eleven keywords. Heart, and then you're adding fucking Spider Family to him <laughs> yeah, a lot of the true. time, so that's probably gonna go off. That's true. Right. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, think, I, 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 think I can see right. that, Jason. You you got to be smart when you're using that. Yeah, right. I think. <laughs> you're right. You're right, Jason. And, um, you know, well, I, think, I, think, I think what I would add to that is just, like, Flash is really good with just a lot of these things. Yeah, I mean, anybody that has low damage like that, you want to give them an ability yeah. to attack people and do damage, it's great for it. It yeah. is. Um... I think that Flash specifically is mm -hmm. probably one of the best for a lot of these. I agree, but that's just because he's yeah. one of the best figures. Um, is there a way to get? This is a random thought, but is there a way to get Scarab Giant Reach and have him equipped with one? Because that would be cool. Yeah, if you equip him with the Necro Sword or the Waldo Arms, and then he yeah, and then copy this, then he copies a sword. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Uh, but it's I mean, still <laughs> only one damage. It's still only one It damage. is, but there's effects here that are pretty cool. Yeah. Um, All right, never mind. Uh, just right. Well, uh, wait, no, wait, wait. Hmm. Can Scarab even do close attacks? Yeah, he can well, if he has giant reach. He can if he has giant reach. Oh, because you're counting range? Yeah, yeah. you're counting okay. range and drawing a line of fire. Yeah. I, I, well, another thing to think about real quick is also Sky Tyrant. Can Sky Tyrant use any of these? That's the uh, like outside of Flash, he's the lo now the forgotten Charge Flurry person, <laughs> and he's, oh, yeah, he, he's got three damage, and everyone's like, "Well, he doesn't have five, so he's bad." <laughs> so another thing to think about, in addition to Flash, Sky Tyrant could probably equip some of these. Yeah. He probably doesn't care about Blade's claws. Like he's, I'll use it. No. So it's but, probably a negative for him sometimes because he wants to quake. Yeah. yeah, maybe, but I think with some of these, uh, the stop click ones and uh, some of the other ones, I think mm -hmm. I'm thinking also Sky Tyrant. Like, I don't yeah. care to roll yeah. blades. I do two damage. That's kind of bad, but oh well. Well, so I, I mean, think the only reason Sky Tyrant would like like the Muramasa Blade is this first, the first attack he single target punches and then uses blades and then quakes for another two straight A second one. attack. Yeah. yeah, true. Yeah. Um. All right, alluvium. Okay, so you were talking uh, about no, none of them are bad, right? Like, uh, smoke. This cl is... Smoke cloud is free is never bad. I will never, ever, ever say smoke cloud is free is bad. Well, what if the power is double power action? You can use smoke cloud is free. That's not a. F <laughs> that's obviously not. That's obviously. <laughs> it wasn't very free then. <laughs> it wasn't very free now, was it? Uh, I don't know, it's just free of the power. Double power actions don't exist anymore. This one's also not free, right? You have to use an action to do it. Yes, that's my whole point. Like, yeah. It's just I, a bonus. So my argument, my argument is, mm -hmm. when I want Smoke Cloud is free, is when I've got stealth people, that I'm chilling in the back, I want to stealth up. I, sure, there's an instance where I want to Smoke Cloud under people to lower their attack, but a majority of the time... It's like Molecule Man or someone else that's putting Smoke Cloud down, getting all my stealth people. But what? you have to run up and punch somebody to then stealth yourself, but you're going to be adjacent to someone. Well, so here's the thing. Tyrant or something else. Right. I know there's other instances, but here's but the this thing. is my argument against it. But here's the thing, and here's what I like about this particular combination, right? Because most of mm -hmm. the time, you're going to put the... A lot of the times, you put, you know, Blades, Claws, Fangs on somebody with, like, 18 combat reflexes, right? And you're going up and basing them. Um, and then you're able to lower their attack value by one, forcing them to use a TK or forcing them 
to you know try to risk a sidestep or a running shot breakaway, and then you have smoke cloud under yourself to boost your defense by one, or you're lowering their attack by one, right? So it, I think it, it it is a just a random good effect um, to have from an attack. Now, is it OP? Is it is it? That's not no. what we're asking. <laughs> no, we're we're asking if. It, no, because it's bad. I mean, it's not bad. bad. It's not bad. Yeah, it, it I think it's. I think. I think it's bad. I think the reason that it is in the set and the use for it is that it comes with that red root, the forest dude, and he gets to make a bystander when he uses smoke cloud. So, I think that's the effect that you're looking for, and maybe specifically that, or somebody else that can use an effect with smoke cloud, right? Specifically. Yeah. Um. I agree with you, Dan. Real quick, that uh, that. Smoke Cloud is free isn't bad, but it is bad when it's conditional based off of the way this is. You right. have to use Blade's I'm just saying, That's like, the... I'm just, I'm just, in general, like, bad means it's bad. I don't know. Like, is this D tier? Yeah. Yes. But That's bad. 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 That's bad. But, like, it's, it's, almost, it's, not, it's almost like yeah. there's, like, F tier, right? Or G tier, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like uh so moving along. Like that apocalypse yeah, that apo- like that apocalypse chase might actually be like F tier. Speaking just, of apocalypse, his yeah, sword. His sword that his, he comes with is it's also that. Kind of crap. Uh, <laughs> when, crap. when his character uses it, increase the damage by one for each four in the attack roll. His sword can be greater than six. Um Yeah, you know what? Now, I thought that that was gonna be shit. Um, uh huh. But whenever uh-huh. I whenever I played Iska, uh, in sealed, I had the Iska Prime. I played her. Um, mm-hmm. I rolled a four four, which is a critical hit for her. Um, <laughs> and then I rolled a six on blades. If I had had the Scarab blade and a Scarab sword in my packs, um, I would have dealt nine damage to somebody. Yeah. Well, that's pretty fun. You can't see, wasn't she the one that had the rally that let you like change rolls, dice yeah. rolls to a four? It was. She does. I mean, yeah. Hey, if you, and if, I if you pair her with that specific sword, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah that, that was annoying. I have to admit, that was annoying to play against. <laughs> It was like yeah. this die yeah. replacement, and it was, it screwed me a couple times. Yeah, mm-hmm. it did. Yeah, I think I think the only, in my opinion, the only instance besides that one character that you might play this on is some of the Fantastic Fours that says if you mm-hmm. like roll a four, you get a plus one to your attack or damn it, well, damage wouldn't matter, but like there's some that's like, hey, your attack roll's got a four in it, you get yeah. some bonuses. Like it's so situational. Like it's right. just. Yeah. If uh, we had, if we had Q and and Trelane back, then maybe. But no, maybe. All right. Um, uh, purity. Uh, when this character uses Blaze Claws Fangs after resolutions, you may generate an Okara Okahara Warrior Bystander. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which is bad. <laughs> it's uh, it's a, ten it's... attack, precision strike. Two damage. It's the same starting stats. It looks like as peepers. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> they may have over under on when he was going to mention peepers. I did not think it would be in the equipment section. <laughs> um, he has precision strike. He's not autonomous, so it's it's not great. But your figure's never you know never bad to have. Right. These are autonomous. This would be great. Yeah. Right. I agree, it's, especially it's... with like. Um... Especially with like a flurry or free free attacks or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At first glance, you might think generating a bystander for ten points is great. I mean, we everyone loves mm-hmm. Red Wing, even though Red Wing does way more. Mm-hmm. But think about how often the stupid Mysterio object is played. It's never played, and it also creates a. I think that's underplayed, personally. I, I agree, but I'm not reaching for it anytime I'm building. Sure. So, so I put it in the same category. It looks okay on paper because creating more figures is always a, a great thing in general. Mm-hmm. You might never know when you need that ten for two, um, but it's just no. It's right. it, yeah. It won't see play. I, I don't think it will. I agree. No. All right. Twilight Sword. Um, when you use it. You may generate a number of blocking 
terrain markers up to the D6 result. Am I, I like this one? <laughs> am I crazy of imagining yeah. this with Sky Tyrant? Uh, you could, um, because he gets to. It's after resolution, so you can, <laughs> so you, you can move on away. And... You can hit twice with blades. You can move back twelve squares, and then you can make twelve squares of barrier around yourself. <laughs> like to me, yeah, that's that not. That's pretty, that's, that's, that's not good. <laughs> Yeah, that like that sounds funny. Now it could be nothing, like you could roll poorly, but at the same time, I'm like that's kind of neat. Like it's also probably... oh god, no, no, go ahead. I was gonna say it. It's I don't know if this was intentional, but these blocking terrain markers do not go away. <laughs> They're just there. They they don't go away at the beginning <laughs> of your next turn. It's not barrier. Um, they're, they're just there and you can generate with flurry up to 12 turns. So that's, it's I don't, I don't know bad. if it's good, but oh, it's crazy. Wait a minute. Okay. So, oh, God damn excited. Um, <laughs> hold on. I'm thinking about why this one might actually be bad. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Incoming his molecule man equipped with this sword. <laughs> no, no. Cause well, here's what I'm, okay. I don't think, I think it's fine. Um, okay. Because you may okay, so it's, it's yeah. because it's okay. So when this character uses it, let's say let's assume that you roll a six. Uh, yeah. When this after resolutions, you may generate a number of blocking terrain markers up to the D six result. So here's here's why I was thinking it was bad. <laughs> I know I know where you're going. It's funny to think about because of let's think if it wasn't optional. And they didn't go away, and you rolled a six. Uh, you just encased your own character, and it can't escape. Like fl flash runs up, punches, <laughs> and then he's just punches, stuck. He's, he's just like, in the wall. Yeah, but like, why can't well, you encase their character? Well, because uh, it's generated. It has to be it's generated. It has to be generated. To, to, it has to be adjacent to that character. Mm -hmm. And if it can't be, then I believe the other person dictates the next. Uh, that's only for non-optional. Yeah, that's so only don't non think It would just sure. not. Sure. But I'm saying sure. the fact that it is optional and it says up to the D6 result. Right. Yeah. Up then, to. It, then it's not actively. Oh, so. It's not actively. Well, that's not bad. nearly as fun. Yeah, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not actively bad because it could be actively bad if you rolled a six with it and then you like had to, and then you ran away and then suddenly your sky tyrant is can't fly or whatever is on stuck on an indoor map like negative zone. With six squares yeah. of no going away blocking around it. But it doesn't work that way. Um, so it's not actively bad. And it just could randomly be good for uh, defensive situations. Uh, and the fact that yeah. there is no duration, Tyler, you're right. This one might actually be good. Uh, yeah. It's, it's like... such a... Go ahead. I, I just don't know if it's good. But I know that it is kind of... I think unprecedented in the amount of permanent blocking it can make. There have been permanent blocking before, but not this potential, this much of it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It seems like it could be breakable, but I, I can't think of a way off the top of my head as to how it would be good or used. Right. All right. Let's wrap up equipment. Um, most uh, the sword that'll see the most play. Muramasa. Muramasa for sure. Um, I still like Mercy, I think. But, yeah, I but, still, I but, still but like Mur Mercy. But Muramasa will probably see more play, right? I don't know. I think if if you're playing, I think that if you're playing uh, the figures that I think Muramasa will see more play as an equipment that you as a, play all as the a force. Point equipment. Yeah, yeah. I think Mercy might see more play as the other version. I'm not sure. Gotcha. I think you can make a case for a lot of them if you can swap them out at every game. True. Yeah. Yeah, the only other thing I could think of is the one of the ones we were borderline on, like exploit. I don't know. Like, is there instances that someone really wanted it if exploit and didn't have it? That didn't want to use Miramas and rely on that chance of it not being penetrating? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's that's a really hard question to answer because we there's so many all at once they all do very similar things as they're all close and we're kind of the group that always is like well it's a charge blade piece and now it's like well now we have to consider all these charge pieces <laughs> now that right. we're looking at these uh, equipment Sakari and iron man so. changes the game when it comes to that 
Well, we've also just have been using charge pieces for the last year and a half. So yeah, yeah. But and and obviously right. all of this changes with the certain prime that we're going to get to as well. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. all right. Well, let's move on to the commons. All right, and our first common is 001 Storm. Garbage. And our second common <laughs> is is 002 Cipher. I don't I like think Cypher. Storm's that bad. It's just real quick. She's not that bad. She's pretty bad. Free knockback that you get a... It's basically free placement. That, that's pretty good. She got perplexed. She starts with a sword. But that's fine. Cypher. I yeah. like Cypher. I, like I played yeah. him yesterday. He was great. Power enhancement. Yeah, so in power enhancement, and I guess this guy is really 30 points to drop a sword on swap. Yeah, that's kind of valuable, right? Um, mm-hmm. you, be, you get the sword for essentially 5 points, and then it's in your starting area, so it's right. easier to mm-hmm. equip. Um, so that's probably something. I think he's probably the cheapest sword bearer. Um, I think it's about right, yeah. Yeah, I think, think so. outside of that, though, I I don't think it's worth like in sealed. Obviously, he's great because sealed, there's not he's great. There's, yeah. yeah, there's not many ways to increase your damage in sealed right now. Uh, but I don't think you're paying for this on a hellfire team like main force outside of the swap. Obviously, uh, you you mean well, you mean X Men? Yeah, he doesn't go on hellfire. I do. I was reading Hellions. I said it. Yo, yeah. Uh... yeah, you, you definitely would have paid for that for hellfire because it'd be non So <laughs> yeah. Solemn. Oh, uh, yeah, that's yep. Solemn. Solemon. All right. <laughs> yep. uh, the, yep. fu- the fury. You can reduce penetrating. If it was unoutwittable, I'd consider him because it's it's tough to choose. As we've all learned in the past three months, it's tough to chew mm-hmm. through. <laughs> Invulnerable, yeah. you can't penetrate through. But since you can it's just outwit true. it, it's probably not. not I good. mean, we we can just like blow through these next four. I feel like the only thing I want to say oh, about yeah. the Fury and actually the next okay the next four is that these the generics in this set are so bad I don't understand why like it, I I don't get it the well, Fury is so like the, the I Fury guess... the Fury you're likely never generating it off of Master Mode right uh, you can't because it doesn't have Sentinel yeah so you're definitely correct. Yes, you're 100% correct. <laughs> um, not likely. Yeah. Definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, these things, like, if they were, they could be 15 points, and I don't, they wouldn't, none of the generics would be playable. So I don't understand. Well, you would Sometimes pay 15 points for enhancement? No, we have that with German Soldier, and nobody uses it. Yeah, but German Soldier is... Not mystical TA, but I mean, it's the keyword. That's but okay. true, but it's it's soldier. That's might be better right now. Yeah, yeah, I just I just keep thinking back to that article they posted like a year and a half ago, where they're like, yeah, like comments and uncommons are just going to be boring, and like very plain dials, and most of the powers and traits are going to be like rare, super rares, and chases. Yeah, I, yeah, I understand that. These generics in the set, I think, are very specifically bad, even considering that. I mean, the generics have been bad for since Rise and Fall, right? Like, I don't think we... Wasn't... Uh, Sinister some... Clone was cool. I mean, he was, you know, it's a perplexed piece for 20 points with Shape Change Stealth. It's not It's not this, I mean, you know? We got Orcus Soldier coming up later. He's not a mm-hmm. I feel like there was a set recently that we were like, man, these are, like, terrible generics, but I don't know. I don't remember. We didn't get any generics in Disney Plus, and I don't. Yeah. But yes, you're right. I think they're, they're all skippable. I mean, unless Mystical really needs some more theme flop. <laughs> it has so much enhancement already that, you know, like specifically Mystical, as is the keyword with the most enhancement right now. Yeah. So, Lockheed. Uh, Lockheed. So we skipped uh, Savathi Vampire, White Priestess, and Green Priestess, and we're moving to Lockheed. Mm-hmm. Um, um, no, it's bad. It's defend bad. eighteen. Ooh, free mage attack target the opposing character that missed a friendly character since your last turn. I no, get but... this is the first character with the keyword that we have a question about. 
Okay. Okay. We. Sword. I guess we can address it here. This one's not going on that team. I get it. Will the sword keyword see an uptick in competitive play? Asked by Adam Mesa Jueski, and I only have one answer for this. <clears throat> I know. I, I mean, we can talk yeah. about it when we get there. No, 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 wait a minute. Would, would, wouldn't any play be an uptick in competitive play because nobody plays it at all, man? There. That is <laughs> true. true. But the only reason it's seeing an uptick, and it's not because there's characters in the set with the sword keyword, it's because uh -huh. Adam was relentless in his unfounded and unneeded memes about Thanos that got him errated. <laughs> That is one man's opinion. That yeah. is a, that is one man's that is one man's opinion, and that's uh, why I'm here. Oh, uh, yeah. Sure. Lockheed should have been 15 points cheaper. Yeah, that's points. Lockheed yeah, should have been 20 points cheaper. No, uh, yeah, he said 30 to 35. Yeah, I, th 30, I think 30, 30 to 35 would have been fine. I think 35 is reasonable. 30 is where you start maybe considering. I think 25 sounds a lot better. I think 25 yeah. sounds a lot better, and I think 20 he's playable. I mean, I, th I think the only reason I was saying 30 is because like he's like a he isn't a retail, but he gets to make a free attack if they like, miss. Yeah, if they miss, which hopefully yeah, they're saying so. There's something there, but not at 50. Not so. at 45. No, I mean he's a tiny flyer. Doesn't really help. Um, Lockheed's been really great in the past, and they just did Lockheed dirty. Mm -hmm. Uh, Danny Moonstar. No. She's bad. She She's is bad. good in Sealed. Yes, she was is annoying she? in Sealed, yes. Yeah, she has... I guess I could see that. She has triple target mind control, and then she can... Uh, as long as you don't running shot mind control, uh, she oh. can then, um... Uh, remove her rally die, which fives come up quite a bit from your opponent that you lend dice to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Oh, I, I, get, I, I gave I gave Jason dice to borrow last night, and he wrecked me with them. Popped off, yeah. That's yeah. what happens. Colossus. Nah. Uh, you support is free. Yeah, it's it's definitely not competitive, but I'm not mad at it. It's a fine fifty point common. Um. 19 stop click you can support nice. for free it's nice they gave colossus a stop click i feel like they just always give them in perp that you can just pen through yeah true 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 so a, a stop click is at least nice but yeah it's a sealed piece not a competitive piece yeah um orcus soldier uh now this guy might actually be generated by uh by master mold uh, it I mean, is technically possible, but when you're comparing it to what you can get for 25 points, I don't think you're generating it. Probably not. But no, but for gen he's also not horrible for the generics. I mean, I think he is. <laughs> I think he's no, horrible. Uh, he's uh, he's uh, 11 uh, for three. Ooh. I mean, no, that's, that, that that's is, way better than those other ones. Yes, because he could <laughs> he could destroy a wall. That actually yeah. is very significant. I he can running shot for three and shoot for four with one target. He's bad. He's, he's you would not play about the other four, minutes. other four generic. He's probably. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't. I don't even care to argue it. <laughs> I he, you probably oh. the only time you ever play him is if you run out of the Sentinel Pogs for Master Mold. And Do you like, need the Pogs? I don't think you actually need the Pogs. Yes. You can just use. This is yeah. a pog. No, you have to have I mean, the sentinel pogs. For shield, he's he's decent point pillar. For Why shield. do wait 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 wait? Why do you have to have the sentinel pogs? You don't need to have any other pogs. Because those pogs actually have set numbers. Yeah. What about the two big pogs that come with master mold? Yeah, it was two. You have to have extra copies to play additional ones. Like if really? if one of them gets KO'd, you could obviously use that for the. Is it just because they have set numbers? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Oh. It's always been this way. So if, if you run out of those at 15 and 10, because you're obviously, if you got 25 points, you're just going to bring in both of those. Yeah, uh, that's what I was saying. It's like, oh, well, I guess I need somebody. I'll bring in this Orcus soldier. But that's it. Yep. So, like, that's it. Yep. Um, Iceman. Uh, I had pulled this guy in sealed and did not even want to play him because it's 75 points for not that great. Yep. 
It'll be me. He won't be bad for like BRs. Because <laughs> you like probably you, not. You, you like high point figures in BRs. So yeah, like, true. Okay, but that's it. Uh, Cyclops. You, you like you like um, your opponent to have high point figures that are super <sighs> s- silly. Sure. Probably fine at BRs to be honest. A deep dial for. I would VR definitely purposes. choose this Cyclops over the Iceman. But yeah, no def- I mean, defense is leadership. Cars? Just because those. Yeah. Oh, the leadership, yes. And uh, X Men TA is free is good. Um, it's not as good as what Beast could do because Beast just gives everyone X Men and they can use it as free, so they could use it as a power action and a free action. So this one just says free. It doesn't, say, it doesn't say once per turn, right? It's everybody. Yeah, right. well, it, it doesn't give the, the team ability out, and it also, the people with the team ability can't use it normally and it's free. So it's, like, way worse than Beast. Yeah. He's great in Sealed, though. Yeah, I mean, leadership's good in Sealed. Um, he's 11 for 3 for 50 points as opposed to the Iceman's. But... He's 11 for 4 for 50 points. Oh, true, yeah. That's better. Yeah. Gorgon? Uh, Gorgon is actually uh, neat and sealed at low dial. Yeah. Is he? That. Outwit. I mean, outwit. Yeah, true. Yeah. Outwit for 35 or 40 points if you have a sword. Mm-hmm. I could see that. Yeah. Uh, magic. Feels like Maybe they our... did... Oh. Feels yeah. like they did her dirty. What? Is this not like one of our... I feel like this is a borderline meta piece no eight like, movement yeah. but eight movement is bad i agree but 25 like you probably mm-hmm. could play tempo with her though and get her up to an 11 but you still can. but it's still a passive a 12 25 point like she's no lila cheney i get it but no, she's she like that she's no. the, cl- the closest we have to that point wise and she comes with perplex for 25 points and she has and a, she's a sword bearer yeah true i the sword bear seems bad on her because <laughs> you're never attacking. The only one you would ever right. want is the defensive one, right? They'll let you re-roll. Well, I mean, so if you're going to put pay for her trait, you're going to plan on swapping her out like Cypher. Right. Yeah. Well, probably, but, I'm, but we're saying as main force. Like, she could just be used in place of Cypher and then it doesn't matter what her dial looks like. But we're saying, I think you could see her played on a uh, an X-Men team. 25 point passenger four with phasing and she has perplex. I mean, so like if uh, you TK her out six, you TK her out to eight, then you plus her speed so that's 19. She gets to 21 with tempo and uh, power, a double TK from Venom Mags. And then whoever she needs to carry moves up to her. Um, So let's just do let me think. It would be no, I did the it's math. It's a norm. Right? I mean, you started. I, no, I agree. Yeah. But I'm saying that's not. You don't want to do that because if you double TK with Venom, oh, you're saying only TK her up to eight with Venom Mags? No, no, I'm saying you TK her out eight, right? And then whoever she needs to carry moves up to her, and then Tempo gives her plus three speed. I mean, eight isn't great, but it, we're also just kind of um, a little jaded because we've got. Lockjaw that moves is 14, and then we've got the flashes when they choose Green Lantern. Like, those are awesome setups, obviously, but they're very specific. So, like, as far as a general Chip taxi goes, yeah, like, as a general taxi for 25 points. For she's, not mystical... a ge- she's not a general taxi, though. She's a mystical and new an X-Men taxi. Right. I, sorry, I mean as in like a yeah. not a very specific I'm playing him for other reasons like if you need a taxi. Now, obviously Mystical has Scarlet Witch, which is five I mean, X, points more. X-Men has <laughs> Right, but I mean if you really Right, but if you need a, a, the Perplex even at Perplex at 25 points and the X-Men team ability is not necessarily bad. Like I, I think she's better than advertised and I'm not saying she's amazing, I'm just I think she's better than advertised. No, I don't mind her. Yeah, I, think, I don't. I don't. Think she's so. fine. She's she's fine, but she's not. She's like C. Yeah, I agree with that. Probably no spoilers. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Uh, it's a good way to right. submit to so drive your point home. Um, or drive my point home. Um, roulette. Once per game, roulette may reroll a critical hit anywhere on the map 
Once per game, roulette may reroll a critical miss anywhere on the map. Uh, no, she's not good. She, I, I would play her for sure in, in a, <laughs> a BR, <laughs> just because yeah. you can just affect something on the other side of the board. But, uh, no, I, yeah, I don't think she's she full dial the prime, so. Yeah, but, yeah, other than that, not good. Uh, Cabble? Cabble. Um, Cable, um... Where are they uncommons? Oh, yeah. Uncommons, true. Officially. Yeah, um, he's he, he's going to run that sword keyword up the charts on the... <laughs> <laughs> to play. He has yeah. a sword bearer. Um, he has a rally. I haven't read it. So opposing attack rolls, um, five, five. So, uh, free, remove one of Cable's rod. If you do this turn when Cable uses Perplex or Outwit... He may use it to target a character regardless of line of fire. That seems not good. It's not yeah. bad, but it's not, not worth it. So wait, let's skip him so Dan can get to the piece he wants. Okay. Let's, let's just... <laughs> oh, man. Well, we've all been waiting for. Yep. You all know, right. You know what? I, you know what? I I know y'all are just going to give me shit, right? So... <laughs> no, yes. I love peepers, okay? I do. So... Per our magnanimous... Overlords at WizKids. Mm -hmm. The errata to Thanos was whoops, mm -hmm. the mind gem wasn't meant to be included on his uh, for targeting for range attacks. And right. that was all they changed about him. Uh -huh. And we all know how many how much support that we've been able to fit for 125 points with Thanos. <laughs> So could you imagine somebody <laughs> having his same Thanos's watch listed and errated improved targeting at only uh -huh. twenty five points, where you can add two hundred and seventy five points of support to him? Still can't add free mind control. Still can't add non penetrating damage. Still can't oh, no, add no. all the free actions that he does. No, so, no, yeah, bullshit. I'm calling you know bullshit, Daniel. No, yeah, it's <laughs> no because right, this Daniel still is. Th right. Daniel still has his mind control. I wonder how many people have a bet. No, no, it's not. You can't add free mind control to peepers. You can't add that he sucks up pin damage. You can't add all the free actions that he can do. All the free regen. It's bullshit. This is nothing like comparable to that. It is. Yeah. Because, trying to make it sound like it is. because you can add 150 support points. You can't add any of that shit for 150 or 200 fucking points. Nobody, nobody nobody's going to play this guy as an attacker. I think that if you took away his approved targeting, he's still a 25 point piece. That is almost irrelevant on this piece. You know what? Tentpole peepers. You know what? Y'all say <laughs> that. That is a very small tent. You know what? Y'all say that until somebody free TKs up peepers, moves uh -huh. all of his support around him, gets some autonomous, uh -huh. you know, shield team ability, and yep. fucking nukes your piece for five damage. <laughs> I, that's never going to happen. No one is ever going to run this piece as an attacker in modern. He would, he, again, you could remove its targeting and it doesn't matter. All right. <laughs> You're just, if, if, if that it's happens, silly. I will, I will make a video and put it on the page that says that you are a fucking genius. I was yeah. wrong. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. not going to happen. Well, I, okay. can, I cannot wait because that's going to happen. It is not. Outside not of the memes that Dan is saying, this it's is a really, a really good. No, <laughs> yes. no, that's not, that's it's not, not a meme. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, no one is ever meme. gonna do that. Dan. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a meme. Oh, it's not a meme. It's, it's not a meme. People, no, all right, we should clarify. No uh -huh. one's gonna do it in a major tournament. Someone's gonna do it in a broadcast. Yeah. Just to just to be like, oh, see, so we did. I it. don't Peepers. even think that's true. No, that's... we know someone, some Paul Cote or someone will do it. Was no. it one of the ones that was memeing, or was it Jesse that was doing it? Someone, one of the Cotes was memeing along with us with Peepers. They're crazy enough to do it. I disagree. So. They play good figures with good builds. That's not uh, I'm, so, I'm talking like after Worlds. <laughs> like Worlds is over. So, I'm just, right, I'm just thinking that, like, that all that other stuff for 25 points, mm -hmm. and he can just he can just do what Thanos can't now. 
You're <laughs> you're just trying to make oh, a point. Out yeah, of that's what he's doing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Regardless, well, well, regardless of how the BF, this is a good figure. Yes. yes. Can we talk about that? This is an amazing figure, right? He's he's twenty five so, points. Or, so so yeah, yes. you know what? I am glad to talk about all the other. I just want to say I'm glad to talk about all the other amazing, over the top, even beyond. Could you imagine having the best piece of cake that you've ever had, and then on top of that, you get to have another piece of cake. Which is friendly uh -huh. characters modify speed plus two of carrying people. Okay, Magic so, would really like that, just so. just real quick as a support piece, right? He's got he's got shield TA, which is a good support power. He's got X Men team ability, which is an okay support power. He's got no power, which is a good support power. And yeah, his trait says friendly characters modify speed plus two when carrying. Um, yeah. that's really really good for twenty five points. He gives someone plus three to their reach. Because they can move extra two squares, shoot extra one with shield. Um, he can give them an extra damage, um, either close or range with the shield or the empower. He just and you can use it multiple times a turn. So like, you know, you can running shot with Scarlet Witch instead of running shotting five and you're running shotting seven, shooting for eight. Then you could do the same thing with a rookie on my team, or um, you know, just anything. Or if you charge multiple times, like Flash, right? Flash loves this piece. Um, the uh, Blackheart would do really well. Obviously, I don't share keywords. Uh, but uh, we, mm -hmm. we got to mention Prime Vision. Prime Vision actually would really like this. Guy. Yeah, Prime Vision is yeah, great, yeah. right? Plus two speed and empower, so he's hidden for harder. Obviously, they do share keyword. Um, yeah, he, he's really, really good. I, I like him a lot as a support piece. He does. He, he adds so many stat modifiers to your team for, for his point cost. And he fits and on that's... Two, two, two separate swap teams because mm -hmm. of Brotherhood as well. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's really, really good. And I will say that in silver, <laughs> he's really good because then you can give him the mind gem, which gives a mind control with a range of 10. And then the stuff Dan's talking about. No, the liar ring. Uh, no, the liar ring. Liar ring. Sorry, yeah, liar ring. Yeah, yeah liar ring. Um, you know he also what? dies if you breathe on him. He does, but, you know, 10 square C3 and the mind control is pretty good. Yeah, that's found. pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> with yeah. precision strike. Precision Strike, right, true. Mm -hmm. um, also, this and is you just know a what? funny figure. It's just funny, and you know what? For 25 points, if if there is a build where you are required to breathe on peepers before you breathe on something else on the build, then peepers <laughs> has done what he's needed to do. The threat of peepers was so great that you had to deal three damage to him before he did something to your team. Peepers. I mean, the, well, the, threat of, the threat of 25 point watcher that swapped your figures out made him go get di to die first, but that yeah, didn't make him okay. Yeah, so yeah. that no. argument doesn't hold water either. I know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what It is good because that watcher is that good. He's just bad because you got to bring yeah, him in for it. 25 points, though, in today's meta is nothing to sneeze at. Think about all the low scoring games. That's a and, commissioner. Uh, like, mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's. Yeah, I'll go shoot for three to score twenty five points immediately. Of course, because that's yeah, that's I, it, it is something to say, for sure. He's he's very very easy to kill, and he's probably gonna yeah. die. Um, but I think he just adds so many mm -hmm. like modifiers to your team that yeah, it's yeah. worth it. He is body blocking all the time. He doesn't have to see anything. <laughs> well, he can always see it. And let's not well, forget I'm, that he is a. Let's yeah. just forget that he is also. <laughs> A really great holder of the emotional modifier. True. Yep. That for sure too. So. Or the dark hold. Yeah, yeah dark hold because you could outwit through stuff. Mm -hmm. Or prob or perplex. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really good theme prober. All right. Mm -hmm. Anything Think. else? I'm oh. I'm done. I love yep. peepers. Peepers. Great. Great figure. Oh. Is it sink or cinch? Sink. Sink. sink, because he he syncs up with uh, he adapts and evolves like sink okay. syncs up with people. He copies powers. So Another thing here that heals. heals. You can heal. Is there anybody like excessively heals that they could? No, gosh, this guy's seventy points. It's seventy points, Ooh. but he gets a pickup power, kind of right. For each of the standard friendly character uh, within range and line of fire is five range and two displayed standard powers that character can use this turn since can use those powers. Uh, it's sad that it is displayed. Those, right, instead of those, just can use. Yeah, but th those stats. 
for 70 points. Yeah, he, I think if he had like 11 attack, it could be something, maybe. But since it's displayed, it's so much worse because you can never choose Charge Flurry because you can't have those mm. two powers displayed. Um, so yeah, it's probably not. Probably, probably not. not and I guess, we're, I guess we're so spoiled with Sakari and Iron Man because like this guy just... <laughs> yeah, does not compare it favorably. No. He's way overcosted. Right, way overcosted. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Yeah, with, I mean, same thing with Honey Badger. Um, at least the pog. At least the pog. Can you just want to use a pog? At least the yeah. pog, right? At the beginning of the game, general, general, at the beginning of your turn, you may place a general by player adjacent to Honey Badger. So, honey, um, honey Badger mm -hmm. will be there for the swap as long as you go first and the person. Oh, true. It's at the beginning I mean, yeah. of the game. Well, it triggers anyway, but if you remove them, I don't think it could. You can't anywhere. generate, yeah, yeah, because there's some generate. You, just, you can't place adjacent. Yeah, it's like a kitty, a uh, cape pride, basically. So. Yeah, but worse, right? For sure. You still might do it if it the points works out. Um. Right. A charge, a charge blades exploit piece isn't bad to just have. Yeah, it's definitely not bad. If you yeah. can make it work, you do it because that's free. <laughs> So, I mean, she's fifty points, so she's a good. She's probably good for swap math. Yeah, but that, that's she, it. She's probably. I think she's really good in sealed. Like if you can't, if you can't oh, yeah. with that power, she's going to be annoying to deal with. Yeah, her defense yes. power. You mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cyclops. Um, Cyclops. That's obviously going to be super meta, right? Like no. Um, it's recruiter. I mean, like leadership isn't, isn't recruiter. recruiter. Isn't there plenty of good recruiter targets? Like, yeah. <laughs> probably. There's a lot of low point X Men, are there not? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Name them. <laughs> what do you? What? Do, what are they? Okay. The the Wolverine of thirty is pretty good. The Charge Flare Wolverine one. Maggot's uh, forty. I mean, Mag Maggot is forty. That's a compelling argument. Well, um, you know what? The best I see here is that like in Silver, uh, he can recruit Dark Phoenix. Venom Magneto. No, I think it has to be standard. Little mags, yeah. No. Oh, oh, it doesn't because yeah, you could do it with you could do it with Colossus one mystical. Bishop, yeah. if you weren't using a prime. Ooh, um, that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's it's meta for sure. I the um what? Yeah, the I think we saw that it, recruiter can definitely work because that. Um, well, you can get like you can get like multiple mans. The like, Doctor yeah. Strange beta work really well. Oh yeah, that's true. Multiple mm -hmm. mans not bad. I think the problem is is that we all just aren't good recruiter players. Like we um, we, we um, I think we, that's not. I, I mean that's not exactly true. I'd play recruiter if it was good. Okay, once again, <laughs> that does not and like that does not counter my argument. My argument is we downplayed Recruiter to begin with. It did have some success. To and be clear, I did not downplay Recruiter. I said it was good. I said I hated the way it was worded. I yes. come around on it. I kind of changed my mind on it. I think it's I think it's okay. Like I think it, there's a place for it. I think we just had bad recruiters before that were too many points. Like the Avengers ones were like too many points. Sixty points for like a Captain Marvel or something. This one thirty five. Okay, attacker, leadership, like, and he's a recruiter. That's fine. Like, power actioning um, to bring out a maggot uh, seems very strong. Or you could even do chase apocalypse, right? Like, if they kill a seventy-five point beast, you bring in a chase apocalypse mm -hmm. for nothing. Um, I, I, yeah, I think recruiter's good. I like recruiter. The problem, um, the this... problem is, is that so I have played against recruiter probably mm -hmm. half a dozen times now. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that they immediately score them. That is a negative for sure. Right. So, yeah. so here's what happened in my game in Columbus. I score. I KO'd an Agatha. The Doctor Strange recruiter was still on the board. Mm -hmm. Now, we can say that this was probably the wrong move, but it was yep. his only path to victory at this point. So okay. I KO'd his Agatha, which meant he was down a he was down a hundred, right? I'm playing Thanos, right? So mm -hmm. with just a Scarlet Witch and a wounded Doctor Strange remaining, right? Because I'd mm -hmm. KO'd the Faust and I'd KO'd the Venom Doctor Strange. Well, yeah, okay. So and then 
So, right, he's in a bad he's in a bad way, right? I mean, let's not. Is your has your Thanos taken damage? No, not a not a single one. Uh, <laughs> this doesn't matter. So, so he recruits the Doctor Strange Supreme, and then I'm up, and it goes to 195 points that I've scored. Well, it goes to more because you you said he, you killed other stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, but at a minimum, I KO'd a hundred point Agatha. Well, yeah, the, but and, you're just saying in a game that I was already going to win, this did not help. Right. But imagine so, that so the in game the, in your case, okay. right, that you're talking about with the Chase Beast and all this other uh -huh. stuff, right? Like, uh -huh. so uh -huh. if you KO the Beast, that's seventy five, and then you bring in Apocalypse, that's a hundred and forty five points that you're down immediately. Dan, Dan, do you know that? games go to time i know you're playing thanos a lot but m the majority of my games go to time and mm. if i can power action to bring in a 70 point figure figure that doesn't die that's a huge swing my games go to time well if they go to time then points don't matter right uh, obviously unless you get mercy rolled right <laughs> so Ooh. in those games or in close games have, just just the, the the words I'm going to power action to bring out a scarlet witch that's something you can do with with that guy that's insane it's not a, it doesn't go away it's just a new scarlet witch on the board that comes in with a dark hold like it's, it, 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 I just the the swing can be so good obviously it comes to yeah. huge downside but it has to because you're power actioning to bring in a, a huge amazing character halfway through the game and if it's close and you're close to wiping them or whatever then it's it's gonna like you it you have to focus this guy so i think one point i want to bring up is the the one recruiter that was doing well was strange because mystical before rotation had the access to windigos and, yeah. and things and that's what made it great right mm -hmm. now mysticals just kind of meh to be honest like x-men has so much and it has Krakoa and revival so there's yeah. that gives you options where it's like okay i don't like i won't choose Krakoa and revival this time instead i'll let them die and i'll recruit someone from my sideline to come in and like that's... you have so many options I don't know. That seems worse. If you're doing both, I think you'd always rather Krakoa and Revival. Well, you can recruit a Krakoa and Revival person onto the board. That's true. You could do and, that. And yeah. then going forward, now I've got Krakoa and Revival. I didn't need it Yeah, before, like Chase but... A. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the main drawback of Beast at 75 is he's easy to kill. He's only four clicks. But if you kill Beast and then you have a Chase Apocalypse, like that's great. And the other thing is that, like, Mystical's so limited. Avengers, just not enough pieces. X-Men is probably the biggest keyword that we have right now. Because we've got this set. We're about to get the other X of Swords OP set. We've got House of X, Rise and Fall. Like, there's a ton of Empire people that have it. Like, it's probably mm -hmm. the most, like, named keyword out there. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. So there's so many options. There's the swap. There's Krakoa revival. Adding recruiter just means Cyclops is. I think he is going to be played at some point. I think it's just a, a matter of when. Yeah. So. Have we convinced you, Dan? Convince me of what specifically? <laughs> if he's good, you said he's bad. But he's bad. Okay, well, that's fine. I think. Play. I, I just don't think that so like you're like it's the same reason I told you Tyler that like I uh, you I, you would never take me to a 5-0 loss and if you did I would be so pleased with you that sure. it would be immeasurable almost okay um so for my play style right like uh -huh. I see somebody recruit in whomever I lap yeah. up. I lap up the. I lap up the tiers of points that I'm scoring. Right, like I have now advanced towards my goal of getting into a. I just have to run. And yeah, right. I, that's your mindset probably at that point anyway. So <laughs> that's right. true. All right. um, it's I all mean, right. it, 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 your like, your your play style though is generally point denial. The most that you go. To giving up points was 10 point trouble alerts like that was your maximum i think that you were willing to bring someone in and give up points willingly because the obviously at that point it's a 
much better trade off. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's not your play style, like you're saying. So like I think that's why you, you just don't feel great about it. it right. still it's the a... same thing. Like I'm like in Kukro and Revival games, like I I'm like I like eighty twenty or like ninety ten winning those. Um, yeah, but the the problem with Kukro and Revival over this is that this is not this is more of a tempo play right you're trying to stay ahead you're trying to do stuff and Kirkko and Revival just sort of kills your tempo because because of those those pogs are so strong and you can right. act with them immediately and they're normally killing something else right. did y'all so know just... by the way did y'all know that one of the Kirkko and Revival pogs is an autonomous EE pog without wit I did yes. yeah there's it's, a it's... autonomous charge flurry pog they're very very good no it's not charge flurry it's, you're talking about flurry or, blade. Sorry, it's yeah flurry, flurry blades, blades. Yeah, yeah, I was setting up for a, a Flurry Blades pog, and I couldn't quite get it. And um, I looked at the card, and it was like, oh, there's an EE pog with six range. That's a time. Yeah. I was like, yeah, all right, so let I me think EE e your team again. Yeah, I thought that was that's the problem with uh, Krakona Revival is that you fall so behind because of the pogs, and this doesn't really have that. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, I know, I get it, I get it. I'm not saying that it's just, it's not like it's trash, right? Or like, mm -hmm. I just think it's easy enough for most opponents to play around that it's not that big a deal. Okay, that's fair. Did we already review Gorgon? Why is there another one? Yeah, there's two Gorgons there's in the two set for some reason, and um, I would there's say... two Magics, too. Two Cyclops. Yeah. 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 Um, the Gorgon at 30, I played it in Sealed, and it's not bad. Uh, leadership in Sealed with Team Player. Yeah, leadership is not bad. Yeah, Team Player too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but not, never competitive. Right. Nope. Uh, um, magic. This is the worst sure. magic. Action yeah. T can use this free. Yeah, no, this is not even good at all. Right. Nope. <laughs> um, Tarot. Tarot. Oh. Tarot. I mean, um, it, anyone with capabilities to mess with the tarot cards, which we'll sort of talk about later, I feel like is going to be good. Um, it's, it's weird because you're basically, she's not really a figure, you know? So you're, pay, you're paying 30 points for the trait, which is very expensive for a trait. Um, but she gets perplexed or outwit. Yeah, that's true. Uh, she does, um, but yeah, it, it's a very powerful effect. Like if you if you're playing, let's say six terror cards, like one of each of the suits, and then two majors, then if you want to pull one specific card, she turns it into a one in three chance, as opposed to a one in six. And also, one you know, on five. your third turn, I'm saying if you play, no, I'm saying if you're playing six cards. Oh, you 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 play five cards. That's the minimum. Yeah, I'm, sometimes you might want to um, the the big ones, but oh. e even five is one. In right, three. you're talking about playing more than one major arcana. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so it's a very powerful effect. I I don't think it, she sees play just because I feel like all of your cards you want to pull. Essentially, you probably have some that are better than others, but. I don't know. Maybe you see. I don't know. Well, I, I think you'll have to test. To I, think, I, I think that she... I think, she is, I think that there is a... It's probably more after we see the... Um, the OP set stuff. Because... Maybe. Be, yeah. yeah, because you have... I mean, you know, if you take stuff up, right, the chances <coughs> of pulling a card with the stuff that we have is fine, and but it's pretty situational. Um... Mm -hmm. But um, it's definitely good. So it's like, does she do anything else besides set there? Um, I don't think she so. She does. Well, she has perplex her out with. Right. I think, I think it would be an easier play. Um, I think it would be an easier decision for us to make if she had TK instead of NCAT. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Mm -hmm. Generally, if you add a support power to someone, they get better. Um, I th I, th I think this figure in the hands of someone who becomes a very efficient tarot card player might end up playing her. Like, because it, like you said, it it turns maybe a fifty percent chance of a card into a hundred percent. You know, turn three. Turn right. Four. Yeah. Turn three. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. 
there's potential it there also, if you build very specific. It also allows you to structure your deck, right, for turn, like Tyler said, for turns three and four and beyond, right? Well, it's specifically three. So, like, if you want to play, like, if let's say, hypothetically, you're playing a range-based team and you have the sun in your deck, which lets you ignore all, all no lines of fire are blocked, basically, you know, you can just bury her up until you hit that card, and with her, you're hitting it by turn three. With without her, you're hitting it by turn six, which you can't really plan to bury her that long. But so, at the same, stuff at, like that. But at the same time, it's every turn and it's a May. So I mean, you can also power cycle through your deck a little bit faster. Yeah, she's um, what's that called? Tutoring. She's a tutor. She's yeah. a tutor figure. So I think if you build if you build very specifically around tarot cards and you've got specific plans. I think she could see play, but probably more as a switch in for X Men and be like, okay, maybe this version I need to rely on my tarot cards more. Right. But, the main problem is just give her more keywords, and then I would be more confident. <laughs> yeah. What was the tutor? But, uh, what, what is this tutor thing you saying? What does that mean? Uh, tutoring. Like magic thing. Yeah, and magic is when you draw, but you draw for like specific types of cards. Mm, okay. Like you can draw two land guards out of your deck or something like that. All right, so we've got they the, let you deck. All right, we got the two danger room because we're, we're getting we're still in the uncommons. Mystic, know. mystique. Sorry, <laughs> mystic. <laughs> I mean, uh, they're both danger room figures. This one and the next one. Yeah, but one of them's good. Yeah, she's good. <laughs> yeah, that's um, good. you know what? So like, mystique is good. Possibly one of the best tie up pieces ever. Mm -hmm. Um. But will she be play? So I, you know what, like, I think so, right? Like, yes, she would. Yeah, I don't see why not. I think, I think she'll see play. It'll be very limited. Um, it'll only be on her keywords, right? I don't think she makes any on theme teams because we have two figures that are just too good. Um, so, and then it, it just depends on if Robot or Brotherhood one sees play. <laughs> and two has a need of her and can fit her and so I, I think it's pretty limited i like the figure a lot but i i think it's going to be limited to none on the on the play sides so i think i think, I think, I robot... think, I think that the so i think robot danger room construct team is fine right it's just hard to chew through especially, <laughs> especially with the alchemical fire nerf um, yeah that definitely helps so um what were you going to say, Alex? And then I'll, I think I want to talk about Sebastian. More. I think she's she sees more play because Robot needs more fluff because they lost Superman. Right. So 20, 25 points, it's nice to have a little bit more in there. I don't I don't think a Danger Room theme is playable because you lost your best Danger Room figures ever. Yeah. And these are not... I, these are okay pieces. They're not comparable to... Well, I, think, Mag I think Magneto that what... and... That's true. And... Like those three, like set the gold standard, and Mystique is kind of there differently, but mm -hmm. I don't think any of the others compared to those three. So now sil silver, you could run a whole danger room team. <laughs> That's true. Right. So here's what I think about Sebastian. Um, okay. Underworld is good. Underworld's great. Now he's not an attacker. <laughs> no. But here's why here's why I think that he gets played. I like Sebastian Shaw as an emotional modifier holder. So he's got yeah, he's got he's got leap climb, he can carry, uh he's got willpower, yeah. right? So he he can act potentially act over multiple turns. Mm -hmm. Uh terrain doesn't particularly bother him. Yeah, he's a little slow. Um, <laughs> a little bit. I like super slow. <laughs> but as an emotional modifier holder, that is a an, that is an annoying equipment for a lot of teams, right? Because you know it's per going down defenses or it's taking down mm -hmm. your attack, right? So it makes it to where Sebastian annoys you, or you have to deal with Sebastian, which you're never doing. I don't think. Right, so you get to get annoyed by Sebastian with him being an emo Mahdi holder. 
Mm -hmm. That is a good use for him, for sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, um, or, you know what, even, like, I know, I know, like, uh, Sinister was, is better. I'm not saying that Sinister is, or Sebastian's as good as Sinister. But, it also is not bad if you put Galactus on Sebastian. Yes, it is. What are you talking it's about? Not, it's not good. It's nowhere close. But, no, it, it isn't because there's no outwit. But then again, Sebastian, do you go start dealing with him to have him potentially start hitting you? Why would I ever deal with him? Because the converter is coming for you if you have Galactus on him. Okay, then I just stay away from the edge of the map. Like, Well, he's saying eventually Galactus comes in, right? And then I kill Galactus? Uh, uh, no, come on. It, <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Dan was talking about recruiter. He, he is recruiter in. But Galactus it's good to bring how, in a hun. No, 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 no. How many times have you ever heard Galactus coming in on his 100 point dial? That you I think just... PJ did it once. That he almost could, said it to me. That it doesn't reduce penetrating, so you just gotta boop him down to a stop click and hit him once, or you score 100 points. So, like, I but I'm saying the converter. Is way more dangerous than um, than anything, right? Like it, we forget that the converter does stuff, and I don't. and like it dictates the pace of play for your opponent because it doesn't affect you as the Galactus person. So I, I think it's fine. I think if you told me you wanted to play Galactus on Mystique, I would say okay. The that problem, makes more sense. the problem is that Mystique um, is designed to tie you up. Um, so she's next to your opponent, so you're rolling more, like you're turning the dial more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess right, but so is Sebastian, right? But if Sebastian gets close and you start hitting up on him, he gets way stronger. To deal me one. Yeah, he he never gets as strong. Mystique is always a better attacker than this guy, as long as you still have the tokens on. Obviously, if you take him off, he's better. Think about all the other Sebastian Shaws we've had, and how many of them people have played because he gets stronger at the end of his dial. Like it's just, yeah. uh, what are mm -hmm. uh, what are they? Bizarro dial scenarios. They just don't get yeah. played. Like, I mean, I get it. Only I get it. But... played for for Underworld, maybe, but his movement is garbage. And I don't I, even I don't even particularly like him with an emotional modifier because you kind of want someone with sidestep I feel like more to get more moving around and in position I I just I don't I think don't, it's I, necessary to do that I think he's realistically he's getting carried if he has a modifier on him right um, yeah I agree but uh, but yeah I. I don't mind him with the modifier. It's the same thing as Mystique. He's he's definitely not good enough to play off theme, I don't think. So it's really just the keywords right. that are holding him back. I agree. And uh, and, yeah. and robot and robot's area. fine. I just don't want like Sebastian to be wrote off, right? He should be. <laughs> like okay. it's just Okay. He's my he's my yeah, second nice. favorite danger room in the set. Other Sentinel. Omega Sentinel. She bad. Yeah. Man. Which is she was so cool with the comic, and they made her so bad. Yeah, you would. The only time you'd ever have her is just on your sideline with all your not sideline, out of the game with all your other Sentinels. Mm -hmm. Like like people would have Omega for that one game, and even then you probably would never bring her in. But you'd have her there just to watch the game in <laughs> case in case Master Mold brings her in. True. That's it. Uh, this uncommon right. Magneto is baller and sealed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Any TK pieces and leadership is good in sealed. Oh, he's well, no, no, so he's, got, he's got five clicks of invincible. Oh, start, you're talking about uh, an attack. Yeah, it's 100, yeah. Yes. That's true. Yeah. That's fair. I yeah, thought four about damage, 12 attack, side blast. Yeah. yeah, that's not bad. And dual targets. Um, and dual targets. Brotherhood is worse than X-Men, right? For a recruiter, State yeah. I mean, still could bring in Venom Magneto. Still, yeah. still can bring in twenty-five point Magneto, the the shooty, uh, the the one. Does he have X Men? He doesn't, right? No, he doesn't. 
Okay, so no. you have to play a brother a team. <laughs> That's yeah. way worse. Uh, there, he brings in Firebelly, guys, so... Oh, what, true! What, what, Mag <laughs> what, what are you talking Whoa, about? Well, okay. What Magneto are you talking about? The one that no, we're no. currently reviewing. No, yeah. the ra I was talking about the rare from House of X. Oh, uh, okay. The 20, I'm thinking yeah, yeah. low-point recruiter pieces. No, it's not great. It, it's really not. He would only be considered it at 30 points if you were really dead set to play Brotherhood. Yeah, if Brotherhood takes off, I think easy play. All right. Yeah. But uh, Jean Grey, not a danger room. I mean, could you get a it's better a support piece? Yeah, be better support piece. For yes. Thirty-five. You could. Yeah. <laughs> you absolutely could. That's not. Who? I'm not saying she's bad, Who? but you, you definitely could. Who? Who? Uh, Venom, Magneto, the... uh, Chip, uh, a bunch of them. Uh, I mean, mother. Uh, not mother. Do not put mother in that category because she brings TK barrier and power and leadership. She and does. Like I mean, just a sheer number of powers that she's bringing. Is... Ve yeah, Venom Magneto, Venom Magneto is the only one I would say. Okay, yes. Wait, you think really you she's in the same class as Chip? Yeah. You so. disgust you're not, me, sir. You're not playing Chip on an X Men team. Yeah. No, you're playing Chip on every non-theme team and any team that he fits so, on. So, wait, hold on. Pause. Mm -hmm. Just one, one moment, please. Holding. Uh, um, Mother is better than Jean Grey. Oh, yeah, for sure. I 100%. No. no, no. <laughs> yes, she is. I'm thinking more of just the... Ba I'm, I am valuing Barrier, I think, much higher. Than you guys I mean, Barrier is great. great. I, I love Barrier. Great. Barrier is great, but, I mean, considering, like, I, mm -hmm. you've got Cypher for Barrier and TK on X-Men. Just in her point class, exactly, I would rather have, uh, yeah, Venom Magneto. I'd rather have Dazzler. I'd rather have uh, Cypher. I'd rather have Mother. Well, Cypher's, um, Cypher's is Cypher... Uh, Cypher yeah, is so TK, yeah, Barrier, yeah, yeah, Perplex. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'd rather have the Side Perplex side. over Leadership because the Leadership is easy to come by. The Perplex isn't. Um, is it's it? Surprisingly, X-Men does struggle with Leadership. Uh, no, they like, normally no have play, to... Yeah, no one's playing Cyclops. They so. normally have to play... Now that I think they will play that Cyclops. Though, which uh, talking I mean, about, Venom but... Magneto, right? It's got Leadership. But they oh, don't sure. play Venom Magneto all no, the they time. Don't. Not they... all the time. They should. <laughs> they, should. They, they should, but they don't. I, maybe. Well, but maybe, I don't, I don't maybe think... it has something to do with Venom Magneto being $250. But... Okay. Right. I, I think yeah. she she is for a uncommon, which we're still in the uncommons. Like, that's a great uncommon, I think. It's a great she... uncommon, but it's not as competitive as all the other 35-point pieces that we have. Well, no, she's not. Maybe she's good for collector because you need a good uncommon for some of that. So that is true. Good point. Good point. <laughs> I, um, I like yeah, she, I like that point better than um, other ones. I there. I can't. She's clearly not bad. You can't call her bad. She's she's great for for the points, right? All of those powers. Um, I just don't. She's competing with some really good figures. She is competing yeah, with some. That's very true. She is competing with some absolute powerhouses mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. support of support. Um, eighty point bishop. Womp womp womp. Awful, awful, awful. Poor guy. We get we get such great. Too, so. Womp womp. Yeah. Okay. Womp. okay. <laughs> Un Uncommon's done. Okay. Yeah. He's seventeen defense. He's seventeen toughness. Like he just dies. Yeah. No, I was just saying he said eighty. I was like, there's a thirty five oh, point down. Okay. That's bad also. Okay, so. gotcha. True. Right. All right. Rares. Um, let's okay. see. Rares. Iska. The unbeaten, apparently. It'll be, it'll be unbeaten because no one's going to play it. So. <laughs> yeah, this one's not so great. Um, this, she does come with the sword. Um, she's the one that comes with the sword in her pack. Um, I'm assuming it's a, it's a gal. Um. Yeah. Um, it is. So, mm -hmm. but no, but I would say. She's bad. She's bad. Um, now the. The prime. The prime is really, really good in sealed. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, uh, I guess super that. annoying. 
Yeah, super annoying. Um, um, Jason got her to her stop click once, and then couldn't finish her off, and she healed back to her second click. Yeah, because he kept using that Rick and Rally dodge, changing my rolls to four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but four is pretty good, right? It wasn't when you rolled like a six and another a one. number that was yeah, like yeah. he was able to keep me from hitting her like at least three different times when he could change one of them to a four. Sure, right. when I did hit yeah. on my original roll. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah, it's cool. It's it's a little gimmicky, but it and see, it, it also lets her up her uh, super senses roll on her stop click when she does that. Right? Yeah, I saw yeah. that. That's yeah, that is definitely annoying. I could see how that's yeah. very hard to deal with in sealed. It's 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 yeah. It's it's better than you give it credit for when you just mm-hmm. look at it. Yeah. And she yeah exploit precision strike. She's got a good offense too. Hey, look, guys! It's another hard to kill Wolverine that just keeps <laughs> coming back. You know yeah. what? So, like, I would I would go ahead and remind folks here of <clears throat> my um, apology to Wizkids uh, earlier for Wolverine for Wolverine because I was like, why is Wolverine always just a charge piece that just doesn't do <laughs> jack shit? And it occurred to me after seeing this Wolverine that an unkillable Wolverine is how he should be. Okay. Now, but now are we going to start saying that WizKids is lazy because they're just making every Wolverine the same <laughs> unkillable thing? No, like I mean, I, I guess, but like, um, because the Wolverine came out in the summer of 2020, I think it's just more sad that it took them 18 years to perfect Wolverine design. And I think at this okay. point... And I think at this point, I'm glad that they have perfected Wolverine design. I mean, you can argue that Xavier School Wolverine was very perfected. Yeah, he's pretty fucking great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You, well, if you're he say he wasn't great. It's like okay. No, no he was great, but I don't. I think it was just good because it was just OP. Um, but that Wolverine in particular didn't quite capture the healing factor. Or Wolverine's like hunting, uh, smell, animalistic type abilities. Um, the headmaster one, but now I get that he was a headmaster, he was in the school, so I think that like it captured the headmaster version of yeah. Wolverine, but it doesn't didn't capture the essence of what I think about like the early seasons of um, like X Men animated Wolverine from my youth. Mm-hmm. And by the way, if anybody um, says that I'm not like a comic fan or whatever at this point, like, like you know, whatever, I, I I do this stuff right because I love Wolverine. Sure. So so at this apparently point, just, apparently I never realized it, but I love Wolverine. Uh, just sudden realization. So right now, just letting everyone know, it's 180 points to play the three really hard to kill Wolverines. The, What's the third one? Uh, there's the Mark one. You could argue the Mark one is hard to kill. Yeah. Um, there's the Fantastic Four one. The... Who, if there's a Fantastic Four, he doesn't die. He does very similar to what this one does. The problem is, is that the Fantastic Four Wolverine doesn't have a Fantastic Four buddy to round right. out the team. I mean, there's Fantastic Four with X Men, is there not? No, there is. There is, but they're not there terribly one. hard to. KO. Right, yeah, so you just focus on is the problem. It's, it's another Wolverine that has Fantastic Four and X-Men. Um, I think this Wolverine is bad. I don't like him. I don't like like, I get the mechanic, but in actual practice it's not that good, because he, he's very easy to kill, no stealth like he normally has, or super senses anywhere on the dial, and then he comes in at the beginning of your turn but your opponent gets to place him four squares away from one of their friendly characters, and he doesn't start with charge. So he, he's not attacking that turn. He's just sitting there. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, like he, he comes back, but he's he's not doing much. Yeah. He, I mean, he can hold on. Here's yeah. the thing. Here's the, hold on. Here's the deal, Tyler. He doesn't have to do much. Yeah, I know. He just has to not give up points. I, I get it. For that, he's he's obviously great because I don't. You literally can't kill him unless you kill every other piece, right? Pretty sure that's true. That share keyword. 
They have to share. It. Oh, no sure. Friendly char characters. Now, also keep in mind, he could just come back next turn. Like, because it, you'd only keep clicking based off of damage. Are you really yeah, going to try true. to waste more damage on him to get him to keep him off further? Yeah, oh. he just keeps coming. Yeah, so I mean, you're going to probably try to shoot him for five, maybe six, and just wait Oof. for him to come back. Mm -hmm. And Venom Mags, just TK him up. You know, he starts with a sword, so it's not like he doesn't have some offensive capabilities. Yeah, sword helps. So I think he's much better than uh, credit for. I like him almost more than the Fantastic Four one. Oh, uh, I don't. Well, um, Fantastic. I think I see where you're coming from, that Alex, because he gets to be equipped. Um, mm -hmm. He's cheaper, and like he's he's a, he's benefited from two years of power creep. Yeah, I mean the the Fantastic Four Wolverine is very similar. He starts on click six, which is regen battle fury and no movement power. So, I mean, very similar. Yeah, but that Wolverine, this is just, this is a charge piece. That Wolverine can, like, he can attack after he's been carried. He gives other people flurry. Um, he starts with um, sidestep and I think passenger two. So, like, he, he just does a lot. Okay, either way, he, he does a lot. This guy's yeah. just a charge piece. Yeah, but you play them together, so... Yeah. So the big Bad. thing with the big thing with this Wolverine is that he also ignores characters. Yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. yeah. He does. That's not on realms. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's one of his card though. I pulled him yesterday and played him. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's it's on realms on his like the oh, okay. actual realms, not the evidence threat. That does make it much better. Yeah, I think I think you'll see somebody try both Wolverines and maybe unthemed with. Fantastic Four to keep the other one alive and just yeah. send them out. There's something there with that. You give me too many unkillable pieces, I'm going to throw them out there. Like mm -hmm. he would, like people tried that with what's her face, uh, Sue Storm, with just one Wolverine. So you just throw another Wolverine out there, like I yeah. I like think there's... I think if they're the problem is is that Sue retired. Well, yeah. And That's a problem. So, like I don't know if you play the three Wolverines, would you say it was that it was that one eighty with the sword trait? No, one eighty five. You could skip the Mark one if you don't like that. No, one, no. So. so I mean, that does make a difference. Is is it one eighty five for all of them with the sword trait? Yes, that is with oh, the sword trait. Darn, because then you're only um, then you're you're five points shy from being able to play four Lockjaws with it. <laughs> okay, that's not a theme team, but you're right. Right, I mean, just uh, you know, play the three of them. Play the Mark one. Uh, play the Sword Bear trait. Three Lock Jaws. No, sorry, it's not four. Three. No, three times three is nine. So it's three Lock Jaws that leaves you with twenty five points of something else. Or four Lock Jaws and no sword. <laughs> four Lock Jaws, no sword. Right. That's a lot to chew through. While the Wolverines are charged, flurrying. You know, being carried, doing free attacks, right? Yeah. Not dying. Yeah, sure. That's a that's a total without toughness involved. That would be a total of eight times four, right? Yeah, yeah. Not bad. Twenty thirty two clicks. Thirty two. Thirty two clicks of health while they're not dying. Yeah. All right. Let's. A thing. That's a thing. I don't think it's a bad <laughs> thing. I don't know if it's a good thing or an OP thing, but it's not a bad thing. All right, so war. Mm -hmm. war. I feel like that they keep mm. trying to do something with horsemen, man, and they just don't. What is it good? They just for? don't make it good. Absolutely nothing. Uh, he's 12, 12, right. 19, 4. Yep. Quake, giant reads, 3 exploit. And you just pew shoot shoot through him. Pew pew. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Probably, fifty probably points. Not great. Fifty points for four damage. Woohoo. Yeah, the fifty point one's bad. Like, like set, 75, set, seventy-five points. I just shoot you once and then like mm -hmm. peepers can shoot you. Like it doesn't matter. You've got willpower. I mean Sakari <laughs> and Iron Man charge flurries him to his last click solo. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. Two, two, uh, same with the next guy. Like, just yeah, two. Yeah. 
for horsemen, they seem kind of frail. So, yeah, same problem. Yep. All right, now we got back to some danger room. Danger room. Yeah, not not frail is danger room apocalypse. Right. Ooh, they can. If you do friendly character, they can use the danger room construct take. Oh, you have to give them an error token. So this is a way to error token them out specifically. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they can start dealing damage. Um, yeah. I will say it also gives them giant colossal, which is very good with uh, juggernaut <laughs> because you can move and quake, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So colossal mm -hmm. quake is pretty good. All right, yeah, that's eleven attack now. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that. You know, it's it's an outwit. He's he's real expensive at sixty. Um, he's a risk with it with his KO. Like rest of the game, the character that took him out gets cosmic energy. That yeah, that could, that could be kind of bad. It could for sure. Um, yeah, I I do like. I mean, oh, okay, just by the way, just I'm gonna just mm -hmm. pause here for a second, and, I, and and I'm gonna include Juggy, Danger Juggy here, and the other right. ones. These sculpts, fellas. Mmm. Chef's kiss. It's oh, amazing. Uh, by the way, if the pack is heavy, avoid it probably because it's probably Danger Room Apocalypse or Juggernaut. And they and they, <laughs> and they are just rares, by the way. So right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, be aware yeah. of that. Unless you're, you hunting, feel... unless you're hunting potato Anyone. cards. Yeah. I feel like people played Sinister with Galactus for unoutwittable outwit. Mm -hmm. On a figure you can't kill, so there's there's value there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't think know. I just Sinister don't know if the robot team's too, there. I don't. I think Sinister may have been undercosted. Hashtag just saying. Oh no, he definitely was. He was unbelievably good. Like yeah, I'm, this guy's not as good as Sinister because Sinister had a whip, but he also had shape change. He yeah. had invincible. He had been poison. Poison. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, yeah. Um, I, but he's yeah. he's still very playable. I think so. I really um, like the Juggernaut combo that I just thought of right now. <laughs> so right, that's that, fun. That one's good, and I also like Juggernaut. I mean, just I, uh, I also like, I also like Juggernaut with Galactus because he can phasing Quake. Um, and then he gets, can? and then he gets hypersonic. Is phasing a move action? It yeah. is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, him with it's hypersonic move action? Definitely not, right? No, okay. not, no. <laughs> that'd be too no. good. No, but he can then hypersonic, you know, quake or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, I don't even know what's after that on Galactus off the top of my head, but like, those are the two charger most... running shot. Right. So, like, uh, they get a minimum range of six too. So, I mean, that's not for anything as well if he gets to running shot, right? As long as it's not a battle fury clicks. Um, you know say, what? You... That's not wrong. Oh. I would say because this is the last danger room in the set. I would say if you had to rank the four, I would probably put Mystique first, then Juggernaut, then Apocalypse, then Sebastian. Um, I would maybe switch Juggernaut and Apocalypse, but probably not. You're, you, I think it's close there, but I, I agree. I don't, I don't think because of the lack of move and attack with Apocalypse, I'm leaning more Juggernaut because Juggernaut's basically your only main attacker out of Danger Room. Like, can you equip Juggernaut with anything that's good? Because that's what you need to equip these people. Because a you sword, need to... any of the swords, because he's going to be going in and hitting with a close attack. Giving him blades isn't terrible. Can you still? Oh yeah, you can just it's a close attack. I mean, blade he's still dealing one damage, um, mm -hmm. so it'd have to be for the one of the effects. Yeah, um, so the mind control one isn't terrible, so you can do more damage. True, um, mind control is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's probably one of the swords, to be honest, because you don't care about anything defensive. Um, Waldo arms, maybe just to get a second attack. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, but and probably not. Yeah, giant reach is nice, actually. That's kind of true. So. But uh, yeah, you probably if you're playing a robot team that's going to rely on danger room, you almost have to have juggernaut because you got to have damage output. And even though he's only dealing one, he's got the move and attack. Where 
I think he's the only one with movement attack. So. Yeah, then it starts with it at least. Yeah. Yeah. True. All right. Um, rare rogue. Vampire. Uh, still haven't quite figured it out. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not yeah. there. It's not 12, there. Twelve for four. Yeah. Hey, if she started there, I'd be all for it. No, it's, it's yeah. still 12 for 4 with, because of the... Oh, control. I see, yeah. If sure. she's 13 for 5 at top, it's just... Just if give her the give her the the speed power on click 1, and I, I, might, I might be there. But... I mean, the closest... You would have to compare her to Prime Wonder Woman, right? Like, that's the closest we've got for a vampire dial. They're the same points... I wonder if it's not a vampire dial, is she? Yeah, yeah she starts yeah. at click four. Yeah. yeah. Actually, their stats are the same. Yeah, but one is two stop clicks. Yeah, the two stop clicks <laughs> is the key <laughs> thing there. Yeah. So that should mean that the You're... Captain Britain Rogue is just that much better. Mm, no. You'd think. But no. <laughs> Captain uh, Britain Prime. Yeah, not... Um, not what a waste. Good. Of a problem. Within range, she shows a cure of safeguard our wit. 12, 12, 18, 4 charge flurry for 100 points. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Nope, that could have been a non prime and rare, no one would, yeah, still. Rare Kate Pride. Also garbage. She looks awful. Oh, she's the one with the mission point thing. It's it's cool that it's it's cool that you're like trying to save people. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I like it thematically. Yeah, but, but it's yeah. not. Yeah. She's not good. Yeah. Uh, take her to a, take yeah. her to a water map. There you go. For yeah, some reason, can. she's got the dolphin. <laughs> dolphin. Symbol. She's a pirate. Uh, yeah, well, not, not pirates usually are on ships, not in the ocean. Oh, but... wait a minute. You're big on pirates now, Tyler? <laughs> no, I said she was a she is a pirate. That's and, all I said. And you <laughs> said you said it excitedly though. So <laughs> you know who she goes really well with? A blackbeard. That is true, and you, you know who you add after Blackbeard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess this is Deadpool. No, yeah, that's true, but then you know who you add after that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm out of options. Golden Skull. Oh my god! Why are we bringing Golden Skull up? Because <laughs> he's your favorite character. Uh huh. All right, Pyro. Um, bad. Yep. Not good. Emma Frost. It's yeah. Um this one was interesting, right? She makes the things. How does she do it? So improve targeting, hindering characters, that's great. She has six range, mind control, psychic blast. Um re replace her with that. We haven't seen that, right? The one she replaces uh, with. No. So that's pretty important. <laughs> so it remains uh, to be seen on some of her. But it's a four to six super senses protected out way, that's cool. Um, and then leadership, when she uses it, you may set generate a bystander on this card. Each bystander is maximum one. Um, and the bystanders are cool. They have, like, perplex. It's like perplex, outwit, prob, psychic blast, and, mind and maybe mind control. It's yeah. right below her card. So, like, right oh, look below. at that. Oh, I remembered him. No, it's, it's prob, uh, perplex. Yeah, he's, I said he's, him all. Yeah, he's, he said him all. I, yeah. my, there's no mind control. Am mm -hmm. I missing that? Yeah, it's at the it's top. Sophie. 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 Yeah, the first one. Oh, you know what? Uh, there is there is a shit ton of them. Okay, never mind. I didn't scroll yeah. down some more. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I why not does it, having why does not it, seen. Why does it look like they're in a '90s teen cartoon? Because they're like the the cuckoos are kind of supposed to be like the Stepford Wives kind of. Oh, that makes sense. Yep. Um, I just this dial would not be playable. I don't think. Um, it's very expensive. It, it's really cool. Um, but maybe the diamond form, um, is like super super hard to kill, and then it could be, uh, pretty good. Yeah, it's like almost like a shifting focus. Mm -hmm. So if that, so right now without that diamond form, I think it's unplayable because as much as the leadership bring in thing is cool, we know that it's not reliable because. Blackheart would be played. Reed Richards Alpha would be played more. Mm -hmm. but it's not reliable, so okay. So um, it really is going to be dependent on that 100 Emma. If that one is 
anywhere close to like good, then maybe she sees play. But, as mm-hmm. a and as a reminder, folks, Doom's Castle retired. Yes. Um, as we saw in Columbus, people tried to still play that map. Yeah. I mean, I I can't blame them because I, I all of them risk is dead. I'm not, I'm <laughs> you know, not, I'm not mad at them. I'm just saying, like, just public announcement. Public it announcement. Retired. It retired. That's why you can't, just yeah. don't don't look at this Emma and be like, well, I'll just play Doom's Castle. Well, you can at the kitchen table or in Silver Age. Yep. Um. Uh. Magneto. Ma- are you doing what did I they... do? Why do you? Why are you mispronouncing things? Are you trying to take after me the, today? I don't know. Do you do that? I don't even know that you do that. I, mean, I, I did. He's... I did the D for a whole like uh for a whole. Okay. <laughs> I mean, well, he, maybe he, I am. He calls Jimmy Woo Jimothy. So. <laughs> Jimothy Woo. <Yeah>. Um. <laughs> okay. I don't know what this guy does. So he has approved targeting. He's a Thanos killer. Points. No, <laughs> Opposing characters within range of the line of fire using impervious ship and super senses decrease their result by one. A six is always set. That's something. Uh, running shot when he uses after resolutions, he may use force blasts as free. That's something. Energy shield deflection in Vaughn, and this character has safeguard mind control. Uh, no. He's probably good in sealed. He's got enhancement. Um, he's got hella keywords. He's got the sword. Um, but probably not good enough. Dude, right. If it was only if it was only range and not line of fire for that rollout thing, that yes, might, that would that be might be worth it. Well, but, he has improved yeah. targeting characters, so I mean, it's not like oh, that does help. It's not that bad. But uh, sixty-five. Cora, Cora of the, the Burning Heart. Cora of the Burning Heart. Um, is that a song? Uh, that's uh, what is it? Keeper of a Lonely Heart. Okay. Um, if she's on sword or Arako defense. Modifier attack and defense plus no, one. Still not, good. still not good enough. Nope. All right, nope. Darwin. Sad. She was a sad rare. Darwin <laughs> also need... looks like a sad rare. It's uh... better than the last Darwin we got. It's started by attack. You may choose a color of a standard power displayed on the attacker style. If we do, he can use all standard. That's kind of fun. Um, so if they attack him enough perplex, he now has hypersonic poison imperv perplex or flurry blades, super senses range combat expert. Yeah. I don't like it. That's going to be super great when Sarkan Iron Man shows up and you can only pick purple powers. <laughs> that's the, <laughs> yeah, that's not great. Um, <laughs> like force blast and smoke cloud and willpower and close combat. Like, all yeah. right. Um, because it's if it, just don't give it once per turn. Just let them keep stacking the power. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yes, yeah, so I was thinking to say they like it. All right, you can pick one power from a color, and he just yeah. keeps it. Yeah, that'd but be no. cool. Nope, nope. There's probably a reason. We, there's probably a reason we're not set designers. Um, <laughs> Absalon. There's a stop click here. Right. No. Nope. Stop for generation. Yeah. Oh, okay. At yeah. the beginning. Of your turn, you may choose an opposing character and roll. Oh, yeah, it's this one. At the beginning of your turn, so this is only on a stop click, which is four clicks deep. Uh, at the beginning of your turn, you may choose an opposing character and roll a d6. On a five or that opposing character can be anywhere on the map, you roll a d6, five or six, deal that character two penetrating damage. Um, no, this is bad. But you want to break it, though, right? You see the dial, you want to break it. No, I mean. What like it's I, I want to I, I break the I want to break the dude off his dial. You wanna you wanna you find a way. Him. You to pull him and you're like he's my rare. Dang it! I wanted something better. Like it, it's a fun piece. You ignore him. That's it. Just like okay, thanks, Ethel. But you've got exploit <laughs> support. I like nope. how the stop click has regeneration. Like anyone's healing him off that click. Um. Yeah. If there's a way to deal three damage to your opponent, your friendly characters on turn one, this guy sees hell of play. Yeah. Right? No. No. Uh, well. no? R- really? He can't be swapped out or anything. Like maybe if Thanos wasn't around, but Thanos um, just Thanos just laughs at the two penetrating. Yeah, but his entire rest of his team doesn't. He's like, boom! There goes. I don't know what's to... Sprite. Sprite's dead now. You would never play him because you have to roll to even do it, and it's a 5-6, <laughs> and that's some too risky of a roll. 
If there's a consistent way to get him to stop click turn one, you absolutely play him. No, I, even on a 5-6, you're going to have those games where it's just not going to happen, and you have devoted 40 points plus however much to consistently get him there. I don't... I don't like, if you wanted to play, if it was something where it was Flash running through multiple, and you could... Well, he is unique, so nope, never mind. No, he's not you're, great. You're a party pooper. <laughs> All right. And we're going to move on to the super rares. All right, and our first super rare is Captain Britain. Yeah, oh. yeah another Captain Britain. She's yeah. been popular lately. She has, and Theo's really excited about her. There was about her. something. <laughs> well, the key, um, thing, the key thing with her is her interaction with Saturn, right? Like, as far as actual playability. I don't know. <laughs> what, what is that interaction? Yeah. Because uh, Saturn can... Um, mastermind tour. Mastermind tour oh. the character I named know. Captain Britain. So I don't mean it's good. I just mean it's... A, it, like, if she's awful, there's I at least know. one that she is. I mean, there's I think her willpower is... Uh, That's what I think. Her willpower yeah. is better than whatever Saturn Nini does. I mean, Saturn <laughs> makes Captain Britain, so... Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, the thing is, is that I played Captain Britain in Sealed and even masterminding with her to her right it's it, you, she can't heal she doesn't have any way to heal back up and that's that's the problem i ran into it was sealed is that like some steel energy or some regen or something would have been really really nice on her <coughs> otherwise she's just, she's, a, she's just a nice little beat stick that just gets yeeted eventually i mean 80 points is way too much to play for mastermind fodder yeah you definitely don't 80 um at 40 points she's like a Power broker light, you know, without wit, because she's four to six and she can remove a token from well, and somebody she, else. And she's not, yeah, she's not. And she's yeah, power broker light. I like that thought. But and she's a flying character as well. So and she's not a prime. Yeah. So a little bit cooler than power broker in some aspects for 10, okay. for ten more points. And they have her listed as a booted character here. I guess that's wrong. Fifteen wow. more points. Uh, um, oh, is Power Broker 25? 25. Okay, 15. Yeah. yeah, okay, well, that makes me a little softer on it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, um, it's probably not good, but I, I would keep it in the back of my mind if I was building X Men. Well, and then, it's it, okay. and then the thing is, is that, like, Captain Britain is still solid for mystical recruiter. You know, and mystical leadership and stuff, right? So, I mean, the other the other Captain Britain's still 30, the House of X one. Yeah. So mm -hmm. and she has our way too. Oh, wow. oh yeah. the token thing is only within her range, and her range is three. That yes. That sucks. Is yeah, yeah, that's probably the worst part. Yes. Yeah. Probably not good, but something to keep in mind. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Pass. Yeah, probably pass. <laughs> uh Bay the Blood Moon. I like all of her powers. <laughs> they work to right? Because she has hypersonic, mm -hmm. she has quake. She has giant reach two, and her quick deals three damage, and she has exploit. All that works together. So if it if it works, you know you could just sort of wipe teams. If, if I wish it worked to get her, if it worked to get her at forty to start off with, it'd be <laughs> awesome. That would be better. Um, yeah, but she's like a seven. She's and we just don't really have a place in modern right now for seventy five point glass cannons. Right, no outwit protection. Eight, Eighty if you're playing the sword. Right. So. Yeah, 80 if you're playing the sword. Yeah, I know. It's just, it's so much offensive power, right? Like, if you get, like, a team like um, PJ's team, like the scientist team that groups up a lot, this lady's a 12 oh, yeah. attack and deals 3 damage. <laughs> if she hits that attack, you score 200 points. But it's probably not good enough because of everything else about it. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and what about the Jane Job for the keeper? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Well, the giant reach is big, and then the three damage quake is not for, um, not for mm -hmm. not. But I mean, the fact that it's not no outwit protection, no power cosmic, no willpower, uh, only know, eight movement, only eight, eight movement. movement, no, no flight, no flight. Right. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, and, yeah, um, I agree. Probably not good. She's lacking. It could be just. Um, like the but there might, you know, the, you never know. It's potential. We'll say like potential, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. generally not. Right. 
dude is a sealed killer. I'll tell you that for sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, yeah. Or battle royal. <laughs> battle yeah. Royal, yeah. Okay. Battle royal. Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, uh, Nimrod the Lesser um, is definitely the less. So. Well, yeah. His rally one or friendly attack. So when you roll ones, you get a rally. Remove one of his rally die to generate up to two Nimrod bystander tokens. The bystanders aren't good, but they're for mission points. So they're nine penetrating one exploit. So they're not doing much. They are autonomous for what it's worth. Um, and they have rally six for opposing attack rolls. Um, but they don't do anything with their... Rally. Yeah, they just they just and, accumulate rallies for mission points, right? Yeah, and then his second thing is power. Remove any number of rally dice from friendly characters. For every two rally dice, remove this way and get, this way gain one mission point. Right. So, um, but I think fundamentally, it's not really going to be a thing, right? No outwit protection. A hundred. Yeah, points, that's the big thing. Limited, relatively limited offense. Eleven for force, nice, uh, but no improved targeting. Um, and then no stop clicks, no way to heal. Um, I think if he was harder to kill, I would be much more of a fan of this, but he is really not. Yeah. He's also a giant, so you can just shoot over everybody. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, there's that too. Oh. No. Mm. I just missed that, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, we pulled him in our brick wound, our preview brick, and that uh, it was very complex to read on, uh, on, on the <laughs> yeah. unboxing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I the do. The pog's not fantastic either. I mean, it's not. It it's autonomous is the big thing. Um, yeah, but you're not then, really yeah, generating yeah. generating them that much either. You're not really generating them that much. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's two per turn if you roll one every turn. Right, which means you're probably not landing attacks, so it's not bad. It's not great there either. Well, the autonomous pogs help with that right because you're getting two extra free attacks a turn and then that, that can that can kind of sort of stack up on itself um I, I like the idea it's just he's too easy to kill right maybe if the pogs weren't max are they mode. autonomous it doesn't list it as being autonomous here mm. oh, I they, they are they wrote they it are. out of the bottom never mind right. okay i, I did not see ball. they were max two that makes it worse for sure yeah so probably not there Yep. Um, all right, Nimrod Prime. Uh, yeah. One of the first super rare primes that you could potentially need multiples of. True. That is true. Um, um, because of. Because of Nimrod. Uh, Sentinel. No, uh, because uh, of Sentinel. Uh, Nimrod. Uh, yeah, because of Sentinel. Yeah, because of Sentinel. That is true. Uh, but it's because yeah. of um, Master Mold. Yeah, Master Mold can generate um, from outside the game, so you could generate multiple primes on your team. All right, so let's start, out, let's start out with the top dial at 125. Um, mm -hmm. Cosmic Energy, Outwood Protection, um, a bunch of cool stuff with the Pulse Wave. It's got old school Pulse Wave, basically, right? Uh, it, it does two normally, and if it's one character, then it's your printed, yeah. Um, and then he also has a really special cool. Th he's for, he's a recruiter for Sentinels. I'm I'm not sure how much that is good, but yeah, his attack power is Pulse Wave. When he uses it, you may instead only target characters within range and along a direct line of fire. So you get to pick north, south, east, or west, or diagonal. Um, if only one character was targeted and it was an opposing character, he deals his printed damage value instead. Um. So Pulse Wave is a weird power, and, and this makes it weirder. Um, first, the, so targeting, he is improved characters and destroy blocking, so that's kind of cool. Um, so the first thing with this is that it still has his range, even though it's a direct line. So it's it's a your it's a direct line for three squares. Um, the other weird thing is that it will still turn off all powers within three, even if you're only targeting on a direct line. Because that's the first step of Pulse Wave. So it'll turn off everybody's powers within three. Um, yeah, and then it just sort of works normally. Um, right. So, so it, it's it's crazy that, like, the, is the threat of this... Like, I know we've mentioned PJ's team with the last Nimrod there. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you can't let this Nimrod get within range of PJ's group, right? Yeah, that's kind of true. Um, kills flashes, right? Kills uh, wizard. Kills it kills a decent amount of stuff with the meta, right? Um, but I, I, I don't really see it at full. Um, I don't, I don't either. But I think it's <clears> about <throat> the closest thing that we have to say an Emperor Gladiator at this point. I like. I like Gladiator, but I think I do too. I think I do too for yeah. sure. But... I I do, but this guy at thirty, I think, is is 30, solid. Thirty five. Um, thirty five. Oh, sorry, thirty five. Yep. Um, um, he still has still starts his running shot in the falls away power. Mm-hmm. He's a thirty five point perplexer. He's mm-hmm. a giant, so you can remove tokens from him. Oh, he's um, a giant and... too. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I I'm, yeah. I've got one here right in front of me, and. <laughs> I, oh gosh, oh, I don't know, man. Oh, I, I, I guess I like it. I guess I like it, but it's a little bit different. Well, keep keep in <laughs> keep in mind that like most of the sentinels are like a lot of sentinels are giants and colossals. So yeah, almost can, exclusively. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's not as detrimental as maybe for other teams where oh he's the only giant. It's like no, nah, you got the yeah box. he can still kick carried. So are you um, able to generate multiples of these guys with with uh, a master mold? With yeah. master molds, resource style, you can. Yeah, because he pulls from outside the game. Right. Well, so, that, what about can he recruit others of himself? In? No, because recruiting you have to have the character on your sideline first. Okay, so you can't do. Yeah, you can't have two on your sideline. So. Yeah, and as far as recruiting sentinels, there's not there's nothing like super exciting you're pulling out. Um, I guess well. No, because, like, what are you... What Sentinel is high cost that you're playing, and then what are you bringing in for it? I, you know? Uh, so, my thought with that is simply, one, you've got all the sideline space anyway. So, you're not playing specifically to play <coughs> Recruiter. I think you're just packing your sideline with extra people to do it anyway. And I'm thinking more low point, because, like, like with... Um, uh, what's his Wendigo. Face? Wendigo, you've got the little, the little guys, the, the well, not little guys, the Pog Sentinels, which are solid. Yeah, so they are. You, they, you've got yeah. these little Sentinels that come in after you've been attacking, or you've been attacked three times or whatever. They're 20 points. So if one of them dies, you could bring in a Pog, because they're only 10 to 15. So, I mean, there's, it, it, you can, there might be combos where you can combo it with, Master Mold to just add more and more to your fo- forces, which kind of really feels like... Sentinel Factory. The Sentinel Factory, right? But yeah. I don't think you build around Recruiter like you would with Mystical did before. and We talked about earlier with um, X-Men. I just don't yeah. feel like you build towards this. You just kind of... It's neat to have. Yeah. Uh, you could play 200-point Master Mold, and then when he dies, inevitably, you could bring in a 150-point Sentinel and have your opponent score 350 points real huh. quick. You know? But, hey, you are you're, you got the tempo, baby. I don't um, know if I'd call that tempo or not, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't... If he's played, I think it'll be at the low dial um, on some sort of robot team, but I, I don't know if a robot team exists even after the set. I think it exists. I, I just don't... <laughs> I don't sure. think you can at 125. Because there's still other Sentinel pieces, or sorry, uh, robot pieces from like... Yeah, at 125, uh, at 125, he needed either like traded Shape Changer or Mastermind. Something to just not die. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Because mm-hmm. he's a 19 Invincible, which is okay, but 19's not hard to hit. And there's plenty of damage out there right now. Here. He's still really good, though. Like, I still, to reiterate, though, I still think if you're thinking, should I get one or trade it, I think <coughs> prob- prob- he's probably going to be worth a lot because one, he's a super rare prime, and the ones who really want him are going to need multiple. So that's just something to keep in mind. He's also just a cool character, cool figure. And, you know, Nimrod's awesome. Mm-hmm. But yep. the, the, the idea behind the pulse light power is really cool, right? Mm-hmm. Um,. That's that's about it. <laughs> uh, Deadpool. 
Deadpool is uh yeah, okay. So <laughs> he's 40 points as a team player. Um starts with perplex, 10-10, 18, 3. Um adjacent friendly characters of Dolphin. That's great, especially on water maps. That's that's incredible. Um another trait at the end of your turn, heal in one click for his healing power, and then he has a trait of movement speed. Um phasing teleport. Free, generate up to four water terrain marker squares within range. Excuse me, range and line of fires, range is five. At the beginning of your next turn. Even if lost, remove them. Um, people are saying this is the bishop killer, right? Well, it's the, the bishop. bishop it's, the, the, it's the <laughs> bishop replacement, right? Without having to eat your prime slot. So you can use things like Deadpool with Mimic Prime. Right? Yeah. Um, um, and then, but what people are saying is that this is what it takes for. Um, this is what it takes to take down Thanos. Because Thanos, I feel like Thanos has never won. It? Thanos has never won versus Bishop before. Yeah, he had, well, yeah, obviously he has. We know that. And this, I feel like, is worse at that. And I've said yeah. it because it's, it's only four squares, right? It, and one mm -hmm. of them is going to be his square, or else he's being mind controlled and quaking the whole team. Granted, with only a ten attack, but well, um, he's, it's also he's X Men, so yeah. You switch out if you're playing X Men. You're most you're probably winning map. I mean, or at least a higher chance of winning map. I would think. Um, right, they're probably eight or nine. Right. Yeah. So I mean, with all that together, I mean, I think you there are plenty of maps. Fountain of Asgard. I think right down the middle is all water. So you don't have to rely on him but, making this. But what water. doesn't? But what doesn't have water? I don't think is Otherworld Castle. Yeah, but does, I still uh, don't. I still don't. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, it feels it like does, it, it still it does feels on like, the far right. Yeah, it has that big. Yeah, moat. but that's way out of that's you know that's out of range too, right? I mean, that's that's not very convenient. Uh, you don't. A lot, a lot of people were playing Flores out there. I remember that. Um, well, so I guess I guess my point in general would be, um, it's probably fine. But X Men when they want to when they win map. They must always want to make big jubilee, right? Like, I, I don't see like that strategy changing very much. Um, you Does know, every X Men team play jubilee? I don't think I've seen one that hasn't. Okay. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> and that's a, that is a point for sure. Um, if that's true. I mean, um, I would say that you could play other maps and stuff. It's not that big a deal, but. Um, yeah, maybe you see a Thanos when you just go to a water map. Right. Um, yeah, because it's not necessarily Jubilee. No, I mean, because Jubilee I think I think I think in even if you play against Thanos, right? Like they still like want to wipe the barrier. You want to wipe the barrier, so um, mm. you know I, I I don't know. I think that X Men has to rely on winning map a lot of the time and getting Jubilee. Um, be unless so does does X Men have some other answer to barrier that we're not aware of? And I, I mean I like I think this is a good point for Deadpool. Is Deadpool is very defensive, right? He's like the I want to say he's like almost Molecule Man level, almost right in his def in his def in his defensive capability, right? So like I mean, so like Scarlet, it does like Scarlet Witch, right? A lot of teams rely on stealth, but Scarlet Witch is just like pew pew, right? Like she uh -huh. just she just snipes molecule mans. Well, she uh -huh. can't she can't necessarily do that, or you know even commish, or um, you know um, even Wizard, right? Wizard can't get the line of fire to target the guy without it being in. Um, Water, right? Within four. Yeah, within four, right? So, it, 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 it's it's a very defensive shell enabler, but I don't know. Like, it doesn't enable X Men to be able to remove opposing barrier. <clears throat> would be my point. <laughs> that's true of almost any figure. <laughs> well, so but but, that, uh... but I think that's the problem. Like with the hype around Deadpool. You still have the issue of opposing barrier. Like, 
Um, well, like, Dan, how does my team deal with barrier? Well, and that, so we can expand the point a little bit further, right? Like you have flashes, you have uh-huh. you know a giant on your uh-huh. team. Um, that's a big one. Um, that's true. Um, but you don't have like on X Men, you don't have a thirty point flash to go bop bop. Right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not super familiar with the keyword. I don't know what they would use for that. Right. Um, I mean, there's definitely no thirty point flash in X Men. There's no double attacker, right? Wait, can, um, can't you get? Um, can you not get Mister Fantastic on that team? Doesn't he have Shiar, or am I crazy? Um, I mean, like Illuminati. No, Illuminati. Is that Illuminati? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I might have Illuminati. Yeah. Yeah, because he has all three swaps. I'm pretty sure, so you can get him on that team. Uh, I want to double check. Real quick. Yeah, yeah, me too. I think he does. So maybe, I mean, <laughs> I but... Could be insane. No, you're not. I mean, and, and then maybe that's does, the answer. He does, he does have Illuminati. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so maybe that's the answer, right? Um, mm-hmm. I still, I... This be... It's it's not bad. It is definitely not a direct... Ban- or, sorry, Bishop replacement. Um, Just because, like I said, it's only four squares. But you can protect your most... Your foremost, you know... Thing. It's it, it's definitely not a bad figure. I think it'll see some play. Team player helps um, a lot, yeah. especially with Molecule Man's can give him Underworld and things like that. So it, it's def- it's good. Multiple, multiple, um, man, multiple Man, you mean? That came through as Molecule What did I say? Yeah, I think you said Molecule Oh, yeah. <laughs> multiple Man, yeah. Um, it's, it, it's good. I just think that it is probably a step down defensively from... Bishop in most cases, but you do gain other stuff. So right, I agree. I think that's a very fair assessment. But with X Men having swap and I guess being able to get Mister Fantastic, um, mm-hmm. but you know at that point you're seventy points into your offense defense situation, mm-hmm. and you know Deadpool's not a great attacker either. I think that's the other thing is like Bishop's a, you know not a bad attacker. Yeah, that's true. He, he can he can be threatening for sure. Um, the perplex helps this guy, uh, but yeah, the quake is like, you know, he doesn't have any move and attack, so it, you're you're most likely not attacking anybody. He does have five range, ten for three, which is not nothing. <coughs> if you're gonna play mimic prime, I guess he's a good option. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, Monarch. Monarch is interesting. Um, he's probably bad, but, <laughs> but four, four clicks for fifty points, and I don't. It's a hard sell. And I don't see traded shape change. I don't see traded super senses. I don't yeah. see a stop click. Um, All that is true. So, I, I, I mean, cosmic energy and invincible, old invincible would be nice. Um, yeah, that's true. But you can shoot this guy for six, um, um, and it would KO him. Not that six. Okay. Not that six is super common. I, I mean, know you you made it sound like it was common. <laughs> just shoot him for six. Yeah, just shoot him for six. That's, that's easy. Um, um, well, it's I mean, more likely. It's more likely you mean charge flurry for six is yeah, the more likely. Well, let's yeah, see. Not... So no, um, I mean, Sakari and Iron Man can charge for five. That's fairly common. Uh, okay. Or hyper, hypersonic for five. That's fairly common. I'm just trying to Not think six, about. But... I'm trying to think where my. I mean, Agatha can get to six pretty reasonably. Um, well, she yeah. needs two enhancements. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> PJ uh, PJ's team can shoot for six pretty easily, uh, depending on the version. If it's got the shield, I guess anything with shield, right? Um, I shield mean, helps. I mean, uh, but then Jay, uh, your the versions of y'all's team could get there. Um, I'm not saying with shield or like a multiple torch team can get there. Franklin, uh, Fantastic Four, Franklin can definitely get there. Franklin can probably do it with either a power enhancement. It's it's pretty rare. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you say it's, we just mentioned like five times five is available, and then six is definitely available on Fantastic Mm -hmm. Four swap. So. That would be that would, we, Alex's team. That would be you know Alex's team and just the the two or three different versions of of all all, right. or all FF but, swap. But, but anyways, but I, the, I think the main point though is regardless bad. if you 
No, I mean, is is that enough to what he brings to the table? Do we yeah, really let's do, let's, no. let's talk about what he brings. I don't know if we yeah. mentioned everything he does. Yeah. So, um, go ahead. You can go ahead, Tyler. All right. Uh, so Monarch starts his first trait. His three traits. Um, as a lot of text, Dan means he's good, right? That's your rule of thumb. It's worth Monarch's... it's worth reading it all. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. He starts the game with one hindering, one water, and one blocking terrain marker on his card. Uh, when an opposing character generates terrain, after resolutions, you may place a, ter a terrain marker, so one terrain marker, <laughs> of a type they generated on this card. So if someone uses barrier, you get one extra barrier squared to this card. Molecule uses smoke cloud, one extra smoke cloud. Um, and then he has another trait. Uh, um, free mo when Molecule Man... Um, uses smoke cloud. Uses smoke cloud, or not when he converts. Though I don't think the conversion is. It would have to be somebody. Yeah. Somebody power makes barrier. Uh, I think he gets it when he replaces when it because he generates it. I'm looking right. Uh, yeah, no, it, it probably it, says replaces. He, he says re he says replace, not generate. That's probably not generate. So, yeah, but that's true. but there is a lot of power action barrier going on. So uh, yeah, it definitely definitely can happen very easily. Um. Yeah, uh, and then free, remove a terrain marker from his card to choose one. Generate a terrain marker of that type in a square within range. These, again, do not go away. They're, they're just there until somebody gets rid of them, or they don't get rid of them. Um, and then, or remove a terrain marker of that type in a square within a range. So he, he can get rid of barrier. Uh, his range is seven. Uh, it's only one at a time, which is the best. Uh, you, and then last, oh, good. I was going to say, but he, it is a free action. So. Yeah, it is. So you can carry him up and do things. Um, and then leadership. When Monarch uses it and succeeds, he may immediately remove a terrain marker from his card, any of them. If he does, this turn friendly characters adjacent to or occupying terrain of that type are considered adjacent to him. Um, the adjacent to him works for, obviously, the leadership. And it works for empower uh, because it's the whole turn. Yeah. So you can give global empower if they're adjacent to a square of the same type. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. He's weird. He's weird. <laughs> to be honest, you're not playing with that. No, Just, not, a 50, not a 50. Yeah. Not a 50. Not a 50. I think, okay. no. I think he's worth keeping an eye on. I think that's it. Because he, he does have Pulse Wave. Don't forget, he does have that. Randomly, yeah, he's phasing false wave. I know, but it's just like looking at his style, you're like yellow, yellow, pink, pink for first, first <laughs> click, and you're like, okay, I almost for overlooked the fact that he technically has a pulse wave. Sure, that's fair. Yeah, he's he's probably not probably not there, but yeah, I agree. Right. You can keep an eye on him. Maybe if he was thirty points in a flyer with running shot. Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're setting the bar a little no. high. On no, no, because that's the thing. I agree with that's that. The thing. We know how high the bar can get. Because, like earlier in the episode, whenever we were like, whenever I was kind of crapping on magic, that's because we know that Lila can exist for twenty-five. But uh, does it exist? That's the question. Like, does it exist currently? I, I think. But that'd be just because it doesn't exist currently doesn't mean that. You know the current thing is it is not doo doo. This is, well for this is for magic of... you, for magic you gotta ask yourself how much is perplex worth, and I think it's worth probably like fifteen points. So it's. I think in this case I just didn't like it where it was like, well, if he could fly running shot and he was twenty points cheaper, then he would be. Vi it's like okay, well, I mean it doesn't matter what he needed to be viable, I guess at this point because I think that's just too much to say. That's what would make him viable. I think he's borderline, but. It's very. Someone may find something with him. No, I That's all I'm trying to say. That's true. That's true with the I, though. Meh. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Meh. Um, Abigail Brand. Uh, you'll probably want one of her because she has her theme team, and she has the theme team thing. Which I love it, this I piece. I think this is she a is really, awesome. really good piece. Yeah. I played her in sealed. She was fantastic. Yeah, she'd be great in sealed. Um. Uh, you, you, I can. I'll read. But yeah, you did a great job uh, of that, Tyler. All right. Okay. Know, we've kind of just said Tyler's reading the power. That's fine. All right. Clear. All right. Traded. Uh, she's a trait. Uh, it's leadership. Traded leadership is great for forty points. Um, when establishing theme teams, characters on your starting force with the X Men keyword gain the sword keyword. Um, 
that's pretty you know it's it's cool there's it's very limited but you do get great figures um vision prime at 50 is still really good um you get that hayward dude you get a lot of people like darcy a lot of people monica are rambo. Plus. yep <laughs> monica rambo. that's true um and then she has special movement power, phase and teleport. When she uses it, moves four or less squares. After resolution, she may make an attack. Uh, close or range, she's 11 for three with Pen Psych. Uh, so that's not bad. Um, and then she has a damage power, which is friendly characters within range, her range is six, that can use X Men team ability, can use shield team ability. Yep. Ooh, that's great. There's a lot of X Men going true. around. <laughs> Having. Yeah. You know, seven shield team abilities on your team is is nothing to sneeze at uh, for forty points. That's a very powerful effect. I so it says within range they can use it, right? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> how does it work? So she starts her turn adjacent to three characters that can use the X Men team ability. What is <laughs> what is her range for this effect? Say what again? If she starts her turn adjacent to three characters with the X Men team ability, what is her range for this effect? Well, it's, a, it's an aura, not a bird. Yeah, it's an aura. that's true. It is yeah. an aura, so it so, would it would go to six, affect them, um, mm-hmm. and then go to nine. Okay. Yeah, wherever you she moves, <coughs> like if she's no longer near them, her her range shrinks, and they no longer have shield to it. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, she, I think she's great. I think um. I think she's great. I think she's really good. She might just fit on a generic, just on any X Men team. If you throw her on there, if, if, disregarding the sword thing, she's really good. Giving, you know, giving now, that team five shield team abilities is worth a lot. Now, being as soon as they can use X Men T, I guess wild cards can copy it and they can use it and then they can get shield. Can also, use... with this, I believe so. I don't remember exactly how wild card works. What to be honest with you. I don't know if they have to... Yeah. It, it can use is fine. It works for wild card. Yeah, it's, okay. it, 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 as long as it's not worded like the Wonder Woman stuff, I think that one is if they have... It, it says the Wonder Woman team made, yeah. on yeah. the Yeah, so... Yeah, yeah, because... You can be wild in this and get the benefit, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the bracelets say if this character has the team ability. Right. Yeah, yeah. Team yeah. Team ability, this is just can use. use. Yeah, you're right. right. You're right, Jason. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I like this figure a lot. I think she's very good. Yeah. I I think she might be the best super rare. I can't. Not, that's not a prime. That's not a prime. <laughs> I don't think so uh, um, because of one coming up. But yeah, she's close. So. She's one so of the best. Of the, the next. Yeah, the one after this next one. Yeah. <laughs> but she's right. Yeah, top three. She's really really good. Um, yeah. Obviously, I think there is a team with her and. Peepers and um, what's his face? Uh, Vision. Vision Prime. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, it's definitely like Vision, Peepers, Abigail, and I almost said Mimic Prime, so it's probably not that. So. <laughs> probably uh, not. <laughs> I wish she should give Sword X Men keyword because then you could crypto <laughs> on revival Vision Prime, which would be a pretty cool. Ooh. Now I'm wondering what's the lowest point X Men team ability? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Like, we're does Molecule like... Man has, or Multiple Man has, right? Yeah. Does he? No, does if he, he does, then that could get kind of stupid. I'm pretty sure. No, there's no way, right? He does. Yeah. Oh, 10 points. So, 10 point shield team ability. That's so not bad. Just three of those. Oh, raised, yeah. raised theme, and now they've got shield. That's. Oh, X Men's going to get nutty. <laughs> As if it wasn't before. <laughs> it's more nutty now. So. Yeah, it is. All right, all right, and we've got an officially good, uh, the official good version of Wizkid, uh, with his proper keywords. Um, oh, okay. Uh, okay. I was gonna say this one's not as good as the old. One. Right, no. well, that's true, but the prime one from DPXF didn't have uh, the, the right, keywords the right people keywords wanted. and stuff. So, um, so I'll read this one. Forty-five points, uh, five mm-hmm. clicks, passenger zero. At the beginning of your turn, you may place Whiskid in an adjacent square. Um, and then he's got an attack power free. Choose an adjacent friendly character who has the armor or robot keyword and has an attack this turn. This turn, Whiskid replaces his attack and damage value with the printed attack and damage values of the chosen character. And the chosen character can attack or be chosen for this effect by other characters. 
Um, oh. And then he has Enhancement, Outwit, and Perplex, um, Robot, Armor, Robot, Sword, Scientist, X-Factor, and X-Men. Mm. Not bad. Not that bad. attack power uh, That attack power obviously is when your main attacker is double token. And or when they... you're playing a Danger Room construct that's... <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> you know. uh, well, yeah, so I mean, between the two of them, I mean... That's better than I originally... When I first saw his card, I was like, man, this is real yeah, bad. Yeah, the problem is that he's super squishy. Sure. He's super squishy, and he's, he's 45 points. I He does... You know, he's got a lot of support powers. I don't think that attack power is good. Um, just because he still doesn't have any move and attack. You know, he only has six range, so it's going to be hard to set that up. I mean, he's um, got a beginning of turn. He goes one square. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I just don't think you're, you're ever realistically getting an attack with him off. I think they – I don't know why they – just let him say free. If they have an attack, let them attack. That's better. Do that. I think that, that would probably be overpowered because then he'd just be carried everywhere – and just say, okay, I can copy this guy's ability and attack him. Like, Yay. I think that might make him too. Yeah. Yay, let's do that. That would be good. That would have been great. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Much better. Just, you, guys, just you guys, just as for, say like, that. Justice for Seifert. Oh, my God. You guys say that, but you probably wouldn't play a team that he would be on, and then he would run up and just start punching you for good. 12 for 5 or something. Good. Good. All right, let's do mm. it. Let's do it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like if we had Justin just... Seifert, if we had Justin Seifert back for Vision Prime, it might actually be good. I don't want Justin Seifert back. To be clear, that piece. Oh man, he could like he could work around with a sassy Iron Man, let him attack. You know, <laughs> play. That'd be great. Oh yeah, armor. That's true. Scientist um, also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so he's probably bad. He's probably bad. Hope Summers. Uh, Hope hey, Summers. I rich. I really like Hope. Yeah, I think Hope is very, very good. Um, um, so she's a. So uh, do we think she? Let's just see. So before we talk about her too much, do we think she has any meta playability at a hundred? No. Okay. Not even a little bit. All right. So at forty points, you get four clicks. You get traded mastermind and leadership. Um, and then she's oh. KO'd after four clicks. This is the first. Trade. The mastermind. Funnily enough, is protected pulse wave because that ending thing says protected pulse wave. Hey, no, no, uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Does the slash slash mean a different thing though? It's there's a slash. slash. No, uh, lowercase uh, protected is just the whole power. I don't, I, no, I think they did away with uppercase lowercase, didn't they? Uh, did it's, they? Uppercase is now well. Either safe, way, uppercase is now there's, safeguard. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nope amount of protected says this sentence it's right. either the power or everything yeah that's true so uh which is great um and the leadership for some reason right um, yeah i don't see how that matters but sure um yeah and uh omega level power mimicry free choose a character within range and line of fire and choose two standard powers they can use hope stoners can use the chosen powers until your next turn mm-hmm. um so that's great it's then it's can use powers, so it's <coughs> better than mimic. It didn't have to be displayed powers. Yep, that um, is true. Can be off opposing characters too, right? So. Choose a character. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, um, and she's like for forty points, you get um, you get leadership, TK enhancement, um, team player, and she's hard to kill with stealth and combat reflexes. Um. She has good keywords. Avengers, Cosmic, Future, Phoenix Force, The Five, X-Force, X-Men. Uh, mm-hmm. There's like four good figures and their keywords in there. Um, she, to be fair, yeah. she's not hard to kill because of stealth and combat reflexes. She's hard to kill because you can choose Invincible or something when you're doing the free powers. I think just herself being stealth, combat reflexes, mastermind is it's decently hard for a 40-point figure. Um, but yeah. obviously... Yeah, you know, picking defense by ourselves. Right, it does, right? But I mean, like, the the mastermind fodder is a big deal, right? Especially if, like, that mastermind fodder is, like, Thanos. Yeah, my biggest complaint with her is that I wish she had mastermind on dial. <laughs> because we have zero X-Men key figures with mastermind on dial for <laughs> Mimic to copy. 
Um, I uh, think I'm okay with that, though. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think she'll mainly she's mainly going to be used as support. You're going to copy like Outwit and Prob or Perplex and Prob most turns, um, or maybe Barrier, right? Um, but or then maybe you know, mid Super Senses Prob, right? If some yeah. if, if a certain really cool <laughs> character you know rolls its time gem. Yeah, she's actually really good with Thanos. I forgot because she is cosmic. Um, right, and she TK enhancement Super Senses Prob is not bad. Right, yeah. Um, um, yeah, she's super good, super versatile, fits in a lot of teams. I think she'll see a ton of play. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, just all around really, really good. Yep, and she can go on Latveria too, you know. Yep, with future, yeah, future. and, and, and Avengers content. for some reason. But like, I didn't yep. realize she had Avengers. So. Yep, she has a lot of keywords. Avenger swap, mm-hmm. thing, X swap, all kinds of good stuff. I mean, she's one of the, uh, something that X Men might, or X Men Avengers might be missing, I guess, because of the leadership and the TK. Yeah, yeah she, true. So, and she's a direct forty point swap for the second cap. That is nice. Um, yes. So no point loss or trying to make it up somewhere. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. no forty point Mister Fantastic situation. <laughs> Which happens a lot. Yeah, it does. Which is fine. It's just you don't have to quite do it. Um, mm-hmm. All right, uh, arcade. Yeah. Uh, yep. He, an arcade. Yep. Forty points. He has the coveted assassin keyword. Um, <laughs> he has robot. Um, yeah. So he has uh, traits. Um, welcome to Murder World. If arcade's controller chose the map, so be one map. Uh, he has power. Choose a piece of blocking terrain within range. Generate a killer robot bystander in a square adjacent to that piece of terrain. So it's a power action. To, and then the killer robots are just they were ten for one. They got blades. Um, they got four range. They're not autonomous. So basically, just blade spots. Um, and then the other side of that power is, if Arcade's controller did not choose the map. He has, at the beginning of the game, give Arcade three kill robot tokens, and then he has free, remove a kill robot token to generate the bystander. Um, then he has a special defense power, mastermind willpower. Uh, when Arcade uses mastermind friendly character, no, sorry, friendly bystanders within range are considered adjacent. Uh, range is six, so that's that's really cool. Um, and, and then... By the way, by the way, I just want to say, no line of fire requirement. Like, I just giggle. Because, I mean, yeah. so I, I, it's obviously a very powerful effect. Um, and they're doing it a lot recently. Right. So it's extremely powerful. So, yeah. So competitive player, I like how powerful the no line of fire it is. But yep. from a simplified game perspective, simplified mm-hmm. game design, it goes faster. It, it's quicker. Right? Because, That's true. Because you don't have to be like, well, can I see this paparazzi over here can i not and you're just mm-hmm. like no one two three four five six mastermind to that one yep true i agree so um i mean i i, I know that like made molecule man more powerful but like molecule man does go a lot faster so i am a big fan recently of the things that make decisions faster easier okay. more streamlined so yeah i like that true. a lot uh, yeah, and then his last damage power is leadership. When he uses and succeeds, you may instead generate a robot bystander, and he can use autonomous this turn, which is kind of cool. Are these are um, these killer robots? Uh, you said they don't have charge, do they? No, oh, they're just they're blades. Blades ten attack. They're, they're not very killer. <laughs> the ten attack blades is that awful? Um, they, they can't move and do it. That's the problem. They sure can't. That is true. Uh, he's a team player. Um, he's. 8, 10, 18, 3. He's got stealth. Um, I don't really like him, but I don't like any... I'm not a huge uh, bystander guy. I know robots can generate a few bystanders. Right. And synergize with them. Well, Master Mold can generate two two good ones really quickly. Yes, that is true. So, um, I, I, I like it. I mean, I like it. Is it, op- is it overpowered? No. But is it a good throwback to the previous arcade? Yes. No. <laughs> no, it is good. I never play it. I never play in this dude. Like, it's yeah. a, all right, so it's a different version of arcade essentially because the old one was like, oh, you go to Murder World and he's like omnipotent or something. Like he's just like this one has a trait called Welcome to Murder World. I know, but the other one was he 
the other one was he got powered up and he was just yeah, yeah, yeah. better. This one is like, okay, I'm, I can make robots next to blocking. I think he might see play though because robot leadership outside of Master Mold is kind of sus a little bit. Um, because there's what Jim Hammond and uh, I haven't looked Ultron, for a while Ultron Pym and like a few others, but like a human torch or something. So for him to create bystanders and be a leadership for robots, if you don't want to go to the master mold route, because sometimes people don't, mm -hmm. um, then he could see play that way, I think. Just giving robots another option. Maybe. Yeah, or, that's, or that's assassins awesome. another option. That's true. He might be the only assassin leadership. Who knows? <laughs> now, now I'm looking up assassins. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. All right, we ready. To yeah, okay, we're, we're ready to move on to the good guy. The, the, well, the yep. Guy. Yep. Welcome to the crooked market. Welcome oh, to the crooked goodness. market, baby. Mad Jimmy Jaspers. His real name: Sir Jim ja James Jaspers. Um. Oh. So let's see. Or as Tyler would say, Mad Jimothy ja Jasper. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So let's just skip the first trait real quick. And okay. um, so we've got a 35 point, five range, triple boat, four click character uh, with phasing, 12 attack, and perplex with cosmic, mystical, politician, and ruler. Uh, with a special defense power, super senses, and barrier. Barrier is free but only to generate two markers. And in cap with triple targets, which and is not nothing. Which is not nothing. Phasing, yes, but it is 35 points. Um, mm -hmm. What do we think of that kind of piece? Without saying think, the trade? Without saying the I trade. It, I think Why? it's worth about 35 points. Why would it's a we... pretty solid piece. That is a pretty <laughs> solid piece, right? Six squares of barrier, and if you hit cosmic energy one out of three turns, he can do it for three turns in a row. And perplex. Uh, and perplex. I think that is phenomenal, right? Like, as far, especially because it's cosmic, mystical, ruler, you know, a politician yes. maybe someday. Um, and what, just how cool. It's, I love it, right? Like, I just love. Yeah, that's I, a, that I love, is a great piece. I love the barrier. Um, I love yes. the, I love the perplex. I love the keywords. I love the uh, unavoidable super senses. Yes, I do that's too. A, that is annoying to deal with in a game. Yeah. Yes, that is true. Um, so, we've already established it's a pretty phenomenal piece. Let's read the trait. Um, uh -huh. I want to. Uh, the, so the trait is out of order from how I think I should read it, or how it would play I out. I agree. How it would play out. How it, it play annoys out in me. The, how it would play out in the game. Second half of the trait. Mm. Power once per game. Choose a friendly unequipped character within range. And line of fire and choose an equipment from your sideline. Equip the chosen character with the chosen equipment. Okay. So let's talk about this for a second. <laughs> let's just talk about it. I am. I'm so excited. <coughs> wow. Because I'll say why. I'll give you my perspective. I am tired mm -hmm. of Tyler's paparazzis <laughs> destroying my equipment. I am tired. I was tired of the alchemical fire being shot. That's why mm -hmm. I stopped playing it on Thanos. Um, you know, my cloak keeps getting yeeted by a paparazzi. Um, to be fair, to be fair, to says be fair, the guy who, to be who, fair. Consist, who consistently also sent out paparazzi to steal stuff when you were playing Mary Jane. Like, it wasn't just Tyler doing it. Like, yeah. uh, no, that's that, his point. He's just... I know, I'm just saying, like, you... Yeah, I mean, and I, and, I would, and, I would, and I would TK destroy things with Jane, Jean Grey a lot. Yeah, you. Um, so, I, but so I'm, everyone I, did. Everyone was doing. Everyone it. Everyone was doing yeah. it. I'm sure, but I am particularly tired of it right now. I mean, I would still do it <laughs> if I was playing that team. Um, yeah. So I guess I would say a lot of people are probably tired of the issue of equipment not having first turn immunity. Yes. Um, or objects mm -hmm. in general, right? So, um, like I said when he was previewed, welcome to five hundred dollars sidelines returning. I don't know if that's true. No, one of the equipment is like Be outside of Darkhold. Right, so depending on your team, right, it's all about... So Trouble Alerts and Trouble Makers were all about having choices, all about having flexibility. You know, mm -hmm. you, you did Grods and Brainiacs and uh, Black Vulcans as, you know, as options, right? So 
Now, like Darkhold, that's 150 bucks to obtain. Um, you know, Carnage Symbiote, if you're playing a tentpole type piece, uh, mm-hmm. is um, 60 to 70 bucks. Um, it is? Oh. Yeah, Necro Sword's not cheap either. Necro, Necro Sword's more. It's more like 80 bucks right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so we're, we're talking about, so let's, let's go, what realistically... Like time to have all these. It's oh great. yeah, it's the, awesome the time, the time, about... the time platform. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. awesome to throw everything out there. But what realistically do you think will actually be played? Because we talk about so, Carnage Symbiote all the time. Everything he just said. I don't remember the, when was the last time someone equipped Carnage Symbiote. Because well, no, but, but that's, this opens it up now, Alex. You can do because all this the Carnage shit. Symbiote can just be shot. That's why I don't play well, it. Well, yeah, I can that's... just swap somebody into it whenever I feel like it now. Yeah, so, well, so, yeah, there, that's more for the second trait, because he can swap, after you attack, you can then swap into a defensive option with him. Um, but just real quick, before we move on to that, the first part of the trait that we talked about before, the biggest thing to me, maybe not the biggest thing, but a big thing, is that this guy's effectively 25 points now, because you get a free equipment that's probably 10 points, right? Right, or if you want the Necro Sword, he's... Um, 15. He's, he's 20. Yeah. He's 20 points. He's 20, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you want a free Necro Sword? Well, because you probably <laughs> want a free 10 point object because there's more swaps. Well, be maybe, guess. but it, I mean, <laughs> nobody but plays it's, Necro it's definitely not bad. Because it, yeah, because it's expensive and it's hard to pick up. But, yeah, it's definitely I mean, still very, a very powerful effect. Um, yeah, it, it yeah, it's a twenty five point piece, twenty point piece. And in silver he's ten points because you get a free gauntlet that's never getting destroyed. Um crazy, crazy good. And another thing we're gonna talk about is action economy, right? You don't have to right. in da- in Dan's case, you don't have to token his Thanos turn one equipping. So he has two extra turns cool. uh, two turns uh, guaranteed to act. Um another big one is um Iron Man's current Iron Man can yeah. equip Two Ooh, objects. What, turn. Was, what was your? I had to open up a juice container. What was the point about Thanos? Just being able to get, uh, something, just get something on him and without giving him a token, action economy. Right. Yes. yes. Yeah. Huge. Um, and the other one, yeah, is Sakarian Iron Man can now equip two objects. Turn one, if you equip him with the uh, oh. cloak with this right. guy, mm-hmm. and that's huge. You're threatening a charge flurry. Turn two. <laughs> With a TK, that that's much yeah. scarier turn two. Right, and I then so like, I, and then and, and then in our spider family, like so, I want to talk a little bit about some of the combos that it enables that mm-hmm. it didn't maybe have it before. I like I like you talking about the charge flurry on turn two. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because like if you go spider fam with it, right, you're you're going to get Pharaoh, and then that probably means you're going to include Venom Mags. And probably yeah so that's like that's that's that combo we've already talked about right you were doing that with your rune the starting chaos marker the starting area team mm-hmm. um so in in general right like venom mags plus saki plus a charge flurry on turn two on like iron man's workshop yeet mm-hmm. yeah yeet. It's big yeet it's... right it's not hard to full map charge flurry with right. uh, Sakari and Airman. Right. And so the the big deal, right, is, you know, when I, and the other thing that it comes down to for me is equipping the heavies. Because very yeah, specifically, before you would have to have a TK or mm-hmm. a um, super strength super side strength. sidestepper, which is... Yeah. Not very, very non-existent, rare. pretty much. Non-existent, yeah. right? But a lo- there's a lot of low point light people, right? So like they can mm-hmm. go run out there and pick up a light and sidestep and drop it. That's more common than a TK, really. I think. Mm-hmm. So like, um, it, it, being able to put the time platform on things is so big. It's so huge, right? Okay. I think now we should read the first part of the trade because right. that's what time platform is. Right. Okay. So, well, I'm just thinking like in general, right? Okay. I get what you're saying. Uh, mm-hmm. you're, you're probably swapping in the timetable. Uh, yeah. But I'm just thinking, right? Like, so I, I want to wrap this up with like the, this particular second part of the trade with saying mm-hmm. like 
the big sidelines are back with Jim Jaspers. Not only is Jim Jaspers a big expensive piece, most likely he probably settles around 100, 150. Um, he, yeah, I didn't realize that was freaking $80. The other one was $60. I didn't realize they were that yeah, expensive. Man. Right. And a cloak, cloak is 30 ish, right? Maybe a little bit lower. Um, and then we're not, we don't even know where all these swords, right? This is just the stuff we already know about that's really powerful, right? We have OP set swords. We have this set of swords. Um, and there was one. What was the other equipment, Jason, in Spider Man? In Spider Man. Um, oh, I mean, the, the uh, illusion generator was the one that came with well, the Mysterio. Well, and then, and then the, uh, the, the dimensional watch is not for not the dimensional like, watch. The dimensional watch was like twenty, but I was thinking there was one of the other ones. I mean, how expensive is Waldo? Uh, Waldo, yeah, that's sorry, that's it. Yeah, it's, that's it's, it. 50, it's fifty-ish bucks. I mean, that makes a little what bit more hell? sense. Right. I'm gonna go buy bricks of Spider Man. What the right. hell is I mean, happening? Yeah. Money. So, um, and then in general, right, like your other popular ones. Right, like Emo Mahdi is is going is up in price. He's like twenty twenty five. Same thing with the clay. Um, and what's the other uh, what's the other big one from Fufo that's a light? Uh, the fire. The fire is also twenty to thirty bucks. Um, so there's there's a lot that goes on. We're gonna have to probably do our equipment ranking. Thing before war. That's true. Um, because you only typically you only have like nine slots um, for a lot. Right of now, they thing. aren't getting used for much. Right. So, um, so here's the last thing I want to say before we go to the last because there's a lot to talk about on the first part of his trade. Uh, he is yeah. a prime. Um, mm-hmm. Destroyer is the other big prime right now. Um, mm-hmm. I I don't I don't know how to rationalize it yet until I practice some say, by losing Destroyer on Thanos. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think maybe the first part of his trait will help Thanos out. Um, I do th- I do like the concept that like, Mad Jim Jaspers and Destroyer are like the yin and the yang. Because it's like, Destroyer yeah. loves people being equipped. Like, yeah. That's how he's more effective, and Jim like makes it easier to equip to make teams more powerful. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's not really the game, but it's kind of like, That's, yeah, it, it, yeah, they're like against each other. Like it's Destroyer technically loves Jim Jaspers, but yeah, when when you're playing Jim, not only do you not get mm-hmm. Destroyer, but you're going to get Destroyer a lot more. Right. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, so the first part of his trait: free, choose an equipped friendly character within range and line of fire, replace. Their equipped equipment with another equipment of equal or less points from your sideline. Oh, the, that's big. That's so, good. so so, but so there's a lot of things like that. Um, but if you think about it, right? If you play it with Scarlet Witch, mm-hmm. that's a big one for me because she comes equipped with the dark with the dark hole. Yeah, anybody so, that comes equipped is big. Or, so um, was, or Agatha just, nope. or stuff like that. And so I was just I was just looking at that though, like mm-hmm. real, real quick. What would you honestly want to equip her with? Like the problem is we don't have a ton of ranged Red Wing boat well, time platform. Well, no, I don't think you would do Red Wing on her. You would do that on someone in another combo. We'll probably talk about here in a minute. Um, um, what? But so if she saying, if, I'm if she's only ten point equipment, no, no, I'm do. just uh, no, I'm saying in general. Like when I'm thinking about equipping outside of. Like, she might be a prime candidate for, well, no, she already has shape change, but I'm thinking, like, something that enhances her for the attack, and then you switch her back to something else. Like, is there anything better than Darkhold that enhances her attacking capabilities? For attacking, you, you might try a Waldo Arms uh, to get a free attack or a free in-camp. That's um, close. Close attack, if it's a free one. That is absolutely true, but being able to move nine and then attack is, is helpful in some situations. Right. Um, or if somebody's just adjacent to you, you can swap and then see if you get the free attack. No, his is, his is Walt Arms is beginning a turn. But you can always do it your first turn, that sort of thing. It just depends. Um, but you can I, I was, you can free was, pull the dark code off of her and then power once per turn, give that to somebody else uh, too. Yeah, I was thinking about that though. I was thinking about like, okay, what would I want to get rid of Darkhold? Because that is a that is a 
thing where it's like, I love that she has it, but there's times that I wish she had something else. But the more I look at it, I don't know what else I would want her to have. Uh, a chemical fire would be great. That's probably the closest, I think. But she already deals pen. Um, so it'd be Dude, fire token. I'm swapping yeah. ultimate nullifier in, baby. <laughs> right. So I think. <laughs> sorry, I had to. The other thing, like uh, for Scarlet Witch, is if you give her the um, the bracelets. Man, I'm looking at the objects now. This is so dumb. Right. You have uh, stones of Merlin. You have. Oh. Yeah, yeah, stones of Merlin's a big Ooh, one yeah. because it's destructible. Um, but yeah, also given, like, like yeah. given Scarlet Witch 50-50 super senses. Um, but, yeah, uh, Wonder Woman last bracelets. Week. Yeah. Or a free in Right, the bracelets or the other one, yeah, the uh, lasso. Um, because Stones of Merlin is destructible. So, yeah. Uh, that's a big one. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it's really, really good. Um, I, I will say one caveat to make sure you're aware of when you're thinking about some of these combos is that time, time platform, you got to be careful because your characters, once he takes damage, if you choose to do it and he goes back to the starting area, he's no longer equipped. And more likely than not, you've already used your power action with Jim. So if That's you don't true. have any equipment, you can then no longer swip, swap equipment to that person. That's, so, yeah. That's yeah. fine, but like... But, like, say, time platform, I want to specifically talk about, like, Thanos, right? Is, mm -hmm. like, time platform on Thanos, right? You now have an aggro Thanos. Um, because you, you, go, up, you, yeah. go, you go up there, right? Even if you don't swap him, right? You just give him time platform without having to have a TK. Or without having to worry about it being stolen. And, you know, you just yeet Thanos out there with, say, hope. And... He just goes out there, does his stuff, and then he's just ready, right? And you can just pick time, and then if you take damage, if you don't make your senses, then you just go, yeet. Yeah, and the, the, Alex is right. It's just something to consider. Then Thanos is no longer equipped for the rest of the game. It's yeah, probably because, worth it in a lot of situations. It is, but, but I mean, like, Thanos, point, is not, Thanos is not, you can't really count on Thanos being equipped right now. Um, right. I, I think th in my case, I'm thinking Thanos is probably the exception to this. I'm thinking more like, oh, time platform on Scarlet Witch. Well, right, because you want I mean, to have Darkhold. Yeah, you want to have Darkhold or to switch to something else. Uh, mm -hmm. Sarkarian Iron Man. It's like, I don't want to then have to take an action to equip him again with something because I would have to play objects, mm -hmm. like play equipment in addition to Jim and hope those didn't get destroyed as well. So it's just, it's not a detriment by any means. I'm just saying it's something to keep in mind. With time platform and with the stones of Merlin, because those also can mm. become unequipped. So those two major defensive ones. If you're thinking, oh yes, time platform on anybody, just be mindful that you probably, more likely than not, I'm not going to have an equipment the rest of the game because well, you're probably not going to equip it in the middle can, of being attacked. You can, but you can also play. Um, you can also play uh, DJ Doom as well and you can get a second time platform that away so like uh jasper plus uh doom dj doom starting the game is pretty great and anybody I mean, who starts with equipment is great yes. yeah you're just taking I'm, I'm talking more like tyler was saying action economy like you're now you went out there attacked you got hit you went back and now it's like okay next turn i'm taking an action to equip time platform again like that's good, but at the same time, it slows down in a limited turn. It's all I'm, all I'm saying is something right. to keep in mind. I get it, but it, it depends on what you want, right? But in like in, I know you keep saying Thanos is the exception, but I, it's a big deal because you can't. It makes it harder to KO Thanos in a timed game. It makes that's it. True. It makes it, then, it. It makes it harder to KO Sakarian Iron Man in a timed game. So now, it, before it was like. If you're doing big damage attacks, let's just assume that it's a, a five. If you flurry, if you go bop, 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 you were KOing Sakarian Iron Man. Now you have to go bop, 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 bop him in his starting zone. Well, this is irrelevant because Sakarian Iron Man has to have the cloak or else he's a bad figure, so... Uh, um, he's, he's especially bad if he doesn't have it, and then he has to go all the way back to his starting area. 
Because then he's, like, in the middle of fighting, and then, boop, he's all the way back across the field. Like, that, and he... But he's not dead. Sure, but then he has to mosey his way back over. I mean, I, I think there's... I'm talking certain instances. But... Certain instances. I get it. It depends on if you win or lose map or what the opponent does. But then again, that goes back to why sidelines become more expensive. Because you want to just probably default to the cloak. But what if there's an instance where you want to get the time platform? Okay. So, that's... Let me talk about Red Wing. Okay. I want to hear your... Uh, <laughs> hit us up with Red Wing. The Red Wing is one of the big reasons why this guy is so good because it, it just it on every team you're getting a Red Wing at least one Red Wing probably two right if you have a Scarlet Witch on your team you're getting two Red Wings because Scarlet Witch turn one you swap her to Red Wing she generates it turn two you swap her back to Darkhold she's totally fine she's not attacking turn one so that's just literally a free ten point bystander that you get. <laughs> so so then this guy's basically 15 points and then he power actions somebody else and gives them not the red wing because you only have one on your sideline gives them some other 10 point object and then turn two or turn three or whatever you switch them into red wing and then they <laughs> generate another one so that's two 10 point bystanders that you get for free with this guy on top of the other free equipment that he gets um it it's crazy red wing's really good that's two extra outwits like it's so good um <laughs> and yeah, just like the, the the amount of value you can get with this guy is crazy. Um, it's like so yeah, like turn one, let's say I'm equipping my Flash with Red Ring as a power action. He generates Red Ring. Turn two, I'm equipping him with I'll say free. I'll swap to you know Waldo Arms or or a Chemical Fire, something to make an attack. He attacks and then. No, no, no. Sorry, I messed you, it up. You turn it. No, one. No, you got it. You turn one, you put Red Wing on him. He makes a Red Wing. Then turn. you free swap turn one to an attacker, to, to Waldo Arms or to Alchemical Fire. Then turn two, he attacks with that object that he equipped, turn one for free, and then you free swap him into Time Platform. So now he basically has a stop click, or you swap to um, the Stones of Merlin, so now he's invincible, Super Senses. Like, right, and then, get... like, and then like swap, and then having like say, um, and then having say like um, Scarlet Witch on your team, right? Then Scarlet Witch mm -hmm. turn two is making a Red Wing. Yeah, like well, not turn two because you're probably if you're you you can only do the free action once. No, that's so what I'm saying. Turn, free... turn one, you're swap. Turn one, you're power equipping, <laughs> then swapping out of the Red Wing. And then turn two, yeah, but you're, turn swapping, two. you're swapping dark code off to well, make another red turn two, turn two, if if you don't need to swap Flash into a defense piece, then yeah, you would. Um, but yeah, in the instance that I described, like Flash is getting the full value of all of those objects. So that's like 30, 30 points of value. He's getting the Red Wing Pog, which is all the item really does. You can pick it up, but meh. He's getting to attack with an attack thing, and then he's on your defense turn, he's getting the full value of a defense object. It's like, it's so much value, <laughs> like, so quickly. that you uh, and, it's, uh, and it's versatile. Well, keep in mind, Jim Jaspers would have to go with Flash. To he would. There's, there's some nuance there with positioning and stuff. Um, like, it isn't just across the map. He has to be within range and line of fire. Yeah, that's true. Um, right. But then, but you, yeah, but it's it it's a huge amount of value for it, um, especially the yeah. timing that you always talked about. And there's no reason too that like if you're not worried about your equipment getting stolen, there's no reason that you can't just pay for equipment normally on your force. Yeah, it's probably even better because then you right. get more options for gems. I'm just saying that um, I've been worried about my equipment getting stolen with Thanos a lot. Um, yeah, but. Um, but in general, yes. right? Like you don't have to be worried about that. I mean, if you're not worried, I, gold, about, gold, if you're not golden armor is a great option too. Right, and there is one important note in Silver Age. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Jasper's only cost five points in Silver Age. Yeah, uh, because of gaunt the, or the gauntlets. gauntlets, the gauntlets and the cubes. Yeah, um, it, <laughs> and the big thing was they they were destructible, weren't they? Uh, no, but they were pretty no. they were pretty easy to destruct back. They were yeah, sure. they were worth a commit to destruct because they were thirty points. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's <laughs> it, it's crazy. Um, one thing to mention, <laughs> uh, Dan, do you want to address the people that say this is a Thanos killer piece? This right, piece so, destroys Thanos. Yeah. So <laughs> the big deal is that every team that plays him can get easy access to the emotional modifier. Yep. I don't particularly worry about having to face the emotional modifier. Yeah, I feel like people I, play the emotional modifier right now, and it doesn't guarantee you beat Thanos. Right. So the problem, the inherent problem with the emotional modifier, and I've played against some really good players that play the emotional modifier, right? And the problem that they run into is timing and pacing of the battle fury. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, like, the closed, it's the closed-in map versus the open map situation. If... Someone can fight on a closed-in map, fight Thanos on a closed-in map, then that's cool. That's fine. Um, but the issue comes in is that a lot of teams like open maps. And even post errata, Thanos is just 10 range with free phasing. Mm-hmm. So he can get a line of fire on something, probably. Um, mm-hmm. But then again, if he fights on a closed-in map, Right, he can choose space gem and just free phase and power phase while carrying somebody, and that's pretty cool too. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, now that's that's the emotional modifier version. Um, the other thing is that every team can have access to a Muramasa blade. Um, yep. And the podcast gets a free access to Theo playing in the background, so y'all are just going to have to deal with that today. My, it's my not that bad. It's fine. So, um, you know, every team gets access to the Muramasa blade. And I don't think that that is a huge um, detriment to things um, in general. Um, so it's just if I let somebody come in to Thanos with the Muramasa blade and attack him, um, I if I see that right, if I can look at their build sheet, if I'm allowed as their opponent to look at their build sheet and see that they're playing Jim Jaspers. And I'm allowed to see that they are. If I'm allowed to look at their sideline and see that they have sidelined a uh, Muramasa blade, and if I'm allowed to look at their cards and see that they mm-hmm. have some sort of charge flurry piece or some sort mm-hmm. of piece with access to maybe hypersonic, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's a good chance that I will look at my sideline where I have wrote down Carnage Symbiote or Time Platform, mm-hmm. and maybe. I'll power action to put Thanos with one of those two options. Respectfully. Yeah. Respectfully. That's, <laughs> that's that is true. So um, that's yeah. my that's my that's I'm not trying to be like overly you know I'm overly descriptive or you know um, uh, dismissive I, dismissive or you know have a big ego in this situation, but it's like I get it, but it it also is like J- Mad Jimmy J provides Thanos with an, a near, nearly new unprecedented amount of options. Um, yeah, I think um, I think it helps him at least as much as it hurts him. I think it helps him more than it hurts him, for right. sure, in my opinion. Right. So I don't. Yeah. I think it, this is a buff to Thanos, in my opinion. It is. And, and, the fact that I, and the fact that I probably play him with hope if I don't want to play Collector. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like now then Thanos is also a 20 defense with the two perplexes. Um, mm-hmm. And and the fact that it's like it's cosmic with Mad Jimmy J, like yep. Molecule Man and Mad Jimmy J without taking a power action, five squares of barrier every turn. Every turn, every single turn. Right, and then they are, are their own self-sustaining barrier engine for sixty-five points. And he's harder to kill. Then Molecule Man. Uh, You've got one extra click and Super Sith. That's right. Yeah, so that is harder uh, to KO. So uh, it's it's insane. So, like, it's every turn for one power action, you are getting nine squares of barrier. And then if you go on the off turn where you take two power actions to do it, you are getting 13 squares of barrier every turn because you go one, zero, and then turn two, you go two, one. And then you go, well, it's an off turn. So you can't do 13 every turn. No, yeah, you, yeah, you, well, can't, you can't do 13 every turn. 
with that. I'm assuming you don't hit a power cosmic. A cosmic right, because they both have power cosmic. Right. So it's like on two out of three turns, you get 13. And then on the third turn, you can get You get nine. nine. But then you go back to getting 13. And then if you hit one power cosmic between two of those, you extend that to 13 squares of barrier almost every turn. So it's like there's probably like a Tyler math equation there where you can determine. This is not me. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> I don't do free. barrier math. Well, no, no, the power cosmic math. Um, oh, sure. So if you just go one and one on their tokens and then go two and two between those two turns, you've got four chances to roll power cosmic. So you should hit I think it it's like the... a 75% chance that you're hitting one of them, right. something like that. So. If you if you if you aren't playing against an opposing molecule man or an X Men team that has won map and chose Jubilee, it's insane. Um, it is rough to get through. Right. So like Tyler, you take you take my team versus yours, mm-hmm. right? That we've been playing out a lot. If I just include mm-hmm. Mad Jimmy J, mm-hmm. I have now um, made it thirteen squares for you to get through, and based on your alpha. Right, your alpha, right? I get that your team, once it moves up a little bit, has more options. Mm-hmm. But, like, for your alpha, alpha, you're sending out, like, Flash and Molecule Man. Or Flash, I'm sorry, yeah. not Molecule Man. <laughs> Fla- Flash, and Six, Flash and Sakarian Iron Man. Um, yeah. So, that's good. But, it's maybe not enough to maybe get through enough barrier at that point. So, yeah. Um, I get, I love, Mad, I agree. I'm at, I love Mad Jimmy J. I also just love. Thanos Collector, Mad Jimmy J, Molecule Man, um, and that's two. I six, just that's two sixty five, and then you get like Sprite uh, or something else, um, and then you does just, Collector give plus two damage or plus one damage at that point? Uh, he would because they're all from different sets. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just I, I think this thing is. I'm pretty sure, in my opinion, this is the best piece in modern. I. I feel like he's head and shoulders above the other best figures. Right. He gives you so much value. I'm you know, pro- I I could be wrong, but that's what I view him as. And I just want to go ahead and just I want to go ahead and spoil this. And Alex says we should move on. Dot 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 dot. dot. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah it's, it might be true. It's been like an hour on this. It feels like this should <laughs> sure. be a separate episode at this point. Uh, it, for, it very well could be, but I think we're giving him an appropriate amount of time talking about the strategy. But you're well, right, I, Alex. I, we we can we can move on from this point. Yeah, it's a set. Uh, I only mean that from it's a set review. Like we're review. We think the figure's great. If we think there needs to be more tactics, man, that's a. It, we got a tier maker. We got. We're gonna be talking about him for a very yeah, long time, true, especially true. when we get like you said the other swords. You're right. Branches are not all like this. The, the ones we've gotten, like there's a lot to talk about with him. And yep. We were talking about. Hopefully, it's not a like a six hour episode or a seven uh, hour like. All right. Yeah, let's yeah, go. It could Move be. On. This set review is already up to like three, so. Um, <laughs> Super X23. X- X- we can probably move through this one. She's probably not that great. Yeah, she's not good. People are hyped about her, but it's nothing. It's it's a it's a full movement charge piece. She has a stop click. She heals if you don't kill her off her stop click, but the stop click's 12 defense with nothing, so it's killing her. Right. Um, and then she starts with 17 and combat if, reflexes. And then it's also, if she's the only character on your force, she's KO'd. True, but uh, she's probably just dying first, because she's not hard to kill. <laughs> right, no, I get it. And no rollouts, right? Except there, there's, yep. there's sprinkled rollouts in her dial. Um, yep. But no shape change, no immunity to outwit either. She, she might technically be the most efficient person to use the Muramasa, <laughs> because she can roll 2d6 and if she really wants to have the lower roll, if she gets one, that lets her get through the yeah. defense. That's, that, that's not enough to make her playable. It's just yeah. that, technically. Yeah, yeah. Technically. All right, so next up is 120-point summoner. Oh. This guy? Oh. He feels like... He feels good. I, I don't think so. I think this guy feels like he was designed five years ago. Oh, okay, bad. so he's got two stop clicks. Yep. Um, and he generates Pymix Pogs, yes? Yeah, whenever the stop happens, he generates all four of his Pogs? Oh, One, okay. two, three, okay. four. No, three. Three of his Pogs. His Pogs are 
charge, quake, nine attack, three damage, impervious. Um, he has one that's uh, flurry blades, eleven with exploit. That one's okay. Uh, no moving attack. And then the other one is plasticity, ten attack, precision strike, and four damage with eighteen involved. Yeah, yeah those then, are pretty solid. All of those are pretty solid to be honest. I don't think the first one is. The first one's four movement, quake, nine attack, quake, or four movement charge, nine attack, quake. Yeah, but in Permius said he gets to roll two d sixes. Like it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not, uh, he generates all three of them though. But the problem the, is he doesn't have a way to generate them outside of taking damage. Yeah, this is the most ignorable 120 point piece I've ever seen. Right. He's 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 attacking for three damage once a turn. Oh, right. I mean, that's dread root the forest. And Jason, are you? Or Jason's on mute. So Jason and I are both on uh, parental duties this afternoon. While yeah, we're trying to finish the set review. So. Oh no, I didn't. I, I, I didn't realize I didn't take myself off mute. I've been here. Sorry. Oh <laughs> no, no, you're fine. You're fine. It's all right. So, uh, Red like, Rooster, these guys are just ignoring me this whole time. I, I said. I said things people didn't hear. Whoops. Okay, it's okay. fine. It's fine. It is what it is. I'm, I mean, I have to mute myself on the recording and on Discord, so I have to make sure that I'm not muted on the recording. Uh, so, uh, but um, Red Root, the forest, yeah, uh, no, no, I, no, it's kind of cool. He has, he has four movement. Well, no, he really doesn't though, because oh, he can he can push himself in hindering within six and modify. Yeah, he actually moves further without moving. <laughs> he, he because he doesn't have smoke cloud is free. But he moves further by power actioning smoke cloud <laughs> because then he can place within six, um, or he can move and then free place a thing and then place. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff in him. I'm I'm okay to pass it, but I just want to. I'm gonna look at him just to see if there's anything there. He's real I cheap. I don't think so. He's not too terribly cheap. Yeah, yeah maybe. That's fair. Maybe if those vines, well, if you go with like a collector and then like get the bystander thing where those vines can actually do something, maybe as opposed to just in capping, but yeah. anybody who could just generate pretty freely and it's not tied to mission points is worth a look, but probably not. Okay, that's fair. All right, Chase uh, Apocalypse. I don't mm. think this guy is good meta wise. I don't think so. He's a. I think he's probably good enough for C. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. sure. Um, yeah. So uh, the problem is probably like, good enough for C. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what happens when I see that first stop click? I'm like, all right, pass. <laughs> then they go, all right, pass. And you you, you 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 just play. You know, as quick as you can. He's gonna die in three turns. There's nothing you can interact with. Right. Um, there is some interesting things where he could get healed off of it, like with Secret Six and stuff. Um, but If uh, they outwit your stop? If they outwitted his stop click and then they missed him to <clears throat> KO him and then you had a support yeah. figure still left on your team and you held him above his stop click. That is absolutely... like That is possible. very, very unlikely to ever happen. I get it. It's almost <laughs> impossible for it to happen. But, is uh, that like the most pointless... 21 defense stop click ever. Um, <laughs> well, I think the thing is, is that someone pointed out that he is he is susceptible to mind control. Um, so it's not for not. But, and in cap uh, technically, but you know. Right. True. Yes, you're probably right, Alex. I, I'm just yeah, 21 defense, but as soon as my turn's over, he's dead. So I mean. Uh yeah. Um. I mean, he could use defend. <laughs> be, be <a> <laughs> that's, true. <laughs> that's true. Twenty-one defend. I, I don't know if that's in modern, except for him. He does a dip below eighteen. So I mean, I mean, you right. can TK him up to somebody and smack them, <laughs> yeah. or shoot them. Right. Like, right. Uh, yeah. But it's probably uh, not a competitive play. Like if you see this figure in competitive, no. he's just a, he's a charge piece up top. He does have eight range. That's really cool. He can come with the sword for one night for 200. He's got a lot of cool yeah. stuff to build around. But I think at the end of the day, um, if he had running shot top dial, um, that would be, that'd that be would, better. That'd be a lot better. Yeah. Um, yeah. White sword. White don't, yeah, don't get. Oh, I was going to say, don't get confused. This is not the apocalypse from the set that you probably heard. Yeah. Or <laughs> the legacy. Yeah, of no. Which is really good. Mm -hmm. too. 
Well, no, um, that's what I'm talking. That's what I was meaning. Like, okay. Is, yeah. Anyway, white, white sword. Uh, white um, sword. Uh, he does something interesting, right? He's got charge flurry. Use charge test to turn friendly bystanders. Can use charge. I don't know if that's good. It's cool. Um, Quake, when he uses it and hits more than one opposing character with a close attack after resolutions, heal two clicks on each adjacent friendly character. Oh, okay. shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, Here it's the... <laughs> what? Here it comes. White sword and the charging paparazzi. <laughs> um, no, right but it, yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. what that's what it was. Twice per game, when a bystander is KO'd after resolutions, you may generate a copy of it. Uh, that's friendly or opposing. So if they have a rookie, you kill it, you get a rookie. That like that's a really powerful swing, but it, it, it's not good. Enough. I'm just gonna love no. just a ton of charging autonomous paparazzi. Like just, <laughs> it's just gonna be funny. Yeah, it says, what's it called? Charge of 100 champions. <laughs> the yeah. paparazzi are the, the champions. Um, but yeah, it's probably probably not good enough. His, his keywords are probably almost more hindering than anything. Yeah, that's warrior true. Warrior sure. pass. Like, pass, you can get on that very, and warrior, you can get on Spider-Man, right? Isn't it? You can with... Um, Is it no. Is, does he? He does... Py yeah, he does pirate and warrior. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, spider viking meta baby. <laughs> All right. right. Um, Annihilation. It's probably a no, even though it, like it's a really powerful pog, right? It's it's so good. It's like a really good pog. Right. Demon, um, demons yeah. are really good. Um, and she gets to make three, and even if you kill her, and she's like eleven for four with perplex. She comes with a sword, but it, at the at the end of the day, <laughs> it's just a charge piece, right? Yeah. You're you're playing her to just keep popping out demons, and they're good though. Like they, they head, are good. Like yeah, she is. I think out of all the chases we've talked about, which is only two, three others, she's better than the other ones that. Could I generate. agree with that. Yeah. Like I think she's there's potential there because she is only seventy. It's not like she's the crazy one hundred twenty points. Yeah. Like seventy isn't bad to be popping out. 11 for no. three charge pieces that have invincible. every turn yeah invincible every so, turn yeah so i mean, I mean that's that's those, those, great those, those pogs are good with collector i mean they are yeah it, yeah ruler keywords so venom magneto just boots those demons out there and they just make you, you annoyed because remember pog teams are annoying because you don't want to spend the actions to kill them especially not someone where you have to deal three damage to yeah, I mean, and she and she's leadership that transfers to another character too. Like if she dies, yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, the only I, downside is they're susceptible to mind control. That's kind of the only. You know, well, sure, that, but that's true. Well, that's everybody. everything. Like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I again don't see it, but I would be tickled pink to be proven wrong. Yeah, I agree with that. She'd be. Uh, a, she would be a chase like. A, the other three chases, I'd be mad, uh, or the other two, sorry, that we've talked about. This one, I'd be like, oh, okay. okay. I, I, I'm okay with it. Well, I guess with Apocalypse, you're probably okay pulling it, because someone is going to pay an ungodly yeah. amount for it, right? <laughs> and so Apocalypse is he's really cool, looking sculpt. And, yeah, he is. And so is the, we pulled what, Jason? We pulled Annihilation, right? That's what um, the new guy it's pulled. At the, yeah. the pre-release, yeah, yes. Yeah, she's a really mm -hmm. good-looking sculpt. But, I mean, it's maybe there, but it's probably not. Um, yeah. It's I don't. You guys don't typically play a lot of pogs, so like a pog. I don't discount her. I think she's really hey, good. Excuse me. I can generate four pogs on my current team. Thank you very much. Uh huh. Yeah, my <laughs> team. Uh, sorry, my yeah. current team. I generate one pog. Thank you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, okay. As someone who has played exclusively yeah, yeah, pog yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Oh God. She, she's ex she's exciting, but yeah, it remains to be seen. All right, we can go to Blink. Um, Blink is pretty cool. Um, a lot of text. Is, a lot of text. I don't think the text is good, but um, <laughs> at, the at the beginning of your turn, you may generate a portal marker maximum three into a square within range, which is five, or place a portal marker from anywhere on the map into a square within range. So you can pull them if you already have three out. Uh, when a friendly character within range and line of fire makes a ranged attack, so within range and line of fire, makes a range attack. They may count range and draw lines of fire from a portal marker. So they'll be anywhere on the map 
And then if they do, their maximum range is three, and after resolutions, remove that marker. I feel like this is irrelevant. This is never happening in a game. I don't care about this. This is dumb. <laughs> she's she's good for other reasons. Um, she has a attack power in her last three clicks, so it doesn't matter. But it's in cap, which she uses after resolutions. Uh, hit character given an action token placed up to three squares away from a current square. It's irrelevant. I don't know why that's a power. Um, and then her tra- her defense is super senses. Uh, when blink miss is missed by an attack, after resolutions, you may deal one penetrating damage to an opposing character within three squares of a portal marker. So that's not who attacked her. That's anybody within range of her portal markers. Um, that is kind of cool. Um, and then, yeah, she, she has... The big thing is she's hypersonic precision strike, that super sense power, and shape change. Um, and she has improved movement characters and improved movement blocking. So not destroy blocking, she just moves through blocking. So right. if so, you're on a closed-in map, you can hypersonic in and out at, at will. Right, so I think that is a big thing. But so for me to think like, oh, man, she's really good, right? I have mm-hmm. to apply the same barometer that people apply to Thanos. Okay. All right. So just yep, just follow with me for a second. Is that her oh shape? Ch- her, well, her shape change should be irrelevant because of the um, emotional modifier. So battle fury should be prevalent all the time. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you gotta stop. So, this is not. I know, I, but so no, like. No, 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 no. She's seventy-five points compared to Scarlet Witch. Just go from there. Same seventy-five points. Right. So yeah. uh, she compared to seventy-five points Scarlet Witch. Uh, Outwit shape, shape change in super senses and yeet her, and she doesn't even have a yeah. stop click nor mystics. I think she's uh, maybe not comparable. She's got a sword. It, it's not that unfavorable. Right? She's a better attacker. Right? She's triple target. She's precision strike. She's attacking through walls. Um, Defensively. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you're probably not going to leave her out there because she is hypersonic. Right. She's always going to be behind a wall. Ideally. Um, Yeah, but I mean, that's, that's, I mean, I get that there's swap and there's all this other kind of stuff. I, I mean, I get it. But at the end of the day, it's like if you lose map, she might be relevant. If you win map, does she necessarily fit with Jubilee? <laughs> no. I never think Jubilee. I think in this case also, if I think this one requires just some testing with the portal markers. Like, there's something, because we talked about how great Scarab could be at times with all his writing <laughs> and whatnot. Like, I'm just thinking for her, like, okay, I, Tyler, you're most likely right. It's not good. Uh-huh. But I haven't tested it to see, okay, putting these markers out there how many situations would it be great to draw from three squares away from one of those markers for an attack? Yeah, like, yeah. like if she could just place them anywhere she wanted to, it'd be fine. But or if it was a free that. action, but it's yeah, a beginning I mean, a turn. But it, it has to be in. in okay. It has to be in her range, which is five. But we were talking about <laughs> Abigail earlier, which could get everybody up to an eight. Basically, get her up to an eight. Yeah, so then the beginning of your okay. turn, you place it eight squares out, and then somebody adjacent to you can attack from there, so 11 squares because they have a three range. Wizkid, man, we're just adding all these pieces up. <laughs> Shut up. Sword, all sword pieces, there you go. I mean, if you could pluck it in front of the starting area of the opposing team, great, but you can't. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there. Unless you so, so there. You can yeah. play two of them. And have one. Oh my gosh! All right, Saturn, I gotta move on. I can't. I, I just can't with Blink. That's just not good enough. Saturnine. Um, so Saturnine. Like, I thought Saturn was going to be pretty decent until the Legacy Card Apocalypse was previewed. You did? That was that's the determining factor? Is a Legacy? What, card? What's he got to do with her? Because so like, she's a Mastermind character. Her Mastermind character. Her Mastermind stuff with the ability to generate pogs. Um, yeah. But uh, Apocalypse is just 50 points cheaper. 5-0. That's true. And he's better. Um, she, I, yeah, I don't I don't like this piece. I don't think it's good. Um, obviously, she has the, the mastermind that can... She can oh, do Captain her Brit thing is, her thing is Penetrating Psychic Blast? I thought it was Pulse Wave, some sort of special Pulse Wave. No, it's Pen Blast. Uh, oh, well, that's even worse. I'm sorry. Opposing character, yeah, it, like she can do a line attack for four damage. Um, and, you know, don't 
line up <laughs> it's, it's my advice to you um she's not super hard to kill outside of the mastermind and it's really like you need to have if you have a mastermind you need to have a rollout or like a 19 defense otherwise i'm just like pounding on the mastermind character and just killing your whole team through that person until they're dead That's i'm right. not i'm yeah. never attacking anybody else i'm attacking her until the whole team is dead right and she can't even get a sword um i was a little bit more positive on this piece when it was than, than now that i'm looking at she doesn't why would you want her to have a sword she's a ranged attacker something um something would well, be nice she, <laughs> I, I, she the the uh, the what's the what's the prob sword the reroll sword Mercy. Yeah. You, you want to equip her with, um, what's it called? Emotion. Then, uh, what's it called? Uh, illusion generator. Because then. <laughs> the illusion yeah. generator lets you generate mastermind fodder. Um, well, she makes her own mastermind fodder yeah, anyway. I, I, That's true, too. And it's with it's for, it's for free. Yeah. It's like, sick. Yeah, you have I to agree. To it. I agree you with that. Her, you can hit her all day. You're not just killing the rest of her team necessarily. Well, just what if you hit her five times a turn? Okay, then that's great. You did. How yeah, are you dead? <laughs> I mean, if I let you hit me five times a turn. Yeah, I think it's not I mean, hard. I think I do that pretty consistently with Flash, Iron Man, and then my two other attackers. I I think I would be setting myself up very poorly to just let you freely do that without doing other... Not freely, okay, but like, if you compare the defense of her to somebody else, I'm like literally all I'm doing all game is hitting an 18 defense. I can do that in my sleep. There's no rollouts, no nothing. So I, it's it's not like I'm attacking five times and I might hit five times, or, or I might hit three times because of rollouts or high defenses. I'm attacking five times. I'm hitting five times. Yeah, I, I would agree with you putting the, the um, Legion modifier on is probably pretty good. But... Yeah. And she's got Man. cosmic. Yeah. I mean, and she's got cosmic and ruler. It's, so it's un- yeah, it's it's unoutwittable and pr- invincible. Um, I hate this piece. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would let you just hit me with flash, so you take mystics and die. Like I'm I'm okay with you hitting me with flash and then masterminding the rest of the time. I mean, you could you could do that. I think I'll just. Yeah. I I don't think she's amazing. I think there's potential. Uh, it's just. Uh, having that super mastermind and be able to just freely make your own mastermind fodder is enough to make me go, huh? Like, and a leadership, and a perplex, like, and the reroll. Um, yeah. Like, because no. that could help make you not hit the 18, maybe, um, as opposed to just a blanket prob. Right. But I think at this point, like, like, if you want to play Saturn, you have to play Mad Jimmy J. Probably, but that's probably true of anybody that's just a keyword. With yeah, it. you know what? That, I mean, I get it. I get it. I, but I'm just saying, like, to guarantee that you get what Tyler was just talking about. Yeah. Um, and then the pogs that she generates are not terrible. They do have charge, at least. So, uh, yeah, they have a moving attack. They have Carry her around. Flight. Yeah. Range. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the other thing that is a, a bit of a detriment for her is the placement is that if you mind control her, she can move five squares, even though she has an eight range. Um, so, like, mind controlling her out of the mastermind bubble uh, can be mm-hmm. a detriment, but you just have to be really careful of that. So, uh, yeah. but I think Tyler is right, right? You just, you perplex her down or whatever, and then you just start wailing on her with whoever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lady Roma. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lady Roma. Um... I like this piece. Okay, tell us why. I... <laughs> um, so she's sixty-five points, six clicks. Uh, trait is leadership and shape change. Uh, when an opposing character attacks Lady Roma or an adjacent friendly character, if they began the turn, that's important, on a different elevation than Lady Roma, modify their attack minus two. Um, and then she has Perplex. When an opposing character within Line of Fire uh, uses Perplex after Resolutions roll D6 on a 4th or 6th, so half the time, the targeted character modifies the chosen combat value the opposite amount of step. So if you're trying to Perplex up your attack, she rolls this, you're now Perplexing down your attack, which Ooh. is a 2 swing. I, the big thing... I like... Tyler, I like this. Yeah, the, the big thing is that she has improved targeting elevated and characters... 
and that is just says line of fire. It does not say range. So if you play her on Hell's Pit, that is a global effect. Nothing stops that. Outside of if you bury her to perplex, you can do that. But essentially, it's a global effect. Um, Also, the also the first trait is the the it, it specifically says if they began their turn. So. You know, like turn one, they're going to be on elevation two. I'm using Hellspit for all these examples. They're going to be on elevation two, right? So my turn one, I'm going to move my whole team all the way up and sit in elevation one. And now their turn starts. They're on elevation two. So if they want to attack me, they're minus two attack. Attack, attack minus... Lady Roma. No, or adjacent characters. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it can be your whole team. Um, right. And she's got mystical. She has mystic. She has shape change. She has ESD. Um, she has uh, leadership. She's a leadership. Um, I think there's something here. I think I think it could be pretty powerful. It it's really relying on winning maps. Oh. You know what I was thinking to go with her? Oh, huh. Faust. Yeah, Faust would work. So, yeah. So like, I get you come with an eight. Right, and then you try to pro or try to perplex. You may you, <laughs> yeah. you may not get to do it, or you may take a penetrating damage, or you might get a negative one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like this piece. I, I think is, I think there's potential here. And she's got the mystical leadership, so you're not necessarily having to pay for um, Captain Cap- Britain. Captain Britain. Um, mm-hmm. Her main drawbacks are she starts with smoke cloud and support, <laughs> which you never want. Um, but you know the the her traits are very powerful. I'm trying to figure out the litmus test that we're doing this set review on because she's 65 <laughs> points, and oh, you just got to deal her six damage and she dies. Isn't that what we said for someone? Well, else yeah, girl? but you have to deal six damage with her with most like maybe not perplexes, and your attack is minus two. Maybe. Like for against the win, whole team. If you win map and you're playing a 65 point support piece. Yeah, right. to be honest with you, I thought she had X Man. You could swap her out. <laughs> you no, can't. no. You can't. So, can't. Mystic, Mystical and Ruler are not like I theme. Like, Ruler definitely isn't, but Mystical maybe, but not enough to be consistent. Right. No, I get it. And But the thing is, is she's not like some of these other pieces. She does have a rollout, she does have ESD. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, mm-hmm. she does she does get knocked into Mastermind because um, mm-hmm. we said before that six damage is uncommon. Mm-hmm. Uh, just said, just yeah. emotional modifier uh, uh, Sim and come in flurry charge flurry. Done. But then but then you Done. do have Mastermind because she because Sim can't go for six. So oh, with the Mastermind, she's yeah, dead. I- Mastermind. Yeah. I I don't think she's a tier one piece, but I think it's it's worth a look. I think I, I think it's a very worth, powerful effect. I think she's worth the amount of discussion that we've put into her versus the amount of discussion we put into Saturn. Let's talk Merlin. All right. Boom. <laughs> All right. Fifty point Merlin. Is Merlin good? There's a lot of debate yes. on if Merlin 100%. is good. One hundred. Yeah, Merlin's good. Merlin's good. Anything that has the global effect that limits your free actions, regardless if it limits your own, is just worth it. That's yeah. kind of your your catchphrase at times, Tyler, is global effects. Well, are just I've said that, right? Nighthawk good. Prime was yeah. really good. Green Power Battery yeah. was really good um, yeah. because they were all global effects. Um, they are. You're paying a lot for a little dial. You have to admit that. No, perplex and action total plus one? Yeah. For 50 points? Like, yeah, that's worth it. Even almost worth it without the other one, because you can tag that with the leadership. And uh, I mean, I mean you get two actions as opposed to uh, two extra actions as opposed to one. Nobody ever really played Power Woman, right? At twenty five, no, they did. I played it. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people play Power Woman. The problem oh, yeah. with her was the problem with her is she was down in the middle of nowhere. Like that is she, true. That is she true. She had to be stuck mm-hmm. out there and just died. Right. That is true. So now, there the are argument could be, the one thing we haven't seen. We haven't seen a lot of people play Spirit of the Game for twenty, who also does the action total thing. Right. That's fair. That's fair. That, that, might, be an ava- too, but that might be an availability thing, though. So could be. I. He's probably good. I don't think I'm ever playing him. Um, but I'm probably gonna sit across from him and be really annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, 
free action. There's a lot of free actions that you forget about. Uh, right. So, I mean, I think the big thing is with him is that there are there are things that will limit your opponent's action total. Mm-hmm. There's really just one, right? Uh, no, there's, there, there's two. What's um, the second one? There's Doom 67. And well, Doom 67 doesn't limit the action total. It limits right. the total number of actions they can take. 76, he means 76. Uh, 76. Well yeah, Doom, well, yeah, Doom 67 can help limit them. Doom 67 is not a figure. Doom... That's- yeah. No, no, he. All right, stop. Sixty-seven is the robot one that says opposing forces oh, take more okay. costed actions each turn. It does not affect Merlin. Oh, it's okay. Just a yeah. Type All right, I get it. I get it. So yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. limits them. Um, I guess the big one I'm thinking about then, yeah, is, is seventeen seventy-six. Yes, yeah. Okay. I was confused. 76. Sixty-seven seventy-six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I. Uh, you're right. I was thinking Doom sixty-seven, but Alex corrected me. Um, yep. And then I was and thinking. They- um, but then the other one if, I was thinking was 1776. Yeah. If you can, can do it, where you, it, right? Uh, ruler? Oh, Does he have a ruler? Oh, oh pass. pass. That's true. I didn't. I forgot about that. That's that's kind of cool. Or you can it, body family them together. I mean, yeah, like, you can. You take two yeah. chases, but you can do it. Um. Well, so yeah, but you can do pass with them together, um, which gets you flashes. Get you uh, Agatha? Mm-hmm. No, Flash is only future. I don't think he's past. Uh, sure? well, I think he is because Jay Garrick Flash. That does not sound like passing. a Flash. No, Flash. Flash is past. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. And okay. that also gets you. Um, that also does get you Doom. And Agatha. Yeah, and, and Agatha. A, a bunch of other good figures. There's a lot of good with past. Yeah. Um, if you have Merlin and you pull off the trick with. <laughs> With 1776, so they have two actions and two free actions a turn. You, you might just win that game. That's pretty. That's right. pretty good. And then the big thing is that I've been thinking about is the Spider Family with the ruler, mm-hmm. um, but because di- then you get Jasper's and you get uh, the uh, time platform onto 1776, so they can't just yeet him so easily. Yeah, you can swap it to uh, uh, the free in cap too, whatever you want. Yeah. To do the combo. Yeah, start out with that and then swap it in and then place two free squares of barrier. Um, yeah. And shut off yeah. the leadership. Could... Okay, mm-hmm. there could be something there for sure. Could be. I think I think the main thing is it's kind of a gotcha type thing, but not super gotcha, is that people just aren't prepared. But like they've built their team around, oh, I've got all these free actions. They don't re- remember how many things are free actions. Um, mm. or contain free actions in them. Like I think this limits like charge and running shot too. It does if you want to use one of the actions. Right, uh, outside outside of the attack, because it's just making yeah, outside of attack. the vanilla attack, right. Right, so it's just one of those, you're, it's kind of a gotcha. Like if you don't realize how often you use free actions and you're now limited to four, which is probably what you're limited to at the beginning of the game, because you don't have 76 over there yet. Yep. You don't have all that. You may start moving things around and get things going, and you realize, oh, I just moved all these paparazzi. Yeah, I mean, just sidestep yeah. free paparazzi, amount of free yeah. actions. Like, all the sidestep. Think about all the sidestepping you're doing. Like, scientist teams mm-hmm. or whatnot, getting the flashes to carry everyone over. and Scientists is pretty crazy for it, because, yeah, you have you have the free action from Wizard, then you have free outwits if you want to use them, you have free sidesteps to place and everybody. Free wild cards. Um, you also have to think about, like, just have it just Sakari and Iron Man, uh, sidestep, perplex, mm-hmm. outwit, and flurry. Yeah. That's is your, flurry free? No, flurry is a close action, which requires a free. Uh, as part, oh, as part, if you charge, a part of the charge, yeah, 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 yeah. That's four, that's four for reactions. Whoo! Yeah, what mm-hmm. this figure will do is it will separate the top tier players from the middle tier players, in my opinion. Like top tier players will be like, okay, I know I have four. I know how to mitigate this and do at least some of what I want to do in four. Whereas some of the more middle players will probably struggle more trying to figure out. Okay, like panic moments, try to figure out where, you know, what am I going to do with my four actions? Oops, I sidestepped twice now, and there goes two of them. All right. You guys convinced me. Yeah, it's 
That's pretty solid. Okay. And, and you've now the key, once again, everyone's going to mention with Merlin. Will it affects you too? It does. You have leadership. You have the plus one from him, so that boosts you up. Yep. You've got other figures that can give you more to your action total. The biggest thing is that you go into the game planning to use five free actions. You know what that means for you. you, you right. You've practiced that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the last of the chases, Professor X. Garbage. He's bad. He's bad. Garbage. <laughs> I oh, thought I for so. a second. He's bad. Yeah. Um, just not good. All just right. Don't do we, play the space. Do we want to move on to the LEs then? LEs. Yep, sounds good. All right, and then as we switch over into the LEs, I just want to let everybody know that Click Stuff is brought to you by Oxit, uh, the Hero Clicks Cafe. Uh, check out the link in bio to join, and uh, this Wednesday, uh, this set that we're talking about, X of Swords, will be available in the uh, Hero Clicks Cafe for a release day auction. Um, so lots of cool deals to be had and lots of stuff that you might uh, want to be purchasing in there. But again, check out the link in bio to join. It helps us out uh, if you use that particular link. If not, just uh, check out the Oxit app um, and have fun buying and selling and conversing with other Heroclix players in the Heroclix Cafe. Uh, so our first LE is not technically an LE. It's the uh, Play at Home Kit uh, Pyro. Um Yep. He's a figure. He is a figure. All right. So we, between <laughs> the start of this and the end of this recording, we did get the uh, OP kit release day uh, Emma Frost. And yep. uh, she's not bad. She's not bad. Well, we, oh. we were holding judgment on the uncommon. Yeah. Not withholding. We were like, the only thing to make our players if this one was better, or at least was something to switch into. And I think it. Sort of is. Like, you know, it, it's. I don't think it's good. It, it's a pretty. Like it's, it's got the rollout. It's got the rollout, but it's not really. There's no way to. There's no easy way to heal. X Men TA is a way to heal, but um, the improved movement blocking's nice. The exploits nice, but for seventy five points, it's a lot. It is a lot. It is a so, lot. So I think that obviously the main thing to consider is. You know, when she switches to her diamond form, her little cuckoos get a plus one to attack and defense. Is that what mm -hmm. it is? Yeah. Like, well, so does that make them better? Well, I mean, it does make them better. Yes. <laughs> it it does. Te technically makes them better. but like, <laughs> Does it make them worth it? That makes them 11 attack. It's yeah. close to 10 for some pet <laughs> sty or prop. I'm just wondering, like, is that enough to make her, like, them more reliable? Like, yeah, I, they, I would say no. Were the pogs autonomous? No, they're not autonomous, and they're also you can only get them through leadership. Like you can't power action to make them. So it's you know, if you could power action make them, it'd be different. Um, because the problem with them being leadership is you can't start with mm -hmm. the the defense one, which you want to. Um, something to note is that they don't say free if this character started on the map or anything like that. So. If you start on the defense one, you can swap to free action, swap to the other one, mind control, triple target, and then free action, swap back to the defense one in the same turn. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, it's it's kind of cool. It's different than <laughs> other replacement effects. Wait, but... it's like like a... it's... Yeah. Replacements, all of the other ones said, like, if this character began the turn on the map, replace them with um, that, X. That almost feels <sighs> like that's going to get fixed. That would need to be fixed. Why? Because you can just keep She's... you can just keep swapping. No, the you you can each figure can only do it once because it's you can only do one free action a oh, turn. That's and true. also, who yeah. cares? <laughs> who cares if you keep swapping? Oh, You're true. gonna end on one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, she's not shifting focus. Like it's not specifically shifting focus. Right. She swaps to this. Like that's why it's not. Okay. I don't think it'll get fixed because otherwise okay. they would have literally said shifting focus Emma Frost. Yeah. Like yeah. I get it. They would have yeah, made that's right. Shipping no, that's true. I get it. Yeah, because of the free action carryover thing. Um, mm -hmm. No, it makes sense. Never mm -hmm. mind. Uh, legacy cards. Then we'll end with um, Tarot. I think legacy cards are the best figures in this set. Uh, by a tend... decent margin. So, uh, I tell you what I have up first. Um, I have Fabian Cortez up first. Yes, sir. Um, so, We're going in random order? Or... No, it's just the... Uh, 
ne- Nexus has the stuff up. Realms didn't have like Jasper's up, so. Yep, that's where I'm at too. Oh, I'm on the. Yeah, Realms didn't have page, Jasper's so. up this morning, so. They did on the Eminence page. That's what yeah, I've been looking, I've been looking at. Yeah, that's what I've been looking at. Uh, He's on there. I've been looking at the actual unit section. Um, uh, okay. So uh, Cortez is up first. Um, I tell you what, I, not for the mission point. Nope. Um, but I tell you, here's what I like. Is I like the overload trait whenever you have mind control. Whenever you use it with mind control. Uh, it's not going to happen much, right? It's once per turn and it has to be an adjacent friendly. How often are you... I don't know. I mean, there are times you're mind controlling close, but... I feel like it's few and far between compared to the range. I'm not saying it's great. I'm just saying what I do like. It is a way to deal your own figure on avoidable damage, which is always important to keep those in the back of your head. Right. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see it. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good. It's just no. three attack. Right. Which is not bad. And but... he does have empower enhancement and leadership, which is it's good to have that leadership on X Men um, and even Sword. But I mean Hayward's probably I forgot about that. Hayward's probably better leadership on Sword, anyways. I I don't mind this figure. I would not be surprised if someone played him on an X Men team. Right. I wouldn't be surprised to see him at B. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. So next up is Leech, and we've talked about Leech a lot. Um. I think we're in the minority. We think he's bad, right? I th- I don't think he's bad. I think he's unmanageable. Which means bad. Um, no, because if you can't manage him, then he is bad. So I <laughs> okay. feel like we are in the opinion that we can manage an opposing leech. Better. I am be- of the opinion that. Well, so let me let, are, me, how... let me finish my statement. Okay, I think go ahead, go ahead. I think we are of the opinion that we can handle an opposing leech better than our opponents can handle having a leech on their team. Yeah, my problem is there's really no reliable delivery method for leech. So. Why? What do you mean? Well, how are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, sure, they don't. They won't be able to get away from him I guess is your question yeah don't and don't say like attack somebody and then sidestep <clears throat> because they can't use sidestep right I, I, you mean there's a way no 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 I think what you mean is there's a reliable way to taxi him there's not a reliable way for the taxi to be protected at because like Lockjaw could just carry him and just be like Whoop, let's go because like yeah. passenger is not something that's like it's not a power. Uh, okay, you're correct. There's no reliable way to taxi him that is an advantage to your team. Right. Yeah. Because because uh, <laughs> otherwise he's just going to be like a naked lockjaw out there and no mastermind, no nothing. Well, no, no, yeah, no. he's so, so easy to kill. So here's the thing: is no, he's not uh, because he would get the advantage of having double lockjaws ma- mastermind. If you have both lockjaws adjacent to him, yeah. Or even just one, or even just one, um, uh-huh. and it, they still would get power cosmic from Franklin. They just don't get the willpower. They do get the you can't be outwitted. So it is possible to protect um, Leech on the move up. In, in theory, right? I'm not just saying it's just oh, Leech just gets yeeted. Um, it's mm-hmm. not just a, a thing to le- to yeet Leech um, in the double lockjaw situation. Um, mm-hmm. So, but it's what you do the turn after that that gets really hard. I think you just die if you do that. <laughs> if you just move up and sit there. I don't know if we've seen Fantastic Four played any other way, reliably. I think I think one thing that's funny that probably isn't going to work, but... Regardless, is he could be Krakoa, like not no, Krakoa revival, but look, he's tiny. No, he's not. Yeah. Well, it's not showing that on rounds, but I don't mean that. No. I don't mean Krakoa revival. I mean Krakoa, like his little portal things. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> you could do that. Because he, ha he has X-Men, so technically you could just <laughs> zoop him over there. I mean, he'll die. Yeah, but I'm I just saying, like, we're, we're talking purely how to move him around, right? Like, that technically is an option. Like, he could power is he and then boop him. Tiny? Because Clicks Nexus doesn't say he's tiny either. They're both wrong. Okay. Yeah, let me go look at it. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think he's good, but maybe I'll just get owned by a leech in, you know. Right. J I, to say this, Jason, can you yell at us and tell us what we're thinking, what we need to think here? Uh, I think you're worrying too much about him. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, just, you know uh, what? We, you know what? I we I I am incorrect. Leech is a standard character. Yeah, I just grabbed like, him. He, okay. he has damage. He is normal. So I think he he requires you to think so much about what you're doing with him. You're just not you you're spending too much time on not losing your powers to this figure on your own team, and not what you're doing to the other team. I I think X Men swap is the only way he's played. Well, Fantastic Four. Or Fantastic Four. Or Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. Yeah. Or the most important part. Power pack. Yes. <laughs> Jay's power pack team, he has yet to play, yeah. just got a huge power bump because they had no power to begin with. Yeah. And so They're, now... Leech drags you down to the power pack's level. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's like, eh, I, can't, I, don't have, I don't have any way to get through reducers, but that doesn't matter if you have no reducers. <laughs> this doesn't affect me at all because I was yeah. awful to begin with. Yeah, I mean, he's hard to use. And easy to kill. Yeah, I think it's yeah, just really I, hard to use is really what it ends up being. Why do you want this when you can just use Scarlet Witch for this type of effect? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Well, I, um, 25 points, I think that's the key thing. That's right. the key. It doesn't matter if he's 25 points if you can't use him properly. Well, yeah. But the, I guess that's the key thing. Like, we say you can't use him properly. It just takes someone to figure out how to use them properly. I'm trying to think. Right. So, like, okay. well, then, then if you're on, we'll come back if you're on a, it. if you're on a four <laughs> I, by four, and you move the three up, of you are sitting here talking about it and can't figure it out. So, <laughs> if well, if you're on a four by four and you move up with Lockshaw carrying this guy and maybe like a Peepers for empower or something, you play some adjacent to their character for that's your one Peepers action. Is, Peepers is not gonna give you in power. Well, you don't have to place Peepers adjacent to. This guy, when you end your movement, then who's he giving power to? Well, so I'm saying that's one action, and then you have three <laughs> actions to alpha with another figure. And like, if you place this guy adjacent yeah. to a Scarlet Witch, you could just burn through a Scarlet Witch, but that requires a lot of setup. And you know, basically, you have to act, like get a figure up there first, and then alpha, um, and it's pretty hard to do. Uh, is there anybody? Is there is there anybody else that you're going to put this much effort into using? That you would play uh, another another figure. If you had to put this much time and effort into using them for what you wanted them to do, you would just say it wasn't worth it. I don't. It, it's a very powerful effect for a very cheap figure. Like we have to admit that it's just. It is. I'm not saying that. You it's just, just gotta get to him. In, you gotta get him into a vehicle, and then that way he's not on the map. No. True. Yeah. No. Uh, it's it's too situational. It is. I think it is. Havoc. It, if somebody figures it out, though. It's uh, been great. If somebody, I, 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 say, I will give this. If somebody figures it out, it is very much likely that it is a championship level of a win. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, Havoc. Let's move on. Can we move on to Unis? Yeah, Havoc's bad. It's sad. Just give him. I'm sad. Shot or I, Havoc was good. I wish he yeah, was too. I mean, up. I like I like Havoc um, as a character. Um, Star Jammers was a cool keyword to give him. Um, sure. Once again, every every time we bring up Havoc, it's always oh, no, no. every single every time. Gold time. <laughs> yeah. I, Unis. Unis, Unis, Unis. Is fifty percent untouchable. <laughs> well, kinda. I mean, it's only four range. But, you just shoot him. Uh, no, if you give him shield. Shield? Oh yeah, if you shield him up. Yeah, shield. Sniper rifle. <laughs> yeah, sniper rifle. He literally not, he, you literally cannot play him in a format with like the pink battery because he'll have thirteen range. Uh, you cannot move within thirteen squares. Well, fifty percent of the time. Yeah, fifty percent of the time. Fifty percent of the time works every time. That's right. That's right. 
so I get that you can just shoot him, but then he's got impervious and super senses. Um, but it does stop. So it does potentially stop a lot of close combat. So he's like a worse mm -hmm. villain. Hold on. Uh, once per. Once he's not, per action. I think it's. He's different than Leland. Leland let you place, didn't he? No, he didn't. Leland didn't let no. you. He didn't. Leland um, didn't let you place. He let you move. This does both. This covers move yeah, and play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so oh wait, just uh, hold on. Once per action, when an opposing character would move or be placed. Okay, so what if I am carrying Fantastic Four with Lockjaw? I'm carrying four figures up. I move up. I place. The action resolves. That is one action. You only get to stop one of those? Correct. So you Is that right? You probably, you probably try to stop the character. When, yeah, but everything else is placed, right? Because this is what happened. No. It doesn't say when it happens. You have to move first because that's the Yeah, first you thing have to move and then you can't chest. move. You couldn't move Lockjaw within four. Okay, time. so you would roll it for Lockjaw so you don't get to place them if you succeed on Lockjaw. Right, it would just be right, right. outside of the bubble. Gotcha. Right, and then the well, other, you the other to... situation is: let's assume that you're at the fifth square outside of his bubble, and then you decide to sidestep in. You would you would roll, and then if they succeed, or if you I guess if you as an opponent were to fail that roll, you then couldn't charge flurry Unis. Yes, yeah, so the place doesn't really ever come up when it comes to carrying, unless you're literally dropping them within the thing. Like if it's. Like, it doesn't affect the placement part. It might affect Lockjaw's movement, but it won't affect you placing the characters afterwards. The place is really... Right. I think mostly it would be... TK. It would... The place would matter, like, if you need to, like, place somebody on Lock, Lockjaw's ass inside of the four. I wonder how this would work with... Retail. What do you mean? Because you give them the action... To then place, you mm -hmm. attempt to place, you fail. So you just get the action token and you stay where you are. If it's a power, you would, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. you failed to place. I, I'm just thinking, like, if it was something where it's like you didn't have a place to place or something like that, you just couldn't. That would be an illegal action of some sort. I'm just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Any of the effects would resolve. Like old Surter would then not place, but deal two damage to people. Um, but, yeah. but the key oh, yeah. thing, the key thing is, do we think he's playable? Maybe, maybe it's inconsistent. It's inconsistent, but like I could see him on like an annoying AF team. Yeah, so like if you're playing X Men, you have mm -hmm. this guy on your force, and you're going against a Sky Tyrant, and they lose or and they win map, right? Are they coming across the board and trying to hit you? Because if they if they fail this roll, that Sky Tyrant does nothing and dies, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's so, one of those things where it's like you have to be very specific on how you approach their team. So does it make it to where it's untouchable? No, but like uh, I really want to see a legacy card for like uh, Goonie the Touchable that has the four through six <laughs> version of this trait. <laughs> You mean the one through three version? No, he he's one through three. Unus is one through oh, three. Oh, uh, I see. I want Goonie with the four through six version. Um, gotcha. Okay. So there's a uh, later on. There's a tarot card that lets you re-roll single d6s. So um, yeah, that's true. Um, that's your own d6s though, right? So you can't re-roll your opponent's d6s. Oh yeah, this is opponents. Right. I forget. So okay. yeah, um, I, I get it, this... but it's also like. Um, you know, we are getting DC later this year. So, yes. like, if we get some okay. hyper, if we get some hyper time pieces, oh. uh, that's a, that's really a, leaning that's, into yeah, it. That's I, a stretch. It is a stretch, but I'm just, I just want people to think about the possibility, right? Um, but yeah, you're this right. Guy... You're right. So, like, let's say you're not playing um, Scarlet Witch, right? Let's just ignore like stealth busting for a moment, right? Because a lot of teams don't have stealth busting. Stealth busting. Sure. Um, so you build up a little stealth wall to protect Unis, and you play against a close combat team. I mean, they just have to go into it 
but then they just might just lose. That's true. Yeah. So I get it, it, it requires, it, it's not so much like that in your example with the Sky Tyrant Tyler. Um, mm-hmm. If that's their, if they're a Sky Tyrant heavy team, they just have to do it because what else are they going to do? Lose? Mind control through an object. Uh, yeah, most likely that. Well, I, <laughs> or there, out with this guy through an object. There, there, but yes, yes, yes. If it, you're only got Sky Tyrant, it's like you're just going to have to go for it. Like. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It requires, definitely requires people to change. Do I think that Unis is, you know, some sort of OP, Omega level, Felix Faust D20 no. character? No, but if you're not prepped for it and you just fail the roll, or if they have the shield version of this and it's within seven, you might be shit out of luck. This guy has the worst special damage power of all time. He does. Yes, yes, he does. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's just knockback. Good God! Right. They're like, they're like, man, his first power is too strong. Uh, well, he has a special <laughs> damage power. We got to give him something. It's uh, not but... even force plus. It's just keyword knockback. So he has to attack somebody with his nine for two. I mean, would force plus. Yeah. Would force plus be better? <laughs> it would, because at least you could be a little. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I get it, but it's like, it's also like if you play like just if you just play like the hate team. Right, like, just think how hard it would be to approach a team. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying it's hard. Just think how hard it would be to approach Merlin, Unis, and Felix Faust. Sure, I get it. Like, uh, there, there's potential. I'll say there is that. potential. It could be annoying. It doesn't seem like it's a high barrier to entry to play Unis right now. Like, he's not overly expensive to obtain. Um, yeah. Neither is, say, Felix Faust or Merlin, um, most likely. So, and, all, and also just keep in mind, we sort of mentioned it, like it isn't just about him getting within. It's also anything else that happens movement or place-wise within him. So even if they make that role, bring everyone in, any sidesteps, any movement, they won't be able to move or place at all within yeah. this range, like period. So like... It's not like they can move into a different square within his range. They can't move at all within his range. So, mm-hmm. yeah, those little things. Because a lot of times you're, you know, running in, attacking, and then maybe sidestep break away, or right. you know, any of those things. And you can't, like, move, uh, you can't move out. Um, I mean, you while you're in his range, it triggers too. Yep. So that that's actually funny because if you do make it in with Sky Tyrant, no, it's it's still the same action, I guess. When he runs away yes. at the end? That'd be the same action. That's a bummer. That'd be awesome if it was like, ha you want to <laughs> run away? Well, you can't move any square in this yeah. range. Yeah, that's right. Anyway. So, um, Warlock. Is bad. Warlock is bad. So This is, a, this is your typical Hercules gif of disappointed. Right. So, mm-hmm. like, so I will say this, and this is a, this is a personal story. So, like, you often hear, like, um, comic book fans, and this is something I read on Facebook. Oftentimes, you'll see like, what does a comic book fan recommend to somebody new to read? Okay, mm-hmm. like, what would you recommend to for somebody new to read? Right, like maybe like the uh, the Dark Knight series, or one of those big famous runs, some Superman series, or you know, an mm-hmm. Iron Man run. And I tell you what, you know what got me hooked on comic books. Or no, w- w- Eter- Eternals. Yeah, no. It was some. That came after. It was some random ass comic book that had Warlock in it. Oh, okay. And hmm. that was the point of the Facebook post was, uh, no, most comic book fans get hooked on comic books because of some random nine of sixteen X Men book that was had a complicated as fuck story in it. Where did you get this book? Was it at the library? Probably at like a grocery store. Yeah, that makes sense. So my point is, um, to one, just share the story. Two, I am very disappointed in the Warlock legacy. <laughs> yes, very bad, very not good. And I, yeah. I think you know, I think they threw it in because obviously he's very integral to X of Swords, but he's not like separated in X of Swords. Like he's what part of Cipher? Or something at that point, but yeah. so everyone would, you know, 
we haven't had a warlock in forever. I feel like right. he so. was also he's also slightly broken mm-hmm. in the current rules, um, the uh, OG version. So um, because he can become a vehicle and he's a standard character, mm-hmm. um, right? So there's some cool interactions, but I'm glad for New Mutants fans and stuff that he came back. Um, but yeah, slightly, just disappointing. Just disappointing. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. Banshee. 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 Um, Speaking of disappointed, because this was a this used to be a great Banshee, wasn't it? Well, the meta yeah, the insane. meta changed. Um, it was great because you could sit on top of Ruit and shout down at people. Yeah, from your mountaintop. Um, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Is this right? Has improved targeting blocking, not destroy. It is destroy. It is destroy. Oh, okay. That's worse. <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the effect printed on his card, so it's unlikely they changed it to the good version. Well, they could have because they updated the. Um, I'm looking. Symbols. I don't have the. Did I get the Banshee card this weekend? Or Thursday? Do you remember, Jason? They just. Uh, no. Hold on. Um, I don't know. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, I'm gonna look at. What did you say? I don't say. Do you remember if I pulled Banshee? This weekend? No, I don't believe so. No. I don't like, believe so. Like this is this is arguably Cyclops level of neutering when it comes I, to like a sick card. What did they uh, take away from him? Alright, so old Banshee. Uh-huh. Opposing characters within six can't use super senses. Opposing characters with six can't use impervious, invincible, or vulnerability. Uh, but yeah, he can use toughness instead. Yeah. When, he hit, when he hits a character that can't use the power due to this trait, increased damage dealt by one. Banshee can use Pulse Wave. When he does, if you give him a double power action, instead he ignores blocking for targeting. When a yep. range combat attack resolves, any blocking train along the line of fire to the target is destroyed. So it's actually better than destroyed blocking, because destroyed blocking is only one, right? Isn't it yeah. still limited? Well, it is now. It wasn't back then. Right. Right. So, right. So, like, they neutered him. They did. I mean, what his in his trade mm-hmm. is not as good as it used to be. Right. Like, yeah. Because, uh, sure, opposing characters with six and line of fire can't use super senses, can't reduce damage by more than one, but they're still, like, it's just not as good. I know they t- and it's only shaving off 24 points. He was 98 before, and now he's 23, 75. 23. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to reserve judgment until I know what type of blocking that improved <laughs> targeting is, because <laughs> that matters a lot. But uh, if that is normal, destroy. Then I think yeah. it is normal, destroy. Um, I want to look at the... Now, Realm says destroy blocking, so... Um, Nexus has had quite a few typos today, so... I'm going to go with the Realm's version. Okay. This is yeah, if blocking. that's true, then it is bad. Yeah. Um, I appreciate the expediousness of Nexus getting things up, but uh, the typos have been uh, numerous today, I think. So. Have they? Uh, I've noticed a bunch while I've been going through it, like... We know, I'm just in the thing, and there's been, like, extra clicks of life on some characters. Like, there's been a random, like, six attack on, like, the KO click and stuff. Um, okay. Anyways, um, not to belabor the point. Iceman. Great, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Ice, really, uh, really, really good. Iceman OP. Yeah, he was... He's uh, very... You gotta remember, the original Iceman, as a, as a note, got second in Worlds that year. I feel like this figure is in contention for just like the best hero click <laughs> like ever like he's so good everybody loves him he does cool things he works well the sculpt is obviously one of the best ever you're right he got second in worlds like i just love this piece i'm so glad he got a legacy card. right and like he got a 50 point cost reduction so <laughs> yeah. so 60 points six clicks <laughs> So ice slides all over Central Park. When Iceman moves, okay, that's a lowercase move. So any way that you can trigger him to move. After resolutions, he may make a close attack targeting a character whose square he moved through and didn't target with an attack this action. If he hits with that attack, you may give a hit character an ice wall token if it doesn't already have one, removing any on any other characters. If an effect, including carrying including clearing, we remove an action token from a character with an ice wall token, remove the ice wall token instead. Just real quick, when it says move through, he may make a close attack, 
Does it, since it doesn't say even if it would be illegal, does he have to be adjacent to them? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? <laughs> because it just says you can make a close attack. Well, sure, but if it's maybe, I I don't know. There's it other things. There's like... other things that you can do, like Ram um, has a precedent for that. Ram doesn't specify illegal. It just says characters that he moved through. Yeah, it says make a close attack targeting all opposing characters right. you move through. Okay, you're right. You're right. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, that's great. So like he can be TK'd out. He running shot shoots something. I'm just base stats here, right? Um, yeah. Running shots through something eleven for three. Um, and then he can close attack something that he running shotted through. Uh, then you give him the cloak for sidestep. Then he sidesteps through somebody else and makes a third attack doing 11 for 3. And he's a, yeah, it's attacked three characters um, this turn. Um, well, no, he, he, can, also... he can also, that he can attack three characters or he can attack two. He can attack one twice. If he running shots through it and, oh, sure. and then gets something else and he sidesteps through it, then he, he can attack he can, close attack the same character twice. That's right, he can close attack. Or, I mean, it, it, yeah. there's he could running shot, then close attack, depending on the placement, of course. But. Yeah, it, it also just sort of gives him... He basically has hypersonic, if you want to use it that way, with close attacks. Um, if it's, like, indoor and you can't draw lines for movement, or, or right. if they're in stealth or something like that. Um, but that is not all he does. Um, because he also has a special damage power on his talk that says... Uh, when Ice Man attacks, give each hit character an action token. So he's making three attacks. He's giving out three tokens. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> right. He also has double targets, which is a cool trick. Yeah, so if you dual out, target, give out four. Yeah, if you dual target and you assign three yeah. damage to one person, the zero damage to the other. That zero damage person you hit, so you give them an action token. Yeah. Um, and then like the... if there was a, you know, if you give him an equipment that does in cap. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Free ink cap would just be two tokens. Um, yeah. uh, like the Waldo Arms. So yeah. Give him the Waldo Arms, and then he can free ink cap and give him two, give about two Tacton tokens. So it's he's a he's a very power. What was the old feat, Jason, that used to let you do printed damage with ink cap? Uh, stunning blow. Stunning blow. Yeah, so yep. he's like, he can do like three yep. stunning blows a turn. Yeah, it's a hella good card. Yeah. I do not mind Waldo Arms on this guy. That is not bad. Um,. Yeah, and he's also not unique, and he's only 60 points, so you can play this guy in multiples. Right. Um, and you got to think about what the ability, he also shuts down uh, Power Cosmic and Leadership. So when they have the, when he has the Ice Wall. So oh, let's yeah, say you give him two tokens. Like, let's just say, I'll, do, I'll, use my, I'll use my guy as a, an example here, my buddy. So let's just say you, you give Thanos two tokens, and then he hits mm -hmm. his willpower. He doesn't remove an action token. He removes the ice wall token instead. Yeah, for sure. And this right. guy, I mean, you know, he can hit Thanos pretty pretty reliably. Um, well, uh, most everybody can, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. But uh, with he can hit him multiple times a turn. So if you if you're not careful with Thanos, this guy can just lock you down for the rest of the game, essentially. Especially with. Um, Actually, yeah, because if you have the cloak and you have sidestep, you give the you give Thanos nice wall token, and then you're giving him a nice wall token every turn because you're going to be beside him. You can sidestep in and out for free every turn. Give him a nice wall token every turn. Yeah, it just so, it just depends. I mean, there's I mean Thanos does have super senses. Um, sure. And he can mind control him, you know, potentially. Um, oh yeah, he has free action. So. Yeah, so <laughs> that's the big thing is that this guy does not like to be mind controlled either because you can running sh mind control uh, target two characters and give them tokens as well. So true because um, it's not like an after resolutions thing. Um, mm -hmm. So there is a little bit of negatives to this guy, but there is a huge amount of upsides to this fellow too. Yeah, this um, is one of X Men's best attackers now, right now. I think. I think the. Big thing with him is he is a reliable, the, probably the most reliable leech delivery system that we have. Um, because he, he? he can use that like faux hypersonic thing that you just mentioned mm -hmm. and deliver a leech and attack 11 for 3. That's true. And then I guess um... if you gave, if you had some way to like cheat two cloaks onto your team, 
you could uh, give um, Leech a cloak to sidestep Leech away, and then um, what's his, that's true. And then, and then Iceman could sidestep as well. Uh, well I did not. Yeah. I did not realize that Leech wasn't. That Le- I thought Leech was tiny this whole time. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, that is a thing. Uh, that's probably the most reliable way to deliver uh, Leech to a team. But he is. They are just kind of sitting out there, right? And it's not like teams just magically don't have other attackers, right? If you're, you know, there's a lot of squishy, squishy squish out there, right? So like squishy squish. Yeah. I, I know we've been talking about like Thanos and PJ's team and uh, the, you know, the um, Spider-Man family with the witches. Um, kind of be in our top three at the moment and Fantastic Four. Um, but it could be a big deal. I love this piece. I love it so much. Right. I'm good. I might build with this. I'm excited. Yeah. I will, I will say we don't talk about it too much. He instantly jumps the Iceman ID card up much higher in Silver Still, Age. That's true. That the, sure, the, head, true. the Headmaster gives Barrier. Super solid thing. Or just the student ID. He has a student Iceman, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there a student yeah, there, yeah is. there is. There is. So, like, 60-point call him in and do all of that in a turn? <laughs> then just Not bad, not off. bad. Like, I think that makes him much higher than some of the, up there when he wasn't played before. Because every Iceman we've had has just been running shot in cap. Yeah. And, like, that's it. Yeah. I agree. Um, I tell you what, next up we've got Forge. And I, they just always do Forge. Blah. No, Jason. I think I, they always do forge really neat. Okay. They, yeah. They just do. They just do forge okay. really neat. Uh. Okay. I'm not saying this guy's not broken, and he doesn't do quite as much as he should. But forge is always cool, and seven clicks for 45 points is not awful. Is he ignorable? Yeah. yeah but he's also hard to chew through. He's an eight range outwit or an eight range perplex. Um. And then he's leadership down dial. Um, but, um, you know, so his thing, what he does, free, choose an object in Forge's square or an adjacent square. If you do, remove from the game and give him a Tinker token. Second trait, free, free, remove a Tinker token and choose a combat value except for damage on Forge or an adjacent friendly character. If you do, the until your next turn, the chosen character modifies that combat value plus two. So yeah. egg, um, egg plus Forge gives you a lot of stuff. His his real claim to fame is he can modify damage plus two, which is almost unheard of right now. Right? It, it, That's this the is except thing. for damage. N- no, he, he can't do that. No. Never mind. This guy's awful. <laughs> See? Just listen to me. See? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I get it. Um, yeah, he's, he's not good. He's okay. Um, Legacy Magneto. God awful trash. This thing sucks. What? Yes. Are you sure? Are you, are you being facetious? I'm just, I'm just kidding. I, I will take, I will take the legacy cards for you know next to nothing. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, um, I, I actually just bought for dirt cheap on an auction a bin of old figures, and I can't see which version of Magneto it is. You know, it's that oh. gamble you take. Yeah. But I saw him, and I'm like, it's worth a six dollar gamble uh, yeah. to just get a tub of some of these things to maybe see if it's the veteran. For for those like, of you that do not uh, have access, have not bought an auction full of old figures, uh, Daniel from the Thanos collection still has nine of them to offload. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun. It, it, I will say that the legacy. It's a fun game when when you now see a, a thing of old figures, you're like. I'm gonna spend some money on it. Like, just if I don't get anything, oh well. Like, yeah. you don't usually have to spend a ton because if they knew what they had, they would sell it for a lot more. Right. Like, you know what I mean? So, right. I, I, it very well could be like the rookie version of Magneto and be garbage, but you know, maybe it's I'm not. holding out hope. Yeah. So, like, yeah. so, he's, he's good. So, this guy can do 12 damage in a turn. Uh, yeah, with no help. Well, he probably needs a TK. Uh, maybe. I mean... Well, he doesn't have... We were... So, like, he doesn't have... He, so he has Traded Mastermind, which is great for a seven-click mm-hmm. dial. Yep. Um, Eight-click dial. Uh, it's, yes, yes. You should, you should also clarify a clarifying statement we are talking about people with robot and armor. Yes. Well, we're going to read the power. <laughs> right. yeah, when Magneto I... attacks only characters... 
which is silly because I guess in case you gave him Quake or something, you know, he only has eight range single bolt. Uh, modify yeah. his attack and damage plus two. So uh, top dial, he's twelve for six against robot or armor, and then free okay. make an attack, but only to target a character with the robot or armor keyword. So Sakarian Iron Man happens to have the armor keyword. Sure does. Um, and Sakari and Iron Man doesn't like six damage attacks. Um, generally, nobody does, but yeah. <laughs> um, um, you know what I am thankful of is that uh, Iron Man uh, Thanos does not have um, armor or um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that is true. Very, very thankful <laughs> about that one. Um, just, uh, I mean, I, I admit, I, I admit it. By the way, I just admit it at this point. I love Thanos. Like, I, I just—he <laughs> floats my boat. I'm just—if I talk about him too much, I apologize to our listeners. But um, I just love him. Okay, guys. I, I I'm just—I'm just, so. I'm just imagining now. It's like a new watch list for Thanos. We're giving him the armor keyword. <laughs> like, what? What does that mean? It's like, oh, right. okay. <laughs> Um, um, and then he does give out also friendly characters with the Brotherhood keyword have uh, X Men TA. Um, yeah, which is so cool. what, what, which is not nothing because if I'm not mistaken, Venom. Well, no, no, Venom Magneto does have X Men, but um, he does. He has the team ability. Um, but you know, a team so, like so like Venom Magneto putting this guy in position twelve for six. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what all have. I mean, a lot of things have robot right. He one shots demon in armor for free. Oh yeah, uh, I mean no, he's doing it with a ten attack. He's doing it fair. with a ten. Yeah, he's doing it with a ten. Uh, but that's hittable and it's free. Right. Uh, you got uh, Mister Fantastic. I'm going through the list. Mister Fantastic, Destroyer Prime. Um, some of the Dooms. Obviously, a lot of the Dooms have armor, right? Um, let's see. Is there anything else? Oh, the, the Super Mister Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Nathaniel Natty Light for some reason has it. Um, that's about it. Oh, Chase A has armor. Yeah, that's weird. Chase A does. Um, yeah, the other apocalypse, yeah. the Prime Apocalypse does with the Horseman stuff. Yeah, but he's bad. Oh man, he is. <laughs> he is always close to being good. Let's just be clear. Okay. Um, All right. Uh, got him for Doom. Scarab. I think. Scarab is one. Yep. Um, I went, yeah, there's a, it's it pops up more than you think. And then of course, robot we know is just a ton of stuff, right? Is it? Which ironically, like what I was looking at was his other power because we just read somebody, uh, Abigail Brand, who gives if you have that TA ability, they get shield. Sure. Now, I'm looking at all the Brotherhoods, which is you know the two Danger Room figures, Mystique and Juggernaut, maybe some others that you could give them shield. Also, like, because in addition to everything else that you're giving on your team, so it's just something else to. Think yeah, about. It, but the, so the problem is, if the other team has no armor or robots, is this guy good? Uh, but that's why he's no. X Men Swap. Mm. That's why right. he's X Men Swap. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So like, I agree with that. so like, robot. The big one is like, if so, this guy might hey, be the good counter to uh, Prime Vision because if if. You know, you outwit his shape change thingy, and if he misses his senses, you know he's on click nine. Also, crit, he brotherhood swap, brotherhood slash hellfire club swap. Also, yes. So that that is that is not nothing because of Venom Mags is on that as well as Black right. Arts. So that's true. So like Prime Vision, uh, the Destroyer, Ultron Pym. The Sentinels. Um, Ma- I kind of want to Mad- make an all Magneto team. Yeah, <laughs> Mad Thinker, Jimbo. Um, obviously, Doom sixty seven. He has robot. Um, that's a big one. He might have armor too. He also has armor. I think. No, no, he ha- he doesn't. He has robot. Um, he's that he, makes sense because he he's a robot. He <laughs> uh, Steampunk Penny. Um, you know, if you're going, yeah, but- if you're going for the. <laughs> Currently, robots out of favor, right? That's kind uh, of the theme. Well, no, I don't think so because of the new danger rooms. Now, of course, I'm of saying, course, the six damage doesn't really matter to them, but the twelve yeah. attack does. It sure does. So the free attack does. Yeah. Um, but, uh, this guy's really great for fifty points. Yeah, I think if he uh, had been sixty, I would have been like, Ugh. 
<clears throat> he goes down to a 12 defense. But I'm like, 50? Yeah, that... <laughs> I'm like, 50? I think this. Is, I think they put him right in a really good sweet spot for competitive play. That that is the other thing. He's he's not hard to deal damage to, and once you deal damage, like if you deal three damage to this guy, he, he's a seven for two. Even if you get the plus twos, he's a nine damn a nine attack. Nine Still two. four damage. Yeah. I get it, but he also has the traded mastermind. So I mean, right, know, that and, helps him and a lot. Eight clicks. So I get mm -hmm. that if you're having again, it's almost like the Sakarian Iron Man situation, right? Like, you would have to get Sakarian Iron Man into a position to charge Flurry him and then outwit his mastermind. Yeah. And then, you've, and did, and then no. you've traded 50 for 50, probably. So it's not like it's a great trade, even. And he has TK and, and leadership, so he's not doing nothing else. That's right. And he, he, is, he is unique, right? Just double check. No. I don't think so. Maybe. Oh, he's not. He might be unique. No, he wasn't unique. No. Okay, so you could you could main force one and then have one on your sideline and then just swap him out. So that yeah. way you could have two of them. Mm -hmm. If you run into a robot team. Yeah, or if you run a Magneto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just be like, here's two of them. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, even just, just Sakari and Iron Man, does, uh, does, as much as he doesn't like getting shot once with six damage, he doesn't like getting shot twice either. He doesn't, get shot, he doesn't like getting shot four times if you had two of them. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. I honestly think this guy is probably unplayable without the swap. I think the swap is what makes him. Oh yes. Yeah. But at this I point, are, are we getting to the point where it's like, well, he's part of the swap, and there's just too much to swap? No, probably. Because yeah, I don't think. I mean, I think. So we got some questions to answer about that a little bit later too. Um, we could. But let's just. He let's, probably makes the swap. List. I think so. So let's just talk about the last few real quick. Uh, either of the two Sentinels, do y'all have anything you want to talk about? Nope. Yes. No. Oh, you don't like the Sentinels? I don't like no, the I just, I, I, just, I just want to get to the real meat of it and, and skip <laughs> these two. <laughs> I think Sentinel's great. I think Sentinel Mark II is great at 30 points. Um, he's got incredible range. He basically can like shoot the opponent's starting area by himself on a 4x4 map. Like He's a 9 attack, but he, he's a 30-point reflex play. He's just 4 clicks long. Um, I think he definitely makes robot teams. Sentinel Mark II is great. So you're thinking, like, can we, you don't think anything above 30 is good, right? I actually looked at it, um, and I don't remember what I thought, but I know I looked at it. Because um, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think the other two are, I don't think him or the Mark V are playable above their low point. I think they're just too many points for too shallow of a dial. That's right. Because, like, Mark II at 100 only has energy shield and toughness, and that's like it. Like for... the, the, the biggest thing, the biggest advantage for him is their 10 range with Colossal. So this guy, right, he's moving one, maybe two at the beginning of the turn, and then he's running, shooting for five, and shooting for 10, and 11 for four it's over everything with dual targets. So, like, you know, and then he also has that thing where, what is it, once per... Doesn't he, if he hits something... Yeah, it's his damage power. Oh, he doesn't start with it, though. Um, on the, the mid-dial. I guess he does on the high dial. Um, probably nothing there. Probably? I mean, uh, I think the most time either of these are played is off the game, and you might bring them in with a Master Mold. Right. I, no, I, I think 30-point Mark II goes on robot teams. I think he's very, very good. Um, I agree I, with... <laughs> Woo! Uh, I I don't know. Thirty points is a lot to give up with just a one tiny little shot to kill. Well, him. no, it's a thirty point. Well, it's a thirty point perplex piece for one. Like that's not bad. It's a perplex piece. Oh, Fifteen um, defense. Yeah. Well, sure. Invulnerability. So well, it's four damage penetrating. That's not. That's not nothing. And he's outranging most of the things that are shooting him. I mean, even if you just hit him for two penetrating, I mean. <laughs> He's then regening energy explosion, like yeah, he's probably regen or energy exploding dual target from ten away. I mean, again, it's it's a nine attack, but um, he's also colossal. You can't rule that out. I I think he's good. I think he's very solid for thirty point piece. He brings a lot, and pulse wave's not nothing. I think I would much rather have um, Fulcum for twenty five points than him mm -hmm. for robot, just to give me a prob and the retail. But for me, I Sentinel at that point level, I feel like there's like a Mystique is what, 30 or 40? 
What did we say earlier? 30 or 25. Yeah, so I mean, a mystique probably better wow. than this. But, like this for this for me is like, oh, I'm up to 30 yeah. points on master yeah. mold yeah. resource. This guy this... is better than mystique. Mm. I like this guy. I think he's good. I agree. All right, this guy's better than the best pile piece that we've seen, and who knows when. Go now, say. now, before we move on to the other ones, what about what about Mark Five? I don't think that one's as good. Um, I think it's less good, just because the low dial is not as playable. It's enhancement, but it's an extra ten points. Um, the two hundred point, or sorry, the um, the the high dials aren't. You know, it's ten for three with enhancement on one hundred twenty five. Um, 200 is it's still 10 for three so no it's yeah. it, it doesn't have the stats Do you know the the fridge beam though that's pretty legit <laughs> the fridge beam no, it is when he hits with a range attack nope Daniel says no nope the, why not to deal three damage give him action token and they all have a mobile it's definitely not for the higher points because it doesn't have the stats yeah I, I am once again only talking about master mold like, if I'm somehow up to 40 in the situation wait, where it's so like, wait oh, a minute. I'll have it. It's, if you're it's playing been... Master Mold, mm -hmm. then you need every robot sentinel in your five gallon bucket. That's just a given. Right. Yes. But that's what we're talking about here is legacy, like set review. Should someone go out there and try to find Sentinel Mark V or Sentinel Mark II? And I think yes to both because you want them in your bucket. I think there are instances you would want. Sentinel Mark V. Then that's to it. Give the enhancement. Give the enhancement, and maybe the frigid beam goes off, but you probably don't main force it. Most likely, you don't. Mark II, maybe. I agree. Okay. All right, go ahead, Dan. Okay. Apocalypse. <laughs> um, Apocalypse. So, um, the probably the first OMA that we've seen. In a while? If we don't include the other apocalypse. Well, he's not, out, not yet. out yet. He's not out yet. He's yeah. probably not legal for worlds. So. He doesn't count, Tyler. Shush, that's later. <laughs> okay. Shush, that's later. That's later. Um, but, um, so the big thing is... Giving right, a real disservice to Iron Allfather here. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, that's the piece you want to pull and seal. Uh, <laughs> so the bystanders on this card are horsemen bystanders that have max one at the beginning of the game you may generate a horseman bystander and when apocalypse crosses a starting line after resolutions you may generate a horseman bystander he has a trait leadership mastermind shape change when apocalypse uses leadership and succeeded you may instead generate a horseman bystander when apocalypse uses mastermind friendly characters within range are considered to be adjacent uh, eight range double bolts cosmic energy which I don't think he had any way to get protected out with before. So that was a huge uh, bump for him. So. Um, special movement power on the 100-point dial with charge, stealth, and power. Choose one effect. Place all horsemen bystanders adjacent to Apocalypse or generate a horseman bystander. Uh, and then a special defense power only seen um, in between 300 and 200. 100. Yeah. Uh, combat reflexes energy shield once per turn when apocalypse uses mastermind and chooses a horseman bystander the chosen character may be given an action token instead of taking damage um and then at a hundred <laughs> and then at a hundred points he also has a special damage power and power enhancement and probability control um oh which, yeah Ooh. which point values are good um i think a hundred and three hundred but I wouldn't. I, agree. I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be mad if I saw it at the other. I think two fifty is probably the worst. Yeah, two fifty is bad. Two because... hundred's not <laughs> awful sauce. E... It's probably not. You're paying a hundred points for four clicks. That's but the big bad. thing is you yeah. get the defense power. It's not as bad as um, two fifty though. But at yeah. two hundred, outside of like, <sighs> critical hits. Like, it's almost impossible to get him off those clicks. I don't know, but almost impossible. Um, I, I guess, you know, maybe, I mean, even at 100, right? Like, so let's talk about at 100, how are yeah. you taking him down? Um, yeah, I, you know, you're attacking him, right? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, usually well, right. Right, so, but you, he has, you have to get him up there with Battle Fury. So if you're attacking him, unlike, um, 
these other, un- unlike Saturn that we were talking about, he does have trade mm-hmm. and shape change. So you have Which is huge. You, yep. you have to get your emotional modifier up there. Um, like you just can't charge Florium. You just you just ruin half of his base and then charge Florium with Iron Man. Yeah, <laughs> you can you can ruin him. That is true. Um, that is one way to do it. Just, I mean, but it's like it's like outside of very outside of like the rune and chaos markers, it it's it takes a lot for a team to be able to KO him. I think it t- does. I, think, I was gonna say two hundred. I don't like two hundred at all. Just, t- just go ahead. <laughs> so real quick, I would just want to read through his bystander. So he can yeah. make his four horsemen. He can make death, which is the best. It is hypersonic precision strike, invincible, and perplex. Uh, seven eleven seventeen three. That's a crazy good uh, bystander. Uh, famine is the tie up. It's plasticity in cap with triple targets, four range, eighteen and two. Uh, with uh, super senses plasticity, pestilence is outwit, charge poison, combat reflexes just an outwit piece, maybe poison can help. And then war is the running shot, pen psych eleven for three. It also has exploit if you're taking up close. So really good, really good pogs. So for me, I feel like two hundred and two fifty are trap. Like okay. just too bad. Because 200, I don't don't take this the wrong way. He's almost ignorable. Like, I'm just gonna go for the other hundred points because he has no movement attack and he can't be TK'd. So, because he's a colossal. So for me, it's like he's hitting me ten for four. Like, well, more what? likely he's just making as many pogs as he can and hoping exactly. they can score. Right. So I'm probably at that point taking out pogs and going for the other hundred points. Whereas if he's on 100 point click, he actually has moving attacks or sidesteps. He can like, he can actually is a little bit more of a threat. Whereas the 200, I'm like, okay, if I just get him in an indoor place and just mitigate and, the pod, and he's not unique. <laughs> he's not unique. I did not realize <laughs> so that. So it's probably one of those things uh, where, like, where you don't play him at 300 because you could just play three of him at 100. <laughs> Well, it's it's easier to score points against three of them at a hundred. Um, really? I I think so because I, you only have to deal eight damage instead of hold on eighteen. Wait, right? The what? What? The because you score points if you if you deal a hundred point character eight damage. You do not skill still. Skill, <laughs> you not score points if you deal eight damage to the three hundred point one. Oh yeah, you, the, you're right. Yeah, I'll mastermind aside. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying now. Yeah, um, um that's true. He, but I, I, this figure seems to be like a figure where if you're making an attack with him, you're probably doing something wrong. I think you should always power action to generate a bystander other than an attack with him. Um. Because it gives you mastermind fodder, it's a better attacker. It gives you a perplexer, an outwit, or a poison. So it's just better. Right. Um, and he's a power enhancement, right? And prob. Like, he's a good yeah. support for... Did they give him X-Men? They did not. Okay, that's good. No. Um, uh, but he's got Ruler, which is great. Pass, which is from Future, which is great. Warrior's okay. Um, <laughs> he does have armor, so Magneto's stock goes up again. Um, right. I yeah he I think he's I think he's good I think he's playable at three or at hundred I like I like the three hundred point version just because like it's 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 I think it's got to be really hard to chew through that he generates a lot of guys um they're dealing damage they're scoring points you you are either getting three hundred points or zero points is what I like about it well, that's what you would say about most of maze. um <laughs> true that's true uh but this one you know it's much harder to tie him up. Um, you can actually spend all of your actions because you're making so many bystanders. Um, you can attack with other figures if he's you know double tokened. He also has uh, giant size, so he can roll out. Um, yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah, I think he's really good. I do. Yeah, I would probably. I'm actually. I would probably consider actually building with him, and just thinking of what else to go with him, like as far as extra support, do I want to go all in on Pogs, like a collector team to make the Pogs even more yeah. 
gross, like mm -hmm. significantly I mean, gross. Ru Ma ruler's pretty cool. That sounds fun. Ruler's like, pretty cool. Ruler's okay. Yeah, add a master mold in there for 25 mm -hmm. points to get the leadership to Apocalypse and to create more pogs because master mold has ruler and future. So you could go either and just yeah. a flash or two in there with future if you wanted. You know, and just... You know who else has ruler? I have no idea. Venom Mags, yeah, but... Venom Mags and Mad Jimmy J. That those are that is true. Those are true statements. I feel like in the team I just built, Mad Jimmy J would be a bad option the one time because there's no one nobody to to. except <laughs> like, himself. Sure. <laughs> so um, but, get a red wing. But he is someone if you're looking like if you uh, looking for a legacy to play around, he's worth definitely worth picking up. Is this the one that is this the apocalypse someone found in a dumpster somewhere forever years ago? No, that's no, the it's not. That's the no. Con okay, okay. So don't let anybody that said they got an apocalypse out of a dumpster try to convince you to buy it because that's not this one. Mm. <laughs> True. Oh man. Okay. I just like this guy for a Paul Game Alex. I think it's the way to go. Yeah. 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 I like it. A lot. Pretty cool. All right. Um, do we want to round out this massive set review with tarot <laughs> cards? Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Then so for our tarot cards, we're going to be doing the starter set and the main set um, because we do not have all of the month one, two, three OP boosters uh, yet. So once we get those, we will talk about them. Um, uh -huh. And then given the length of our episode right now we're going to kind of focus around our tail card review is should you pick this up or should you not now um, a given basis of tarot card is that you draw one and it's on it's in play for your turn and your opponent's turn it affects both players equally um, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to have one of the major arcanas right I don't think that's the right word yep. one of each suit and then one of the major arcanas Yep, so minimum five. Minimum you can five. also have two. You can have two of each of the suits, and then you can have five arcana, so it's a max of 13. Right. So um, let's just start in. So Ace of Cups. When a character uses Super Senses, increase the result of the roll by positive one. It's in the starter set. Yeah, get it. <laughs> yeah. That's a good yeah, one. That's a great, it's, great, it also good great for, it's also good for your opponent, but if you have a lot of senses, especially unoutwittable senses... It's a really good one. Um, five of Cups. Uh, uh, energy Shield Deflection, modify plus three instead of plus two. Man. I don't like this man. one. Man. There's got to be better options for you. Six of... I mean, Human human Torch loves it, but yeah, man. Human, yeah, but you're not, human Torch. Uh, six of Cups. When a character uses barriers, the markers don't need to be generated adjacent to each other. Um, doesn't, yes. work, doesn't work with Molecule Man converting the things but molecule man doesn't even need that anyways but it does work when he power actions barriers um, I don't, I, I, is this too situational is this one that we look at and say oh this is great but then we realize well we're basically burying in a next to next to next anyway so, i think this is a bad i don't like this at all i don't think it's consistent enough to be great or pay a great amount of money for like i think yeah, i think probably. if i think if you're spending five to ten dollars a tarot card to get the the quote unquote bad ones just to have a complete deck, I, I'm not mad about that. Yeah, but if you're at an event and you're like debating which ones do I need to pick up from the ones that were like a, a BR, like if you're going to Gen Con playing in BRs or wherever locally playing in BRs, and you're like this is one of the available prizes as opposed to other ones, this is much lower on the list of tarot cards. That's right. In my head. Yeah, this is a bad card. Yeah. Uh, seven of Cups. When a character uses Mastermind, they may choose a friendly character within six squares instead of adjacent. Uh, yeah, that's... Really powerful effect. It is. That's good. Um, it is. Um, you just have to have somebody that can use Mastermind, obviously. That's right. Um, yep. Eight of Cups. Nope, nope. I, I, eight, nine, ten. No, no, Page of Cups. Yeah, eight, yeah, sorry. Page eight, of nine, cup. ten of Cups are in uh, the OP. Main set Page of Cups. Characters that can use Regen may also use it as free. Um, I don't know the main guy that the main guy that can already use regen as free um, already has it as free, right? Um, yeah, I don't I don't see a use case for this. And most you're almost never using this card because it has to be up while you're on your regen clicks. 
I, I don't there, like it. Is there any pick a power that, that could be useful? I mean, Sim can't pick it, pick it, but is there any you, other pick? You could power? do it with Franklin, but no, I think Franklin, there. Are... Franklin, oh, Franklin could regen. That was yeah. one of the other ones. Yeah, Franklin, I think would absolutely he, love he, this. He, he, you could regen as free, and you can regen as a power with Franklin. Um, so that's kind of neat. But um, I think there are better defense cards you can because the cops is defense. So I think there's better defense cards you can fit right. for Franklin probably. For the consistency. I guess, it depends. I guess it depends if there's anyone else that can really use regen that we're just not thinking of because it's just like, why would I waste on regen? Because uh, everyone sees Thanos regen and we're like, man, I wish I could regen for free. So that's why I'm like, this one is kind of mid for me. It's like, maybe. It's situational. Very situational. Yeah, very, very situational. I agree. Uh, Knight of Cups. Um, when a character uses invuln, reduce damage taken by three instead of two. I like this one a lot. Is that the Thanos player? Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm, we're, not shying away, <laughs> yeah. we're not shying away from it, whatever. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good but one. Like, but are you playing this or are you playing the Super Senses one with Thanos? So, like, you don't have to include... I can include multiple cups without having to include multiple pinnacles. You can include up to two, yeah. So, I think I would probably pick two cups. I would probably go... I think my Thanos deck would be seven cards. Um, okay, and, and you use both of these. And I think I use two cups and two major arcanas. Okay. But okay. Now because we can talk about Thanos and stuff later. Let's just keep going. Right, yeah, I'm with it. So, uh, <laughs> Queen of Cups. The defense ones are all really good. Um, oh, Queen of Cups. Wait, wait, wait. Oh I didn't... Did, no, I'm just saying. We do, do we think it's good or bad? Good. No one, good. Yes, it's good. good. I don't it's, think it's good. So no. It's only good... If it's situational. And, and you no, know, invulnerabilities are like one of those like mid tier defense powers. It's also really low costed. Um, a lot of good things have invulnerability. Um, I don't do that. that. That's the thing I had a question. A, I don't think there's a lot that does. Uh, I don't either. Chase A. Um, then like say mimic getting it um, because a lot of things just don't inherently do penetrating damage. Like charge flurry doesn't come with a lot of exploit. Um, I agree. I just don't think there's a lot of good figures yeah, for them. I, I think, yeah, I think this card's great for Thanos. It's very mad for everybody else. Uh, That's yeah. my take on it. Queen of Cups. I like this one a lot. Uh, characters take a maximum of two damage from an attacks. Um, I, I, I don't. I think it's very... It could come up at a very bad time for it, you. It could, but Thanos also only has three or four damage, so he also he <laughs> likes that defensively as well, so... I yeah. think. Um, okay, go ahead. Oh, I think you got a plan for it, um, but it's a very powerful effect. And if it if you have a team with lower damage, I think I think it's really good. And you don't have a, you. I think this is a good one of the top tier ones. Yeah. I don't think this this is an effect thing yeah. very much. He only takes two damage. Right. Yeah, but you're usually dealing him at most three to four anyway. There's not a lot of people dealing five to six damage, so he would take Same. two anyway. Same. Right, yeah, like, I think there uh, is. Muramasa Blade, right? Like, you just include this. That's true. That's, that's, okay, that's fair. All right. So, um, Ace of Pentacles. We are switching suites to the Pentacles, which, by the way, which like, speed. I have, I've walked, I've walked, I've been on the internet a long time, and, like, there's nothing that, like, my brain goes to, like, this is the Tentacles card, and... We know, we, we know <laughs> what, what part of the internet are you on? Right, not not the great parts of, when, when I am uh, <laughs> thinking about this. Um, All right. So main set, Ace of Pentacles. When a character uses Flurry and misses one or both attacks, after resolutions they make may make a close attack. I think that's just fine. Yes, I like that. Good. Yeah, you can't you can't count, you, if you're playing Sim. I think it's a really good card because there's another card yep. in here that goes really yep. well with Sim too. So. Uh, I think it's kind of mid. I don't think you're using this most of the time. I think yeah, there are better I, options. I, I am agreeing with you, Tyler, once again. All right. Uh, seven? No. Um, five. Five. Uh, five. five. Um, I, think the, I think the starter set ones are good enough to pick up anyways. Um, well, yeah, just pick up the starter just set. Just pick up the starter set. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, mod easy peasy modification to charge speed is great. Um, yeah, there's a, there there's a lot of charge figures. This it, one this one's good, and it may not even help your opponent, right? If you're building around it. Yeah, true. So for sure, Flash loves this card. Oh yeah, uh, Sim still loves the card. It gets him that third perplexed to speed. Um, mm -hmm. um, 
When six of pinnacles, when a character uses mind control after resolutions, they may deal their printed damage value on all hit targets. Um, I wonder who likes that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, it does trigger off a free. Else one more fucking time. I'm going to <laughs> it does trigger off a free mind control, so that's he, really he's good. Talking, he's talking about the skull from Earth. <laughs> okay, that's what. That's true. That's mind true. control um, is fucking powerful. It is. Yes, this, we all know from yeah, the past we know. six months. <laughs> right. Just really quickly, really quickly, if you use this with Clay and Scarab, he deals his printed damage. That's right. Body, right? Yeah, so thank you for providing another example, <laughs> Tyler. Um, You're welcome. That's yeah. really good. The Clay, uh, yeah. It gets, I mean, it gets around. it's only two damage, I guess, but still. Two's better than yeah, one. I mean, that's, it's twice yeah, as good. It doesn't have much. Maybe you play him at full dial for three. Yeah. Um, I mean, who else? I mean, there's other characters that use mind control. It, yeah, it, this is obviously a very powerful effect. It's got Sakarian Iron Man dealing two. Sakarian Iron Man <laughs> yeah. can pick mind control, right? He can. Um, so, yes, he can. So there, there's a lot of great mind control figures out there. Okay, not just things else. Sakarian Iron Man likes a lot of these. He does. Yeah, he he does. likes all of them. Uh, well, the speed and well, so attack. Who else? <laughs> like like the there? Seven of Pentacles, for instance. <laughs> Yes, uh, he likes that with the cloak. Anybody with the cloak likes this. Uh, you can't use your movement abilities, but you can free move half speed, which is really nice. Wait, what? Characters can't use improved movement abilities. Uh, characters that can use pluses, they have free move. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, anybody with the cloak, this is a really powerful effect. Um, stops, like, phasing and things like that. This one's really, really good. Yeah, flight, that's a big one. Um Yep. Uh, and hypersonic being able to <laughs> move through. Move through. Yeah. That's a big one. Uh, eight of Pinnacles. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So should you pick up seven? Oh. Yes. Um, eight. Set. Uh, it's great for like D plus Captain America, Chase. Uh, which one? Those eight. The knockback. Uh, yeah. Make it a Pinnacles. The knockback because yeah, he can oh. when he hits someone, he can place them and then and then. Uh... Knock them back or whatever, you know. Knock them back yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, they can all that. Yeah. Knock back a character up to six squares instead of three. Oh, with no. Okay, if that character you can use force blast, which you can, they can choose. Oh, okay, and yeah, that's true. It, I, this one can definitely. It's niche, but they're they're. It's very powerful. Yeah. So if if you can use this, you probably will. Yeah, and, and I don't think I'll, thing... but I don't think a lot of teams will be able to use. Yeah, I guess. Yes, and to clear up everything to make sure no one thinks otherwise, this is not the same when you use <laughs> boom. Um, you can't use this for like Human Torch because he's not using knockback. He is just knocking someone back. So yeah, knockback is the key phrase. Yes, so it's the when they word use word. the knockback key phrase, <laughs> not when you knock somebody back. Yep. Otherwise, that'd be stupid if Human Torch was able to <laughs> yeah. knock him back for six. Yeah, that'd well, be great. Uh, that would be really good. <laughs> It's free TK at that point. All right, nine, nine. of pentacles. Yes. Oh, sorry, cool. nine of pennies. That's what this one's called. The nine of pennies. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. When a character uses a sidestep, they may move up to three squares instead of two. I think that this one's fine to pick up. Yes. You probably. I don't think you're using this one much. There's too many better effects, in my opinion. There is, but I don't. I'm. I'm not reaching for this one. So I feel like scientists might like this. Um, like the one, the teams that use a lot of like taxi sidestep, like animal, you probably would have liked this on your animal team. I don't think so. I think there's just so many better effects. It's just one extra square. I don't, I don't see it. I, I think again, wow. like I think my whole opinion on all of these, like if you're picking up a complete deck for five to ten dollars, um, we're gonna, like I said, like we were saying, I think we will just spell it out again. We're gonna have to have more strategy sessions and then like. You know, specific building tarot cards with specific teams. Yeah, um, I think I think what I think what we know right now, Pentacles, which we're still missing, like five or six. This would be the one you played with animals. None of these others really affect animals very much. You weren't charging, maybe, but all the others. I feel like you were sidestepping more than you were. <laughs> doing certain things. Anyway. Right. Um, so, Ten of Pinnacles. Uh, it doesn't say what uh, it does. Yeah. Clicks Nexus does have it. It's uh, when a character uses hypersonic speed and hits with an, uh, during the action after resolutions, they can remove an action token from them. Uh, very specifically, if you have hypersonic on your team, right? So, it might be good for Iron Man? No. Iron Man I think, as well. I think yeah. Iron Man has other stuff higher up the list here, but... 
Uh, I guess the sidestep and the charge. Well, I, th and I the, feel like that and would the be better than and the, the charge. And the plasticity one. The plasticity one is better. I think this is the second best for Iron Man, but yeah, yeah the plasticity one's better. I think I would have this one over the sidestepping one. I would too. All right, so what do we got up next? Five of Swords. Boop, 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 is that on Five of Swords. Five of swords. Yeah. Yeah. Let me pull it up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, five of Swords. They do have it. It is. Uh, when a character that can use oh, when a character that uses super strength is given an action after resolutions, they may generate a standard object for them to immediately hold. Wait, <laughs> Uncle Tyler is going to talk about super strength. Yeah. Um, so, say that I didn't. What was that? Yeah, yeah, say, say that again, Tyler. Yeah, when a character that can use super strength is given an action. After resolutions, they may generate a standard object for them to immediately. Oh, okay. So, 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 yeah, uh, pass. No, that this is actually situationally good for Iron Man. I get that. I still think it's not good. I think it depends on your build. If you're playing a build where you're not having, like, you're going to have to rely on those three objects and nothing else, like you have a bunch of equipment. Then maybe even, no. Even, even then, you you first you have to pick super strength, which is awful, <laughs> and then you, none of your other characters have super strength because it's awful. And then you have to roll the or draw this when you need an object. So I, I I don't think it's good. Yeah, maybe it's only for someone that you don't realize has super strength because you just think super strength's terrible. It's like, well, they got it anyway. Maybe then, even maybe then. Like a, like a Chase She-Hulk, I think, has it. The one that can sure. TK and do all that stuff. I think she has yeah, Quake. Thought she has super strength because she creates heavy objects. Okay, either way. But yeah, it, you're right. It's probably bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Um, very situational. Six of swords? Oh, swords are attacks. Attack slot. Right. Yes. Um, Six of swords is stunning blow. It's yep. it, after, when a character is in cap yeah. after they after resolutions, they may deal their printed damage yeah. value divided between all hit targets. They're given action tokens. Um, yeah, this is really good with uh, Wonder Woman's lasso or anybody that can free in cap, right? Um, mm -hmm. Or you know, there I, I don't know if there's anybody that really likes this because most I, in cap characters are low damage value. I mean, I do like it on the Wonder Woman. He, yeah, she's she over and just yeah. target I think everybody if, within three. Like if that's... you have the ability to ink up as free, you're going to use this card for sure. So there, this this kind of makes me think of a the lasso, just a combo there that could be good. Like just yeah. in general, like I we agree. were talking about seventy six using it on a Merlin team. And it's mm -hmm. like okay, he also gets to deal three damage when he uses the free ink cap. Yeah, Merlin has ink cap too. So yeah. So, I mean, it, now, unfortunately, this doesn't really work for, like, Molecule Man or... Yeah, because they just deal one damage. Yeah, so it's not that beneficial. But, I mean, yeah. it, deal, it is one damage and an action token, but True. not not worth it to play this for that. So this is very situational as well. Yep, but it could you definitely pick it up because you might need it. Um, seven of Swords, when a character that can use Penetrating uh, Psychic... Seven of Swords is... No, 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 Nine of Swords. I apologize. Nine of Swords. Nine of Swords. Nine of swords. <laughs> when a character... Set. Yep, when a character that so you're gonna pick it up. When a character that can use precision strike makes an attack, the attack cannot be evaded and damage taken from the attack cannot be reduced below two instead of one. Uh this one's great. There's a lot of good characters yeah, with precision strike. You know, you're picking precision strike a lot of the times with pick a power to get through <laughs> super senses and then they roll a six and you hate yourself. So uh this one's very good. I like this one a lot. It this also is... helps a lot against Thanos. Yeah, I was gonna say that since Dan's muted, Thanos killer card. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. this is the card you want against Thanos. Thanos for killer. Sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, just we're kidding, we're kidding. Before someone starts posting this everywhere. Yeah, kind of, but this is probably the best card. Well, no, it is a really good card against Thanos, so that makes it good. Let me look up Page of Swords. Maybe we should do this on Click Sexes. We should just have both, like, just open. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll be on Page of Swords. All right, Page of Swords. Um, when a character uses Steel Energy to heal two clicks instead of one, this one is bad. I don't think, I can't, no, right? Even on. You read that really fast. Steel Energy is just two instead of one. Yeah, like, maybe if you're playing, like, Prime Wonder Woman, maybe then? Oh, like the vampire ones? Yeah, something like that. Mm. Um, or it could be good 
I can't talk about him. Never mind. So yeah, it could be good on Brian Wonder Roman. Um, uh, let's see. She doesn't get steel energy. Is there, I'm thinking it like Agatha. Doesn't she get steel energy? Uh, no. Uh, she yeah, she does. Closer range attack, steel energy. But then you're using it on a character that got hurt already. So I don't really like it. I'd say this one's pretty low. I, I feel like you might play it with Agatha just because they're going to hit her at some point and, and she gets steel energy close or range she and has it the rest of her dial. In my experience, when Agatha gets hit, she dies. Well, you're also hyper aggressive. So I'm, no, I, I, when I played Sim. Agatha, when I played cool. Agatha, you can play it on Sim. That's not terrible. That's um, true. That's true. Because you can flurry steel energy. I think it's probably better on people who have steel energy from closer range. So. That's the only reason I was thinking of Agatha's. Yeah. I feel like those instances are more. But, but yeah, you're right. Absolutely right, Jason. You get charge steel or flurry steel, flurry steel energy. energy. You heal yeah. for, for four. four. Yeah, yeah. pretty good. Damage. Wait a minute. What, which one heals you heal for four? I missed a few. S st steel energy, uh, but you heal two instead of one. So you flurry steel energy, you heal four. With iron. Yeah. Which, what, what, what card? Sorry. Knight uh, of are, Swords. Or uh, no, page, page of swords. Page of swords. Page of swords. Oh, that one's not even in here. Yeah, he's on yeah. clicks. We're having to go back and forth. Yeah, that's true. So you just get to heal two from steel energy instead of one. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think it's situationally okay. It's not the best, um, but not useless. I'm thinking like I don't see any other um, attack ones that really. I mean, y'all don't want to hear it. I get it. Um, but like I don't really see any of the other attack ones that work really well with Thanos. Oh, true. Um, what other attack powers can you even get? That's it, right? Okay, then maybe you're yeah, probably playing on a Thanos team. That's true. Um, it's pretty good on a Thanos. You're not really, you're not really TK, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, some teams are, but because because uh, the next card would potentially be good. I think this next one's great with Venom Magneto. Right. Yeah, not a sure. character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when can't... a character uses TK after resolutions, remove an action token from them. Yep. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's just free a TK. randomly good one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think yeah. It, I think specifically <laughs> if you're playing Venom Magneto, you're like, okay, I absolutely want this in there. Just to, all my free TKs, I'm just removing action tokens. Yeah. I don't think so. I think it's not strong enough. There's better. You want this for offense. You want to use an offensive card on it. Yeah, I think the teams it. that play Venom Magneto, the vast majority of them want another attack one. But you got to keep in mind, removing action tokens is inherently increasing your offensive capabilities because you're not going to have double token action well, turns. But it's only not... for Venom Magneto. No, it so says it's... from that. Oh, when, oh, it removes only from. I thought it was yeah, from the TK. TK after resolutions remove an action. That token. would be way better. <laughs> oh, I misread. I thought it was you TK someone to remove a token from them. I would play it if that was the case. You're right, but okay, my bad. Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah. no, this isn't nearly as good as I thought. Okay, uh, Queen of Swords. When a character attacks, rolls of ten and eleven are crits. Um, I. Mm. I don't like this one just because, like, you, I could see myself maybe reaching for it if I don't like any of the other ones. But, but then this one you can't build towards, so it's literally just the exact same. If for you both if you have dice replacement, you want to probably include this one. Yes, yeah, silver maybe is probably better. Right? Yeah, or that maybe that's uh, true. Chase Spider Man from War of the Realms. Or Adolf Impossible. Oh my God. Yeah, let's not <laughs> let's not mention that. Uh, King of King of Swords, King of Swords um, doubles remove an action token. Probably not consistent enough either. Unless you're oh, in, definitely not. Unless, no. unless you're wanting to play Iska Prime. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, All right, and then the last one is damage slot is wands. So two of wands uh, hit characters have battle fury even if this card is not in play. Um, Till your hit characters have battle fury until your next turn. Yeah. Even if this card is not. Oh man, play. that's the that's the Thanos. That's the Thanos KOer right there. Um, yeah. So this one is great. Obviously, it's really, really a powerful effect. Um, you know, Iron Man picks Range Up Pulse Wave. Their whole team can make range attacks next turn. That seems really, really good. Uh, yeah, this one is one would, of the best. I would say also it's very situational though, because if your team relies on a lot of shape changes, it backfired very quickly. 
Like, oh, uh, that's true. Well, like, yeah, Scarlet don't put Witch. this on your team for that. Like Scarlet Witch, I'm like, I gotta have that shape change. They're gonna outwit it, maybe, but I don't want to give them a free outwit, essentially, that everyone has Battle Fury. But especially well, if they got, like, range flashes. Attack. Yeah. Yeah. So it is somewhat situational. I, I, if you aren't rocking a lot of shape change, it's a, it is a double-edged cool. sword for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. What's next? Four of ones. Four, four of ones. Four four ones. Uh, it's in the starter set, so get it. Yeah. It's really good when a character uses exploit weakness to make a close. Like when a character that can use exploit weakness makes a close attack after resolution to one penetrating penetrating damage to each opposing okay. character adjacent to a hit target. Um, it's really good. It's really good with multiple targets. You know, the only one that comes to mind is Sky Tyrant, right? He runs over and punches two people, and then everybody adjacent to them take a damage. It's really, we, really good. And we do have equipable exploits. Well, and it's, we it's adjacent to a hit target, so it's not like you can quake, you know, your, your cascading quake penetrating. A yeah, you damage. can only deal one total to up character. Right, but it could, but, it could also be really good. Yeah. Um, but it comes in the starter set, so, we'll just, so just pick it up, right? We can build with it later. Um, yep. yep. Nine of Wands is on, is on Nexus. Yeah. Nine of Wands, do they have it? They do. Uh, when a character uses Empower, also modify Attackers. Attack plus one. This one is amazing. I love this one so much. So good. Uh, it's I basically like... having ranged combat expert, right? Or close combat expert. Close combat expert. Yeah, so yeah. You, 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 um, you can double it up, right, with clo with CCE and an Empower. If it's in play, it's pretty good. You should probably try to pick it up. It's so good on alphas. <laughs> if you have two Empowers on your alpha, it's plus two attack and damage. It's so good. Right. This one I love so much. Um, but I think I love this next one more. No, 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 no sorry. Okay. There's one, there's more. Um, sorry. <laughs> Ten of Wands. Oh yeah, no, no, Ten no, of no, wands. no. Six. Sorry, I'm behind. Sorry, it is Ten of Wands. I like the, Ten of the wands. first time Perplex is used. The combat value is modified plus two instead of negative two, or plus two negative yeah. two instead of plus one minus. One. It's obviously really good. Um, it's just it's an extra Perplex a turn, right? It, it's, essentially. Yeah, it's the only caveat that I'm hesitant on is it's the first time. If it was you could pit, if it was like once a turn when perplex is used, that would be way better. But the first time, there's, I situa think... there's situations where it's like maybe I would rather the third perplex. I, I agree. I think it's manageable. There are some times where it's going to get a little sticky, but um, it's still a really good card. Right. Yeah. You just got to prepare your turn a little bit better, right? Like you just probably use your defense perplex first and then use your attack perplexes. Yeah, maybe something like that. Um... Uh. Page of Wands? They can choose. Same thing? <laughs> yeah, they choose two powers. Outwit twice. Yeah, I think that one's a great one to pick up. Uh, yeah, the Outwit's very prevalent. There's a lot of Outwit. Um, yeah. A lot of times you're outwitting Shape Change and Super Senses, so just do it with one Outwit instead. Uh, it's good. Absolutely. And it's, yeah. Uh, King of Wands, oh. Tyler, you're up. I'm, I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm on it. Knight of Wands. Knight, Knight of Wands, sorry, my bad. Oh. My bad. Okay. Knight. Knight of Wands is uh, when a character uses leadership, increase the result of the roll by one. Um, maybe on a black card team, right? That's, no, black card teams love this. That's, I mean, it's just so like if you're running into maybe you can't get one of these other cards, this is a perfectly fine one to use. I think it's probably the best. If you're playing a double black card team, I think this is the best card. Yeah, maybe this is good enough to move black card back up a step. Could oh, I think good. he already is up a step. He was he came second in UK Nats. He did. I I've said that I still think he's a great figure. I don't. I think I think people are going to realize you can't just roll with one. You got to roll with two. Two mitigates the leadership issue a lot. <laughs> yeah, and this yeah. helps it a lot too. Yeah. Uh, All right. uh, Queen. Yep. This is this is the D six when a character rolls for an effect using a single D six increase the result. Isn't this just of the roll isn't the plus. queen just better than the knight then? No, yes. I mean in cards, yes. Um, in well, it doesn't just do the same thing. Yeah. It, it doesn't it just do the same thing it, for leadership. Just instead of it's not limited to leadership. Am I missing something here? But yeah, yeah, but this gives you two options now. You can play both. Both of them. 
two chances of getting oh, a better leadership. That's yeah. kind of fun. It, yeah, it's a leadership on three through six. It's it's not better if the other team has a lot of rollouts. I'll tell you. And that. it is not <laughs> it is not better. Mm-hmm. It, well, it it's not good if, if it's not good if there's two queen of wands in effect as well. Oh my god, <laughs> that is true. Um, but there are figures where oh they're rolled d six for a specific effect, that and just this blows is very my good mind. For like queen of wands is pretty good, but like. <laughs> You, if, if, also... if, if if you have that in play and I have that in play and I just pick Time Gym with Thanos, it's a, what a three through six super senses. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty... I, I I know that I said Thanos, but any character with super senses, uh, there's more than one character that has super senses in the world. Um, yeah, Scarlet Witch is super sense shape change. You're not hitting her that turn. Probably, um, probably not hitting her that turn. Sure. Um, um... Ooh. And yeah, like I said, there are specific effects that roll d6s that you will want this card, so definitely want to pick this one up. I like the King, King of Wands. When a character damages an opposing character with an attack after resolutions, remove an action token from them. Tempo is so, so you hit huge, somebody. and that is huge. Yeah, that's true. Um, and with all the Mastermind, right? That we're seeing in this set. Why does Mastermind affect this? Because you're more likely to damage an opposing character with an attack. Are you? Because they're going to mastermind to someone that's going to take damage, most likely. Yeah. Well, they would have taken damage. So that means you remove an action token either way. Yeah, it so does, like but it's more likely, it. right? So, like, if you're if you're a pog, is more likely to get yeeted than say the hundred point apocalypse, right? So, it's just a better chance of the king of wands being useful. I disagree, but. I like King of Wands. It's good. Yeah, I don't. I think I think we can both like it for different reasons. So, <laughs> sure. So now we move on um, to the what major arcanas? Yes, sir. These are the good ones. Well, the the big ones. Right. Fool. So the fool, yes, is great, especially if you don't plan on using equipment. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's yeah. It, especially yeah. If you're not using equipment, you should play this card probably yeah absolutely um, it messes up a lot of teams remember it affects your I mean, own team though wait hold on hold on a second i want to look at something real quick about holding because it because it's it's the mad jimmy jasper's kill count no i'm just kidding um all right i'm looking at it, it kills the effect right yeah right. so okay so that means even would scare get a red scare would still be affected by this right he yeah, he would. Okay. All right, strength, Tyler, you're up. Uh, yeah, it's uh, attack rolls of one one are not crit misses, and attack rolls of doubles that, that would hit are crit hits. I like that. They're, they're, I don't think any of the major arcanas are necessarily bad. And you can only play one. You can or play two. two major you can play five. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's way different than one or two. Tyler. It is. <laughs> Wait, I can play. Uh, I can play four sweets. Four of the one of each suite, and then five arcanas. Yep, totally can. I think I would play. I think I would do that. All right. Well, um, temperance is the next one. I have especially it. when the o- a... especially sorry when the op stuff comes out. I think the arcanas are great. Um, yeah. this, is, this is the like worst arcana. Yeah, when a standard character successfully breaks away, that character's controller gains one mission point, maximum three per turn. Uh, and you know, if you go ahead, go nuts if you're playing a mission point team. Yeah, go nuts. it's true. It's only for one turn, maybe two if you get it again somehow. Yeah. I was gonna say, how late would it be to play this card and your opponent wins on mission points because you played this card? I'm glad that they did max three because oh, yeah. you could do some crazy stuff with this, but yeah. Um, the moon, I kind of like the what? moon, but especially if you're doing mission points, yeah, when an opposing character. Per, uses perplex gain a mission point. I it's I I well I think mission points are bad and are not playable right now. Um, think this and this one more playable. Even then, this one's like situational, right? Most people are perplexing like twice a turn, so it'll give you two mission points sure. if they think it's worth it. Play Felix Faust, roll only once, and make sure that they have you can use ten. <laughs> they perplex eighteen times. Yeah, done. Um, Will of, no, Will no, of no. Fortune. Would actually be not the way to play this card, but sure. <laughs> uh, when a character attacks, that character's controller gains one mission point for each time the attack roll is re-rolled by an opposing effect. That so one's it's cool. Like, it's like a Watu, wasn't a Watu? Yeah, it's like Watu. It's right? like old Watu, right? They should have just well, put a, a little bit. Space on it. It's different. Um, I, but I know, but... 
Yeah, so I like, like this one a if lot. If you're playing a Watu, you play the Wheel of Fortune. That's true. I think this is the best of the mission points for me because there's no upper limit, and it discourages them from probing your attacks, which is good. Right, and especially if you have a Watu to do the reroll on your. Attack, <laughs> Stop right? saying a Watu. Ooh, Tyler. Uh, yeah. Tyler's going. You know what, Tyler? You're going to be looking at the Wheel of Fortune. You're going to be like. I want to <laughs> do I prob this attack <laughs> <laughs> the 19 <laughs> mission points I can't prob it <laughs> oh uh, the high priestess uh yeah once per turn each player may re-roll a d6 in a friendly character's role including single d6 in an attack roll I, I, um, I like it. similar to the other ones I, I, I like it as far as a major arcana goes that's mm, you, good. you just re-roll your super senses right re-roll your shape change you know why I like this one is because uh, it's the Unis, the untouchable killer. <laughs> I roll a one, one to three. Nope, re-roll it. This is gonna be for me like how a lot of people play video games, where you get a lot of potions and stuff, and you're like, well, I gotta wait until that right time to use it, and then you get to the end of the game, beat it, and realize you didn't use any Never of them. It. This one is going to be like, well, should I use it on this roll, or is my next attack? I think important? I think that if you're if you if you're going to play tarot and you're like, I have to include a card. I I think you probably include the high priestess. Maybe uh, this one. I mean, a lot of times you're just saving it for a for a defense roll, right? Yeah, because it doesn't negatively impact you too bad. I mean, it kind of does. They get to reroll all of their d sixes. It just depends. And they get to reroll it de- attacks. I get it. I get it. I, I I understand that, but like, it's not like, you know, the defense ones or specifically super senses or something like that. Um, huh. it, it's devil card. All right. Anyways, all right, we're, we're we're running close on time for some of this. Yeah. That's when right. a character attacks after resolutions, deal the one punishing damage for each six in the finalized attack roll. Um, I don't think this one's good. There's way better. Uh, major arcana cards. That, that punishes, it affects you. It affects you oh. negatively, yeah. Um, anything else? I think all the rest are OP ones. Month one, month one, month two, month two, month three, month three, month, three, month, three, month one, month one, month one, month one. Yeah, that's it. That is it. There you go. So, um, all right. And if you have stayed with us this long, you are currently at the five hour, 24 minute mark. And we couldn't be more pleased to have you with us still. So, uh, congratulations. Congratulations on making it this far in the longest episode of Clicks Off. And um, starting out our questions is um, a note that I got from Benjamin Umansky uh, about Monarch. Um, mm-hmm. Do y'all remember Monarch? Yes, we <laughs> argued about Monarch. Yeah. We did. Like the- the Monarch, like from uh, yeah, the set, Venture Brothers. No. Oh. Um. So, uh, the one thing that we didn't mention whenever friendly characters are treated as adjacent, um, he can carry them. Mm. No oh. way. <laughs> does he have flight? No, uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't. But they would have to be tiny, or say, give him the cloak. That's a. T- <laughs> that's. That's Batman's <laughs> Bat Signal esque, right? That makes me giggle. Right? Yeah, but he <laughs> right? has to. He would have to succeed on leadership. Yeah. So you it, equip him with the cloak. <laughs> you you running. You right. you send a flash all the way across the board. He attacks next to blocking. Then you sidestep carry him back. Does that work? Yeah. It's a be- it's the beginning of your turn though, right? But it's until your next turn, right? So it's for this turn okay. they are considered adjacent or occupying terrain of that type. So that's interesting. Yeah, you go uh, adjacent What's to carry. Sorry. No, it's just adjacent. I mean, I can read you the carry rules. Uh, Mister Umansky <sighs> sent them to me. Uh, it says okay, before, yeah. before beginning movement, you may choose one adjacent friendly character of smaller size or passenger. Um, yeah, yeah, that'll work. And there's a bunch of other stuff, but we understand how that works. So, yeah, so they're treated as adjacent. Okay. The problem is, is that you gotta succeed on leadership, and that's a problem. I like how we got like an errata or like a, hey guys, you forgot this in the middle of us recording. Right. 
Well, somebody asked me. It's so long. It's so long of a set review. Right. It is. It's our longest episode so far. So, uh, anyways, Benjamin wanted a shout out for that. And um, so I appreciate you messaging. Well, me. well deserved. Yeah. Thank uh-huh. you. Uh, thank you for that, Benjamin. So, uh, but it is a little bit inconsistent, but albeit cool. Um, so, we answered Luke Baker's question about the top sword. Um, and then George William Ong. Uh, message, what are your top pentacle swords, cups, wands, and major arcanas? No lord. Um, so that, that is a big question. So, you know, we did talk about it on our uh, each portion of our set review. Uh, but, you know, I don't mm-hmm. think we ever did like a capstone on that. Um, if y'all aren't ready, I think I've got, I think I've got a few I'd like to share. Now, are we just limiting it to the set and starter set that we talked this, about? This, the main set, yeah. Well, I'll just say the main set, yeah. Okay. So, uh, I'm just going on Nexus's uh, sorting of it, um, because it's all there. Um, I think um, the cups, the cups I like probably the most, because I, there's two in contention there. I like the Ace of Cups. And I like the Queen of Cups. I think, I think overall, I would play the Queen of Cups is my favorite. I don't, I don't know if I can give a favorite. <laughs> that is yeah. too. It depends on the team entirely, right? Okay. I can't, That's you know, fine. I can't say the Super Senses one is my favorite if my team has no Super Senses. These things depend on what you're playing, like. Yeah, but you can also say yeah. like, what do you like? Based on kind of what your play style is and that sort of thing, that's okay. So you said you said Ace of Cups was your favorite. Uh, the Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups. Oh, which is the two damage? Two damage. Yeah, that's a take take a max of two damage. Um, I would probably lean out of all these, the Mastermind one, the Seven of Cups. Okay. The, when you choose Mastermind, friendly characters within six squares instead of adjacent. But uh, once again, very, very reliant on me playing the Mastermind I'm, I'm, one. I'm just going to base these off playing my current team. So I'm going to say Ace of Cups. Fair enough. That's fair. Uh, so I mean, that's a good call. We can base this off of our current team. Because that's, that's probably what I'm going to keep playing. I'm probably just going to keep playing this, and I'm just going to add a tarot card deck. So that's what I'm going to go with. Yeah, that's true. Um,. I guess the so the six of pentacles um, would be my pentacle pick. I don't know if I've got this in the right order or not, but this is just what I I see. The major the major arcanas are technically next in on the next. Tyler, did you give us yours or? Uh, I did not. Um, he these said ones he, he are. Said he, he said he wasn't going to. I just I, well, I said I mean, it's I, hard. Yeah, <laughs> he said it was hard. Not that he was, wasn't going to. But if you base it off your current team, like if you're playing this team. Uh, yeah, my current team. I'm with you know basically the same team as, as uh, Jason. So I I would probably pick Ace because we have a lot of uh, Super Sense characters. Okay. Um, I do agree. Okay. That okay. Probably the Mastermind one is the most powerful. I think. Or the. Yeah, <laughs> both of your answers were good. Um, the queen as well, but yeah, I would probably play the uh, the super sense one. Right. Okay. Uh, pentacles. Um, again, I'll say the six of pentacles. Okay, I'm gonna say the seven of pentacles. Yeah, I think the seven has the most. A lot of the, uh, the probably is the most powerful one. The seven, which is characters can use improved movement abilities. Char- oh yeah, for sure. I I love that one. Um, mm-hmm. It's really just because um, of the cloak. I don't think it, it's still a really powerful mm-hmm. effect without the cloak, but um, it does a lot. It it does two different things. It it helps. Um, I mean, yeah. Even no cloak, Saki can just pick plasticity. Maybe. That's true. Um. I'm trying I was, to think, is there anybody else with plasticity? Well, yeah, that for me, it's like, it's well, if I was going based off of my current team, mm-hmm. like, I would lean, yeah, Seven of Pentacles, but I feel like Ace of Pentacles would be kind of close, because I have two figures that would be typically using Charge Flurry. Yeah. So, being able to, like, mm-hmm. oh, I, I whiffed on one of those, 
I get to make a close attack after, so I get kind of a redo. So, um, yeah, that's kind of like, yeah, that's a good one too. So to answer your other question, uh, Tyler, uh, like Venom Mags and Venom Wolverine. Yeah, that's true. Any of those guys love it. Um, um, and then I don't know. Um, I was just gonna look real quick plasticity on first click search. Um, like uh, the Mister Fantastic that we swap into all the time, mm -hmm. or that is swapped into. Um, the uh, I think I'd have to go with the page as well. Yeah. Now let me quick so, question. I have a quick mm -hmm. question, and bit, and I, we haven't really got into you know building a deck or anything. Are you concerned at all because most of our cards are built around Sarkarian Iron Man, and everyone is playing Sarkarian Iron Man, so any tarot card we play will also benefit them most likely the next turn. Uh, I get that, but you probably it probably helps the uh, offensive capability of Sarkarian Iron Man so much that. Are we uh, worried about his offensive capabilities? That's what I mean. Like, do you go with something? Because you have to play a pentacle. Is there one that's? I don't know. I didn't know if there was something. Yeah, I think you might be thinking like too deep into it. Just to be honest, Alex, I'm like, it, I, I don't think too deep. I they, think in the, they all. I think in this all, instance. Because mm -hmm. you got to yeah, remember, if, if, if it's going to hurt your Saki, if it's going to hurt their Saki, it'll hurt your Saki. Right, I'm. And I'm saying, and you don't want to punch. I'm your, saying, you don't want to punch yourself in your sack. Okay, but my con. What I'm trying to say is, is that is there cards that benefit maybe Scarlet Witch or well, she's kind of played too, but like other main pieces of your force outside of just Sarkarian Iron Man, like that. Like in this instance with Seven of Pentacles, well, it only really helps Sarkarian Iron Man, right? Yeah, but i think we've considered that what are, what are you saying we're overlooking and it also hurts doesn't it's all characters can't use improvement of that too right yeah so that's also hurts your flyers and whatnot as well mm -hmm. so for me it's like i feel like playing this was just a, too risky for me if i'm playing sarkarian iron man i'd rather play well Fleur, Fleur, the one with flurry and then make sure i outwit flurry on their team like that way i can mitigate my second choice so yeah. I, it, for, just... for, I'm not messing with Iron Man. <laughs> I don't need that card. Well, I mean, if you get to use it, you, you get to go first, though. You Ooh, pull it, your Iron Man gets you to use it first. Ty Ooh, Tyler, you say that, and then they have the increased super senses card, and they're like, four, four. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, yeah, that... well, I guess I just. I have outwit. I'm fine. <laughs> That's why you use nine of swords. Right, it's a sword sword strike and they can't evade. And they can't evade. Uh, well, nine of swords. Um, oh, that's true. Um, I like that. that it, why did they make a tarot card that was just like? Uh, I must have been dealing with Theo at that point um, during that part of the show earlier. But uh, isn't the nine of swords just what precision strike uh, used to be? Oh yeah, you Not were playing. You, you were playing with Theo because we said this was the Thanos killer one. Yeah, we did. Yeah, right. yeah, we did. yeah, we did. Joking, but uh, that's right. I mean, you, can't, you can't reduce damage below two. Also, uh, yeah, I, I <laughs> don't disagree with you. I mean, that's better than the other things that everyone else is hype about. To be honest, uh, yeah. So the sword. swords, swords. Um, I think for my current team, I like the page of swords. The double out wit? No, the no. Uh, the steel energy one. Uh oh, that's wands. I, I got I, that was page of wands was what I was looking at. Yeah, page of swords. Just because it's the only one you can use. Well, on Thanos. no, I mean uh, that's true. I mean I do play. You got to remember my current team does have Sakari and Iron Man on it. That's likely to change. Um. So, but mm -hmm. um, even with like the new version that I'm thinking about. Yeah, I mean, I have other powers, but... I mean... I mean, it's a lot of these swords cards, until we get the rest of them, are kind of meh. For, like, very situational. Really? So, I, 
Well, the situation is you have that power. <laughs> um, right. mm -hmm. Nine of Swords is great. Six of Swords is great. I don't. I like that power. Um, but we're, you know, we're talking about we're talking about current teams. That's how we're basing the lit. Oh test man, Tyler! If only, mm -hmm. if only paparazzis just had one damage. One, yeah, they would just be better in general. <laughs> one printed. Could you imagine, like, they in cap and just deal one damage with the uh, stunning yeah. blow card in play? That would be pretty good. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously it would be the, better, but yeah, I get you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, the, the queen and the kings, again, you can't really build for them, so they're just sort of, like, even for all, both teams, so I don't like those that much. Telekinesis doesn't do much, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dinosaurs for sure, so far. Yeah, I probably agree because steel energy is great for Sim, but I can't use it for um, Franklin. So, yeah, I mean Scarlet that, Witch has that, right? Or no, Agatha does. Right. Ag yes, we talked about that too. Right. Agatha would be a better play. Scarlet Witch, she heals by knocking back, not steel energy. Right. So. That's yeah. true. Yeah, I mean, and then like you know, monsters or ruler and that sort of thing, right? Um, the the TK one's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, I, don't, no. I, I think it's bad. Yeah, it's not great either. It just, well, well, I mean, like, I, I, uh, I guess... like Scarab, it's good for Scarab, right? Because typically... It's good for it's good for the TK Flash. Like... Yeah. I, I don't see anything wrong with that one at all. I mean, it's fine. Well, it, the the only thing wrong with it is there are better options, isn't it? Right? Depending, on, depending to... on your team. Depending on what, what you have. But, uh, so that leaves us with, what, Wands next? Y'all are y'all yeah, are I'm gonna say paid. Y'all are on nine of y'all are on nine of swords. I'm on page of swords. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say page of wands for the wand. Page of wands is the outweigh one. Yeah. Yes. That's solid. Yeah, I mean, I, I think yeah. it, I think yeah. it's a solid race between the page and the ten, and I I kind of prefer yeah. I kind of prefer the ten. I prefer I the ten got, too. Man, we got I got a ton of outweigh on this team though. Like, you got perplexed too. I have two perplexes. I have at least three outwits and potentially four. Uh, yeah, but you can only use each of these once per turn. <laughs> so. I know, I'm just saying. There's multiple characters that can use it, though. I'm just saying. Like, either one of them is good. So, they're both uh, good. They're both great, yeah. But I would say, like, the, the sage advice that I follow comes from Patrick Ipoko. When in doubt, perplex the attack. Two better than one. The the right. Depending on my team, I, I might lean two of wands. That's the Battle Fury one. Yeah. Because that one is pretty strong. Like you said, if I had, like, I have two accesses to Pulse Wave. Right. Um, so it's like if I just Pulse Wave and your whole team has Battle Fury and I just keep Scarlet Witch away, <laughs> then, like, that's good. Like, that's potentially yeah. really good. So I agree. Yeah, it's it's a very strong effect. I don't think we can use it on our team because we have a Miles team. Um, right. And it, well, actually, and it, it kind of doesn't affect Miles at all because his is only works on range attacks. Um, so it's just the not range is the same thing as not using shape change. But yeah, yeah, I get it. All right, Major Arcana's. Oh that's a little bit of scroll up here. The full strength, will of fortune, no. towers, the devil and the moon. <laughs> Uh, and Empress, oh, oh, the high Emperor. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I like. Um, oh, um, I forgot about this one. Uh, I like strength uh, for Thanos because with yeah, a, with a, no crit misses. With a, yeah, no crit misses because a fifteen attack sometimes needs to hit a seventeen, and you're guaranteed to do that at that point. That's true. You are. It is a guaranteed hit if you're attacking well, seventeen I mean, with a fifteen. Super senses aside and stuff, but uh, well, sure. Yeah. But, uh, no. If you if you need a if you need a hit a seventeen with a fifteen and you roll two ones, that's a critical hit, sir. <laughs> oh, that's <just> true. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Yep. laughs> so that's no, kind of fun. But no, uh, it says attack that would <laughs> no that yeah. would hit right. So does that yeah, seventeen would hit. That would hit, so that's before. <laughs> I'm going to go high priest this. <laughs> oh, man, that's a little bit of that's some good wordplay. All right, uh, uh, strength for me then. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So, yeah, I'm going to say high priestess. 
Rolls a d6 for the yeah that one's just all around good. It's obviously obviously not good if your opponent can do it on a like a one of their rollouts, but you gain a lot from it too. Uh, you have leadership and willpower rolls. It's once per turn though. Um, so the first ones are all mission points, right? Don't care about those at all. Um, yeah. The fool I can't use. Um. I don't want to use the devil. Right. Yeah, we really need we really need the rest. That's the problem. Three of these are mission point based. Right. Yeah. What do you Maybe think? the tower. That's not in the main set. Yeah. It's Never mind. Set. Yeah, I mean, it almost has to be high priestess for most. Of yeah. Them. For most teams, it would, yeah. it would be. For most teams, it would be the high priestess. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd say for sure. Uh, yeah, because because all of our teams aren't built to not have the effect of our equipment. Yeah. I mean, I guess yours are probably okay, right? Like Tyler, because you want while dimensional watch is great, it's not necessary, and the cloak. I mean, you prefer to not have the cloak, but you've been forced to play. It, so. <laughs> I do not prefer to not have the cloak. Um, but either, but I would say I'm, not, I'm okay with the fool. Uh, probably not on the f new version of the team because I'll be playing Mad Jimmy J at least testing it out. So, right. Um, but I guess like I guess on the flip side, it's like how many teams actually are affected by the fool, like detrimentally to where you want to play it, and I don't know how many. So the so. issue is that it also has the effect of resetting things because it's a duration interrupter. Um, so obviously you lose your dark hold for a turn, but you also lose the pacing on your dark hold and your emotional modifiers and stuff, kind of like pulse wave. Um, that's just something to keep in mind. So, mm. all right, George, question. Thank you, George. Um, is this a set like X Men Rise and Fall where you're more excited to pull super rares and prime super rares than a chase? I think so. Um, I am not terribly yeah. excited about any of the chases. Um, obviously, I need to get them. If you're not pulling Jim Jaspers, I mean, it's a lot. Yeah, Jim Jaspers, Nimrod, the two rare primes, no thank you. Um, and the chases, like, only like a third of them are probably worth the money. Maybe Merlin and yeah. Apocalypse. Like Merlin. Yeah. Uh, I think after today, though, Lady Roma stock needs to head up just a little bit. I don't think it will. Um, yeah, it's probably those two bit. are the ones that I are going to hold. a little bit. Yeah. I've already seen her going okay. for pretty cheap. So Okay. Yeah, those two are probably the only ones that are going to hold their value. Um, super rares. Um, what do you got? You got both Nimrods are going to hold value because they're Nimrods, and people like those type of figures. Deadpool's good. Hope's good. Um, Abigail Brand. Abigail, Abigail prob Brandon Abigail's Hope. probably not like a good money chase though, or a good money super. No, player. but she's a good she's a good piece to get. Hope. Yeah, I'm happy to pull her. Yeah, Captain Hope Britain, for sure. Captain Britons always hold their value. Now, Hope um, Hope is unique, and I don't know if many people realize her potential. So I feel like her value is going to be a little lower. Really? Well, expect. if they've if they've joined us for six hours, they will know the value of Hope. I feel like people are generally pretty up on Hope. She's she's, she's very good, but it's unique. Unique just drops the value a little bit because you just only have one of them. It does. But it's, it's a, it's Good, a I can afford it. one. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, I think most probably most of the value are in the Super Rares and, like I said, the Legacy cards, I think, are really good this set. This yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's face it, we're playing the Mad Jim Jasper's Lotto when we're opening. <laughs> yeah. This, that's... Once again, another, another set where people would almost rather pull super rare primes that outside of like one or two chases than anything no, else. No, 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 there's not almost. It's the most definitely the case. Here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and here it's the case. Well, Merlin's kind of up there depending Merlin, on how you Merlin, want to Merlin. Merlin's, Merlin's good, but I mean, I'd much rather have Mad Jim Jasper. Well, true. Else. But I mean, if you think Disney Plus... Well, you gotta remember, you only Jasper. need one Mad Jim Jaspers. Right. Nimrod, <laughs> I'm just Nimrod, Nimrod, you need like a dozen of. I'm just that, saying if I have nothing. Not if I have nothing, I thought that's what I want to hit. Right? Well, I mean, that, that sounds like with uh, uh, War of the Realms. If I hit nothing, I would just yeah. want that destroyer. <laughs> like, that's all yeah. I want. Like, I'm, I'm not playing a, a bucket full of Nimrod, so I just don't care. <laughs> but 
this is this is a continuation of ever since they made the switch to where primes are now mm-hmm. rares and super rares, they've been hitting super rare primes out of the park. Yeah, absolutely. Like there's been one, there may be one that's you know uh, that's okay, but like there's always one super rare prime. You, there's not really many primes that are just garbage, garbage. And super rare primes have just I feel like elevated even higher because there's two of them now as opposed to just the one we had before. Right. So, all right, mm-hmm. moving on. Jay Sanzen, uh, first question, can you own enough copies of Peepers? Uh, no. No. Um, mm-hmm. Which sure. CUR pieces are mis- must own? I think we went through that earlier. Peepers. Peepers. Uh, Is she are? Peepers and uh, Wolverine. Yeah. Pe- Peepers uh, is not, not she are. Uh, CUR. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, like, rare. I yeah, thought yeah, you yeah. said she are, and I was like, I that's a, "Well, that's a legit question because isn't she are one of the keywords?" Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's another yeah. show. Yeah, that's another yeah. show. Uh, and then three, uh, do you think that Iska the Beaten will in fact be beaten? Yes, yes, I do. Uh, yes, yes, I do. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Jose, anything that might be meta worth buying? Um, Jose is uh, <laughs> nope. His, Jose, Skip some. <laughs> No, Jose is from... Uh, All the Rangers. Danger Room pieces. You want to get the Danger Room pieces, I feel yeah, like, who you are. Don't, don't forget those. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. Yeah, Jose's from Mexico. Anything He's that, uh, purchased some stuff from any, the past year. So. Any rares that come with a sword, you want those, too. Uh, yes. That is true. Um, and Adam's question we answered immediately and very angrily. Uh, at least from my perspective. Um, How's the sword thing? The sword keyword. Yep. You don't remember five hours ago when we answered that question? Tyler? Yes. AKA, Any play AKA. is an uptick in play for sword to have them. Yep. AKA like 96 hours ago for us. So That's true. Um, <laughs> Richard Z, can you talk briefly on what might be a good X-Men meta build after X of Swords? Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Recruiter. That's just gonna that's gonna require another episode. That's because we that's, yeah, that's, that's a whole we, episode, yeah, for sure. Well, because we still have the OP kit or OP set, right? So, but I think more. I think it'll be what is a good X Men or what's a good X Men build between X of Swords and if month one is legal for Worlds. Um, that's the next stepping stone for builds. Um, mm-hmm. So Peter Marshfield, um, but R- Richard, we will be talking about that in the future. Uh, I-, I don't think we have enough delved down to just think about it yet fully. Yeah, and um, there's X Men is good right now, but I don't know if it's really nationals winning goods. So that's why we're. That's why I'm like tabling X Men because right. I just don't think it's. I agree. Uh, Peter Marshfield, we spent years without getting any Apocalypse apocalypse figures. Well, that's not WizKid's fault. That was the Embargo's fault. Uh, and mm-hmm. we've had one in the mm-hmm. last three X-Men sets. Um, and then, so that was just a statement. Uh, then the question is, is why does WizKids hate Darkseid then? Or is it because we don't get enough DC stuff? Um, so right. Peter, WizKids doesn't hate Darkseid. DC is hard to work with. Is my understanding. So, I mean, I think he was right about the set thing too. It's like you can't just force Dark Side into every set, like every D- the every one DC set we get. You can't. Yeah, just we got a Dark Side two DC sets ago. It was not the most recent one, but the one before that was our Dark Side, yeah, and it was, was a good Dark Side. Yeah, it was over two years ago. Yeah. It was fitting it one year. It wouldn't be so bad. So yeah, it's definitely the the sets. Mm. Blame Warner Brothers. And then his one um, one question is, what's the one figure that you see that has meta potential but maybe a sleeper hit? Um, oh my gosh, I don't know. There's so much. Definitely stuff. peepers. Nobody's thinking about peepers. <laughs> <laughs> meta potential but maybe a sleeper mm. hit. Um, I think that the Chase Lady whatever her face Roma? is. Lady Roma. Lady Roma, yeah. That's a good one. I'm going to throw out... Um, yeah, I think people are on to Merlin. <laughs> um, um, 
Yeah, I would say. I'm like gonna throw I, Sentinel like, Mark Two. I think Sentinel Mark Two is a really good figure. Yeah, I like the idea of tent peepers. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I heard oh that, Tyler. God. I heard that. You say that. Good. <laughs> you, you heard that until I wrecked your team with tent peepers. Uh huh. Mad Jimmy J giving him a dark hold. He's eight range, and then I'm swapping out to uh, um, uh, you know. All this yep. other stuff. So, anyways, I am terrified. Do you think WizKids <laughs> needs to change the way that characters that it's a small tent, Tyler? It's a small tent. Um, do you think that WizKids need to change the way that characters that start the game equip just drop the equipment when they are swapped out? Um, no, because the problem is you run into other rules issues when stuff starts to carry over, uh, like that. No, you don't. What? Uh, you do because, so let's say that you X-Men swap a character that starts with a, or, or I, I can't use that one. So let's just say you swap, just in general, you swap a character uh -huh. to, uh -huh. that starts with equipment to another character that starts with equipment. Okay. Um, then you can't have two figures equipped with the same thing and then it kicks out. No, you just take it with you. If you're equipped and you get sidelined, keep the equipment equipped. Well, okay, so one thing that's missing from all of this is that they have been paying attention to that. There are not very many figures now that just get free equipment. Everyone has a cost. Almost everyone. Uh, the only ones that don't really nowadays is the Disney Plus ones that are very expensive. And so the like, Dooms. Uh, the one Doom? Yeah, but that's older. Like it, It's like they caught on with the swap, because Dooms were before swaps. So... My, if you look at it now, like every sword costs five points, that means you're five less points in your swaps. Every sword that you play. Yeah, but you're you're getting a discount on five for the sword, and it's in your starting area and is much less likely to get destroyed. I know, but it's still less points for your swap. That adds up over time. If you're playing like three swords, you're now fielding two, you know, less points of people. I understand you're playing more points on equipment. But I feel like figures are worth more than equipment in certain cases. So it, it does add up, though. They don't give you free ones. Like the uh, ABPI ones were just free gems everywhere. Like you just get play them, and there's no cost free gems. Now everything is five points for a trait. And it's also also means you can't do the double swaps to get free swords. So they did cut that one out as well. Sure. You can't pay for a trade. So they, they've they've curtailed all that to mean is they've curtailed it a little bit, um, and so it really remains to be seen if that's enough. I agree, it's dumb, and they should just just take the object with you when you go. It's fine if you're equipped and you leave the board. Take the object's equipped to you. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't know. There, there's probably some things we're not thinking about with that, Tyler. Just to be honest, like. Yeah, that's true for uh, sure. So his last question is, will Mad Jim J become the best prime of all time? Um, and basically, or does that honor lie with Destroyer, Nighthawk, Q? So, um, I think... I think you missed a bird there. So, Nighthawk um, is, the I would say, statistically the best prime of all time. It won two world championships. What about Jakeem? I'm just kidding. Um... <laughs> Now we're just talking about the the best of the best here. Um, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just kidding. I get you. I mean, uh, so if you look at world's level tournaments, Nighthawk won two, got second in another, or got second in two others. Um, Q won worlds. Uh, Vulture won one. Uh, and he won a nationals. Two nationals. Well, two nationals. so Night, Nighthawk won some nationals as well. Um, so if you start to add that in, the math goes start. You got it becomes a super huge conversation. So, um, so I guess what it, going with what is proven, right? Nighthawk is definitely the best. Q's up there. Um, because yeah, I remember. Like, I think Vulture's the best. That's my opinion. Um, well, if Nighthawk was around when Vulture was around, he would have definitely been Nighthawk. But, um. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. No, uh, because it's adjacent figures. You could just run over and punch them. Um, you know, but you could have body blocked him. Anyways, um, so, sure. but, um, 
you know, I don't know. There's a lot of great primes out there, and they've just gotten better over the years. But uh, I think will, I, will Mad Jimmy J be in Memphis? Oh. Yes. Um, will he be walking in Memphis? I don't know. He'll be strutting. Just strutting yeah. right in. Uh, please tell me y'all know the walking in Memphis song, right? That's yes, it. I know yeah. walking in Memphis. Yes. But I, I was okay. talking about the his sculpt. Yeah, his sculpt just His sculpt is looking more like he's like just strutting in and be like, here's an item for you. Here's an item for you. Here's walking more equipment. In Memphis. I will argue, though, that I feel like because he'll have one major tournament on him, Destroyer might end up being the best prime. It could be. Yeah. So, um, yeah. we'll see. All right. Brian uh, Reed, Brian Reed, uh, do we know what is in the storyline clip? All new clicks or no? And I think they're all new figures. Yes. Yeah. It's a new set. It's got boosters and stuff. It's yeah. kind of like... Um, We'll, we'll, know. we'll know in a couple yeah, days, right? We'll know. We should know Friday. Yep. Yeah. Um, true. Best character uh, Patrick Booth. This will be a question for a later episode for sure. Uh, best character from the set to boost me at Prime. Uh, the answer is probably yes. Um, any of them. Uh, Ryan King. We answered. Uh, how does the tarot card work? We had a whole segment on that. Um and then Brian Gailey, Merlin, Merlin, yeah, Merlin, um, Merlin. Kari wants us. Kari wants us. Kari wants us to talk about how completely unplayable Nimrod Prime is because he doesn't have one yet. Um, he sucks. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> He's terrible. Um, nobody, yeah. will, nobody will ever, ever, ever generate more than one with Master Mold at twenty-five. Just will not happen. Just won't happen. Yeah. If you want to offload one, message Kari. That's yeah. a, that, you, Jason, 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 you just gave everybody the too long didn't listen recap of how we felt yeah. about things. It's like, oh, he sucks, and just yeah. like that's it. And it, even though yeah. that's not true at all with him. Six hour episode <laughs> that we just recorded. Right, <laughs> McConnell Lamar. How should I buy into this set if all if if all if I want all the tarot cards, most of the CUR, five super rares, Mad Jimmy J, and two chases? Um, so mm. I'm not the person. To really? the The answer is with Hero Clicks is nearly always buy singles. Um, I don't know if that he wants a lot from this. That I think buying well, the case is probably worth it for him. Tarot cards are probably going to be five to twenty bucks a piece. Um, what, about, what about legacy? So you got to remember. Well, hold on. Yeah, you got. I'm just thinking out loud here. Like a booster, seventeen bucks now, right? Not everybody has you know bricks for under around a hundred bucks anymore. Um, but the legacy cards themselves, Alex. Yeah, I, I mean, it's such, are... it's such a gamble. What happens if you get Havoc and Forge? But the thing is, is it's really hard to buy. Like, you're either going to buy, buy them at the top price or you have to take a gamble. I mean, that's what we're talking about. with the Right, so I would say specifically for this set is there's there's a bell curve, right, with Euroclix pricing. Now, this bell curve is usually like prices are high into pre-release and then everybody buys their stuff and then it starts to tank. But I think that graph goes back up, and bell curve's not the right answer. It's a oscilloscope, that thing, what it measures. I think prices start to go back up as soon as Brad starts having his tournaments with the tarot cards and everything legal, and everybody starts kind of showing what they're wanting to play for Worlds. Um, mm -hmm. So you've got to time your purchases correctly, I think. Look, wait. Wait till about December, man, and then it'll all be cheaper. Well, the, the is. problem is, is that the stuff that's really good will start to maybe fall off in inventory, Jason. So that means the price stays. Man, low. Maybe I don't. Know. I'm it's, just saying, after Worlds, we've got the void, the void where nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, two sets, but yes. no, yeah, no, no that doesn't, doesn't matter about sets. There's no, no tournament. tournament. No tournaments. There's no tournament. Well, for like the, six to eight months. Well, until someone announces something, which anybody there's not. Could. Yeah, there's no tournament. But there's there's, there's no got to be. So Alex, that uh, that doesn't matter if like Jay 
Major announces another tournament that affects twenty people. It's got to be Whiz Kids announcing. Yeah, it's not. It's got to be Whiz Kids it, announcing WKOs go back into production. People yeah. are going to start selling that shit off to get money for Christmas. Like I'm telling you, unless unless there's <laughs> like gonna... November WKOs and then announcement yeah, Febu- unless, and, and February WKOs, right? Then stuff starts to yeah. maintain value. So now my, my, it was McConnell, right? That asked this question. Yeah. One thing I would say though is, if you're really wanting to buy in this set, do not forget that Nats and World BRs are most likely going to be this set. Like, I really, no I really hope that's... Nats BRs are this. I, I, I really... Oh man, me too. I'm, I'm banking on it. <laughs> so the, the reason I mention that is because if you're going to either, if you're going to Worlds brs especially with all the other con pricing and you you're missing some figures that's probably one of the easier times to get pieces for cheap like good like a prime drops say uh say um what's his face nimrod prime drops but they also threw like two or three con le's like good ones in you, you know you might have mm-hmm. a decent chance at the prime with being second or third so i mean it just get i keep those kind of things in mind if it's like oh i'm gonna spend half a day playing some brs i have a chance of picking up some figures i may not have been able to get before the ones maybe i'm not actively playing in the meta but i would like to have for future prospects you Mm -hmm. get you get i feel like a it's a gamble but less of a gamble than just buying a brick buying a case i feel like you have a higher chance and you get to play clicks at the same time so just Uh, two cents two cents on that is all Mm -hmm. i'm with you so uh, Forrest, uh, no questions. I'm looking forward to your review and hope that you enjoy making it. Uh, you know what? So, guys, did we enjoy our six hours of content here today? Oh, most yeah. definitely. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm-hmm. So, Anthony asked um, a few tiered questions here. Um, how will X of Swords impact your world's team? Uh, mine will be significantly... We're going to have tarot cards, Dad. Yeah, We're going to have tarot cards, there. For sure. There. Uh, for sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it's probably just a re-evaluation of the whole thing and see if it still makes sense. Yeah, mine will definitely be different. I've got at least three things I want to test, um, including two variations. Oh, probably two variations of Thanos plus three new teams that I want to look at. Yeah, legit. And one of them includes Galactus. So, just oh know. boy. Boy, I, I just I, I, it's like yeah. it's like it's like, that. it's like fetch. I really just I really trying to make it work. I am not carrying that big bastard around. Fuck that. You know what? <laughs> I will I will get a baby burka or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. Did y'all get, please tell me. No. Please tell me y'all got the fetch reference. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Tyler. Is no, that, that was, wasn't. That no wasn't way, you're man. not too young for that one, are you? <laughs> no. Okay. No. Um, I will say Mean Girls is overrated. I'm just saying. Whoa, Mean Girls is not overrated. Yeah. John Tucker Must Die is the superior film. Well, it's, good really it. it's two different things. Um, <laughs> do okay. you feel like the watch list changes were necessary for Worlds after seeing X of Swords? Nope. Muramasa Blade handles <laughs> it just fine. No, that's, 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 yes, they're, they're, they were good. Yeah. What little bit it did. I. You, the, the the freaking molecule man wasn't necessary. Yeah, tell you that nope, much nope. for free. It, it needed to speed him up. I mean, well, I <laughs> guess, we'll, we'll, we'll find out in a week. I mean, so far Thanos has been doing pretty darn good in most of the tournaments he's been playing in. So well, he got yeah. he got third or fourth in UK. He won the Philippines. I'm sorry, I don't know if it was the Philippines or Singapore. Um, it was Singapore. Yeah, so Philippines had the odd tournament rules. Um, and then he got top eight in Mexico. Yeah, I mean, so it's next not, week that's we not could... that big. He hasn't won. He's won less than he's not. So, I mean, two out of the three post errata have not been won by Thanos. So, seems like you should just stop kind of worrying about him, really. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, so... What events would you be most excited about at Worlds uh, main and side events? Um, I just want to schedule. Team sealed. Team sealed, yeah, for sure. Skirmish. Uh, no, gosh. You get out. Get out. Get out. Um, so, 
Patrick attack wing. There's there's one there's one WizKids person that was like, someone mentioned skirmish. Thank goodness. Um. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, this is a big uh, Anthony. This is like a whole show almost. Uh, which is which is fine. So, which sets and hero clicks are you think for best for battle royals? Um, I think the colossal ones are not good for battle royals. No. Um, no. For mm -hmm. s then the other questions, I don't know. That's just uh, for team for single sealed for team sealed. Are those formats better with a mix of boosters? I, I don't. I don't like a mix of boosters. I think no. sets are designed to play well within themselves. Um. I do. Yeah, like, and I, they have like. I do like the idea. Um, I was. I do like the idea of uh, team sealed being a brick rather than six boosters. Yeah, I agree with that because you more likely are not going to get two chases or something because you're at the tail end of one brick and the beginning of another. That's right. Yeah, and then somebody gets absolute shit, and then two play two teams on either side just pull the absolute nuts. Yeah, because especially now that almost all primes are better, I think that would actually help balance some things. Because it's like, okay, I'll either get a chase or a prime, so we know we could probably build around one of those. But yeah, it's it. The ones that win recently, I feel like it, most of them has just gotten either two chases or, or just pull way more than you would get out of one brick. I feel right. like I mean they, they've wrong. got they've gotten the both sides of a brick, and they got the good side of each brick. Um, yeah. And then, how do you feel about symmetrical versus asymmetrical maps? Do you think one is better for the game, or both important? Uh, yeah, asymmetrical maps are better. They're boring. No, I don't want. Ace. I want. The, I want both. I I, I know. If, I don't. I don't want symmetrical maps. I want. Ace, oh, I want, I'm sorry. I got to Yeah, yeah. Back. I want asymmetrical maps. Player two should have some version of choice, even if it's a semblance of choice. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Yeah, as long as it's not, I think, yeah, as long as those are on maps that are, like, I guess I'm thinking of it like King's Tomb was symmetrical, but it was very oppressive. Right. That's so not great. Like any... That's not great either. Right. So. Right. Separate issue though. Right. So, no, no. But no, I will. I, I will say this as as a sorry as a competitive player. If there's a broken map, I will play it. Doesn't mean I think that it should be made. Right, I'm saying like if a map has got a certain thing going for it, like it's not necessarily oppressive, but it's like, hey, this is the wide open map, or this is the map that's more watery or whatever. Like if there's a clear this map you want for your specific team, then I feel like there should it should be asymmetrical. So the other person's like, okay, I have, I could take the better side, whereas right. the map as a whole is better for you. I might get the better side. That at least helps me mitigate some of that. Right, but that's really hard to do in map design. And at this I like, point, so I they're think, just rewriting so think, all the old ones. Right, I think something that we we've been awful positive this episode. Um, I'll go ahead and just do what Alex did last time. I have my uh, I'll have my uh, list of grievances here since we've asked about maps. Um, mm -hmm. I will go ahead and say uh, I'm just looking here at HC maps, and there are so many maps that should not have been made. Um, I'll go ahead and name off a few. Uh, Fountain of Asgard, asymmetrical open map, no defensive capabilities. Uh, oh, Fountain of Asgard is fine. No, it's not. Uh, blue, uh, what is the other one? Um, the the one that we're playing. Are the, you... the Hell's Pit should not have been allowed in Modern. Um, I... Realm of Death was a bad choice. The Realm, Realm of Death, Death was obviously a bad choice. I agree, I agree. A Realm of Death was bad. Uh, Wait, why? Why is Hell's Pit bad? It is the movement on that one specifically for non-flyers is bad. Yeah, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? It's right. supposed I, to. That's I, the point of the map. I think you should be able to adequately navigate a map with no, without having improved movement, uh, elevated. Or whatever, blocking. I don't agree with that. You should be able to adequately you... navigate it without being just shot up from across the map. So like, I so like disagree. So like good maps, uh, like uh, I like the Baxter Building, 
Sentinel HQ, those little rooms that you can hop in and out of. Um, Negative Zone is symmetrical, but it has ways that you can cross the map without just immediately getting shot up, without losing too much movement. It has very good line lanes of movement through the map. So you're saying it's a, a good map, negative zone? Uh, it's it's not symmetrical. Or it's, it's symmetrical. I don't like that about it, but if I'm just providing an example of, a think, of what, what I think a decent map is, uh, negative zone is a, is a pretty decent one. Because you can cr cross the map without just dying. I like the idea that we had a while ago. I don't know if we shared it, but um, let player two pick map but it has to be one of your three listed maps, and then they get to pick the side. I think that would be a good solution. Yeah, but that means you've got to have everybody bring in three maps. <laughs> sure. I mean, what degenerate wouldn't play three maps? <laughs> right, yeah. I'm, I might know one. <laughs> I think he likes to play. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. Well, that narrows it down to nothing. I don't understand your argument about Fountain of Asgard, but... There are some just wonky maps, it's especially just some newer ones. It's just asymmetrical. That's a good thing. No, 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 sorry, sorry. Fount, fa sorry. Fountain <laughs> of Asgard is symmetrical. Sorry. Oh, uh, okay. I think, it, I think, I think like, once again, symmet symmetrical is fine if it's and, like just a normal map. And then, like, it's all, well, that's fine. But, like, say, Fallen Asgard has, like, some blocking terrain on it. Some elevation in d not just four little towers. Um, Sounds like you're just not happy that it's outdoor and has no blocking outside for one strip. But that sucks if you're player two. Yeah. That's not a great okay. feeling. I mean, that's not a simplified... Yeah, but it's not, that's things not... are allowed to suck if you're player two. No, yeah. right? no. no I, uh, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I, am I thinking as a competitive player or somebody that well, listens to WizKids? Say, as say, a game-balanced player, it no. is okay to have a... No. It's yeah, not... because player, you, you player have to build... Two, player no, 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 you're shouldn't... building your team with a... You, you're rolling for it. It should give you an advantage. It, negative... it should give your opponent... A disadvantage. It's a negative play experience, and you know we don't like the having your games. figure one shot is a negative player experience. That doesn't mean it's mm -hmm. a bad game design. Having your figure one shot by a character behind five walls across the map is a negative. That might play be experience. bad game design. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Not according to Tyler here. You I mean we rolled for map, so that's why I mean. <laughs> I don't think you're understanding my argument. I don't. I, I'm. I'm kind of being slightly obstinate about it. Um, uh -huh. Just because I don't think it's slightly, but... <laughs> yeah. because you guys know that personally, I, re I I do what Tyler says, right? Like I build to go second. The team I'm playing at nationals builds to go second because it's unthemed. Well, yeah. Well, obviously, we're going to play the best teams that we can in right. the situation. So, but we're that's yeah. not we're we're, we're I no, no 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 no. Let me. What you're saying, you're you're making no distinction between description and prescription. You're saying descriptively we will do our best, but then you're also saying prescriptively it's bad. But I don't agree with that. I'm saying it is fine to have negative experiences, and I will build against them. No, I don't think you should have negative experiences in life. <laughs> Going into okay. hour seven, this is now the map review episode. Right. right. So anyways, uh, do you feel that are any rules questions that you hope are addressed? <laughs> are we allowed no. to, are we allowed uh, uh, if so no, i will no, say this not, no. Oh, no 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 hold on i want to go to bed sometimes i do, I do. <laughs> but so we can, are, can we, we gotta mention it can we hold on i'm only allowing us to mention it if we if we just pose the question yeah and we do not provide a single answer if anybody uh, yeah even no argument if anybody breathes an answer i will disconnect you from the call <laughs> <laughs> do we all agree with that? Should we, just, yeah. should, we, should we just do this next episode after Nationals? Right. No, so, because it might come up. All right. So uh. the question is, <laughs> I'm going to ask. I'm going to state the question, and then I'm going to move into Anthony's final question for tonight. I'm gonna. 
No, you're not. Uh, no, you're not. Well, no, no, no. No, I have to say something. It won't be about an argument for or against. Okay. Mm, mm, okay. Sure. No, no, the, go ahead. The question is, whenever you act, when uh, a character has Quake, can use Quake, can use Mind Control. Mm -hmm. Whenever it activates Mind Control as a close action, can it use the first sentence of Quake to target all adjacent characters and then use the Second, the instead of damage dealt part of mind control, effectively targeting everybody adjacent with mind control to say, you know, you could mind con quake mind control eight characters potentially mm -hmm. to do eight move and attacks or attacks and moves. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is your statement, Tyler? Uh, it's just that it, it, currently there, it's been posed to the wind and there's no answer. Uh, so we're we're unclear right now. Right. So it we posted, it was posted last week, so it's not like it's been posted yeah, for true. a while. Right. To clarify. Okay. So um, I have a grievance to air about tarot cards. Oh. Okay. Um, they come out of the boosters bent. Oh, really? Yeah. So like, That's with, sad. without a hard sleeve, uh, you know, people are talking about like. I've seen some folks online like, oh, people are going to cheat and bend their cards and nick their cards and do all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. They come out of the booster fucking bent. Yeah, they're not in perfect condition after seeing them come out. Yeah. yeah, no. So, like, I'm not using that as an excuse or whatever, but, like, if I have my high priestess and it comes out of the booster as a fucking you, what am I going to do? I mean, I can flatten it out under a book or something or whatever, but that might be a permanent bend in that card. Is WizKids going to give me an unbent card, an unbent High Priestess to play with in Worlds? That's absolutely perfect? No. The, so, like, my card deck is going to be sitting on the table. Uh, I am going to sleeve them, but that, that sleeve isn't going to take the bend out of it unless it's a hard sleeve. Yeah. Look, just, everybody just don't be a douchebag. This isn't a fucking Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. <laughs> don't do any bullshit with your fucking deck. I mean, Excuse me, I thought we were going to all bring the Yu-Gi-Oh disc arm <laughs> things for when we play tarot cards, right? <laughs> <laughs> True. It's time to duel, <laughs> Yu-Gi. Like, that's so your that's less a... pathetic card. Yeah. yeah. No, but I think the key... Th I mean... We'll get into this when we talk more about tarot cards. I think the key thing is you each person needs to look at their opponent's tarot deck. And so that way it's like if a card's bent, your opponent also needs to know the card is bent. So that way if the card does come up, your opponent knows it's coming up as well. Like there should be – that's game state stuff, right? Like I feel like – Right. You And you should look at their deck. Right, you should verify that if they are playing the seven of pentacles on their build sheet, that the seven of pentacles is in their mm -hmm. is in their deck before they start shuffling and all this other stuff. And we also don't have shuffling rules, by the way. Just built inherently shuffle. There is no shuffle rules built into the uh, like uh, like the thing. I, and I'm not a card game player, but like you're supposed to have your opponent give the opportunity for them to cut the deck or whatever. Um, well, there's yeah, no rule about that. There is no rule about that, right? But that's a kind of a standard one. But there's not. So, I play Pot of Greed. I draw two from my deck. It's a Yu-Gi-Oh reference. Uh, Pot of Greed is banned. Yeah, we got Thank that. Thank you, better play, sir. We got that. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! All right, final thoughts. Jason, go. It's been a long-ass day. I had a fun time doing this, but I'm glad. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, it has. It's been a long weekend. You're right. We're going to end up with a. I'm almost, ready for some Gen Con. Me too. We're almost going to have a six and a half hour episode. So, uh, Alex uh, or Jason, any other final thoughts? I'll be happy to see all you guys in person for once oh. in a good while. That's right. Yeah. Alex, final thoughts? Do I really want to spend eighty bucks on a dual disc? Hmm. Really, eighty bucks? Yeah, <laughs> I almost really? I absolutely uh, would. I almost would for worlds, like just to roll up and have one and just play uh -huh. your tarot deck, like yeah. in in the thing. That That's would pretty sick. Like, yeah. like if I go on awesome. eBay, like, if I go on eBay right now, these things are seriously eighty dollars. You should. Uh, yeah, because they're vintage at this point. They don't yeah. come out with new ones. Like, 
Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to do more digging because I, I thought about this before when they first announced it, and then I just didn't go out and buy one. I um, feel like you find this at, like, the Goodwill in the toy section for, like, next to nothing. No, definitely not that. Um, Tyler, final thoughts? Um, head empty. I don't know. I'm excited for tarot cards, though. They're really they're a cool thing. Right. All right. Um... Thanks, everybody, for listening to Click Stuff today. I am looking forward to seeing everybody in a few days at Gen Con. Uh, Wednesday night starts us off with the sealed event. Son of a bitch, they are that much. God damn it. <laughs> yep, that is true. Um, and we hope to see y'all. Uh, like I said, um, I'll be in the... Uh, I'll have my Click Stuff shirt on all weekend, and I will gladly direct you to any of the other podcast hosts um, as they are near me. So... Y'all have a great day. Thanks for spending six and a half hours of your life with us. And we'll talk to y'all next time. See ya.